There we go. All right. There that's, we go. That's going to be, I hope we don't make that mistake. I have to yeah. remember to do that. Okay. So let's uh, come to order, everybody, please. And if you could join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. All right. Thank you, everybody. Could we have a sunshine announcement, please? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, today is Tuesday, January 20, uh, January 10th in the year 2023. This is a Jersey City Planning Board meeting with a scheduled 5.30 p.m. start time. This planning board meeting is being held virtually as a video conference open to the public. And in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting has been given to the editor of the Jersey Journal, the Jersey City Reporter, and posted with the city clerk on January 6th and re-sunshined on January 9th of 2023. This meeting was also posted on the Jersey City Division of City Planning webpage and all distribution materials made available to the board were published and available to the public. Okay, thanks, Ken. Could we have a roll call, please? Yes, Chair. Um, Commissioner Torres. Yeah. Commissioner Green. Oh. Commissioner Gangadin. Here. Commissioner Cruz. Here. Commissioner Dr. Desai. Um, Commissioner Dr. Desai. I see you there. You're not muted either. I don't think she has audio. Hmm. Okay. I see she's connecting audio. Doctor, do we have you? Commissioner, Dr. Desai? Mm, all right, we can come back. Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez? Here. And Chairman Langston? Here. Okay, I went out of order, but we have six commissioners present, seven present, one working on audio. We do have a quorum. All right, thanks, Cam. Uh, Mike, can we swear in the staff, please? I see Cameron, Liz, Maggie, Tim, Tanya, Matt. Do you guys swear any testimony you give tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mike. Uh, do we have correspondence, Cam? I know we've had a number of items carrying. Yes, we do. We've received correspondence from uh, seven of the applicants um, on the agenda tonight that have requested to carry items. Um, I will just go straight down the agenda, um, starting with the very first item on our agenda, or actually, um, if we'd like for the record to reflect, Mike, I do believe we have an eighth commissioner present. Commissioner Lipsky is here. Present. Okay, super, eight. Um, so item eight on the agenda, address 169 Culver has requested to carry with preservation of notice to January 24th. Um, next item 17 on the agenda, Address 80 Water Street, a preliminary final major site plan with a preliminary and final major subdivision has requested to carry to January 24th as well with preservation of notice. Um, item 18 on the agenda, uh, a minor site plan for a cell antenna located at address 1065 Summit Avenue has requested to carry to January 24th with preservation of notice. Item 19 on the agenda, address is 100 tours, an admin amendment they have requested to carry to January 24th with preservation of notice. Item 23 on the agenda, that is address 511 Newark Avenue, a preliminary and final major site plan they have requested to carry to a date uncertain. 
So they will be re-noticing that is address 511 Newark Avenue. Uh, item 25 on the agenda, address 3079 JFK Boulevard, a preliminary and final major site plan as requested to carry to January 24th with preservation of notice. And the very last item on the agenda, that is item 32, that is address 120 Monticello Avenue, it, an amended preliminary and final major site plan has requested to carry to January 24th uh, with preservation of notice. So that is seven items in total that have requested to carry. Okay, thanks, Kim. And um, I said it to you uh, before the meeting, I'll say it again in uh, public view. Uh, I want to get 80 Water Street first up on that 24th agenda. Chris, doc, Dr. Desai, audio is not working, she said. Okay, let's, uh, doctor, if you could keep trying, I'd love to have you on tonight. Um, I did see uh, Jean's hand up, Jean Paulino. Jean, do you want to step up to the plate and address real quick? So his hand go up and hand go down. Yeah. Do we want to promote Jean? Nope. Trying to raise his hand. Why don't we promote him? All right. Uh, is is he associated with Jonathan? No idea who Jonathan is. All right, we are promoting Gene Polino. Gene has joined us. I apologize. I had a bit of a computer problem here. No worries, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I saw that you had uh, listed uh, item number uh, 17, and I guess uh, 17 as uh, carried. Uh, I had, uh, uh, I'm not aware of that. Uh, I'm aware that uh, that was a possibility, but I was not aware that it was done. Uh, I don't think my consent was was given with respect to carrying it. I apologize. I thought it was. My understanding was that uh, we had consent to carry. Um, I, so we I, don't I, have consent to carry. Obviously, Mr. Polino saying he did not consent to carry it. Uh, Mr. Polino, the matter is going to be carried, but uh, I guess. Well, any comments you wish to make, I'm happy to, to address, but the board is not prepared to move on that application this evening. Okay, I, 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 underst I understood that that was a possibility uh, this evening. Uh, so let me just put uh, on for the record that I, I have not consented to uh, carrying it. Uh, my team and myself are prepared to, to go forward uh, with respect to the preliminary and final on phase one and the preliminary only with respect to the other phases, as well as the subdivision. I note that uh, we were carried uh, from November 14 to November um, 29, I believe, um, and then uh, to today. And, and uh, if, uh, if, if it occurs uh, to January 24th, which means that we've been carried on a a matter that's been outstanding for more than two years, oh, two years uh, right now, has been carried uh, one, two, three, four times, or three times, with a potential hearing on the fourth. So I'm objecting to it. My client would not agree to carrying it. We're prepared to go forward. We do have, remember, if, if I, I could refresh your recollection, um, that there were two issues that were the subject of the prior discussion. The first was, uh, the engineering report, which we have now. And the second was the redevelopment agreement, um, which actually not the redevelopment agreement, the engagement with the redevelopment agency. That's what I, what I call it. And since our last meeting, I have filed, recently filed, 
uh, not only uh, an update to uh, the redevelopment application, uh, Mr. Chairman, but uh, the entire uh, new, an entire restated application. I reviewed all of the materials, the details of the application. I wanted to submit that to the, to the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency. And I attached a link uh, attaching all of my, I, my planning uh, submissions for this hearing tonight and for any other hearing, of course. So uh, in addition to that, we have had a, uh, an extensive community meeting. Uh, I think there were 85 people that attended uh, on January 4th. So I don't, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm perplexed by the uh, intent to extend, uh, to, uh, to uh, carry the January 24th. Um, that's all I have to say. So council, I, I understand the project's been in the process for a number of years now. Um, as far as this board's time to act, we're still within our time to act. Uh, that was deemed complete. I don't have my notes in front of me, um, but that was deemed complete, you know, not too long ago. Uh, we did request that you reach out and, and file an application with the JCRA. My problem is that application was filed Thursday. Um, I certainly want to hear back from the JCRA. I want to move forward with a redevelopers agreement in place. Um, but I, at the very least, I need the JCRA to, to review and or get back to us that they are um, working on it. So I, I don't think Thursday's you know, given that we heard you on the 29th of November, and that was a requirement of getting on tonight, I think acting on January 5th is a little late in the game. Uh, so I certainly want to give the redevelopment agency a chance to review that. And uh, that's the reason for the carry tonight. If uh, Santo, if legally we need to make a motion to carry, we can do that. I'll open so, so the case. Chairman, I just want to add a couple of things to the record up to and including the fact that it is the position of the board that uh, the applicant does need to be designated and enter into a redevelopment agreement. I believe everybody, including Mr. Polino, agrees with that, that a redevelopment agreement needs to be executed, that they need to be designated and execute a redevelopment agreement. Uh, the only question or disagreement perhaps between Mr. Polino and myself is whether or not that agreement has to be executed in order for the application this evening or any evening before this body to proceed. And my recollection of what happened into December was Mr. Polino will put you on for the January 10th agenda under the understanding that you could turn around and file the JCRA application immediately. It was something that was going to be filed, you know, immediately. So I understand that Mr. Polino went through that application with a fine tooth comb to make sure that that application on behalf of his client to the JCRA was absolutely up to date without anything being left to question from the JCRA as far as additional information being needed. I appreciate that. I think that that is a proper thing for council to do, but I think that that caused the situation where that application wasn't filed until after hours on Thursday is when I got the correspondent Today's Tuesday. That's not 10 days before the meeting. The JCRA, I don't know. I haven't heard from the JCRA as to where they are in their review of those documents. So the board is not able to proceed. I would like to see a designation. I would like to see a redevelopment agreement, but I would at least like to see, yeah, it's, it's happening planning board, it's it's being worked on. So that's where we're at, Mr. Polino. I understand that 
quote unquote, the project's been in the works for years, there's been a lot of issues that go back years that have nothing to do with the legal status of that application from the board's point of view. I understand you disagree with that, but for purposes of the record, we disagree on that point and that's okay. Uh, the board is gonna carry the matter to the January 24th meeting. Yes, chairman, we're gonna have to entertain a motion on that. And no. I want somebody to have the JCRA communicate with the board where it is in the process of reviewing that application. Is that application in order and ready to be considered by the JCRA? I need that answer. May I, may I respond? Absolutely, Mr. Sure, Perry. go ahead, Gene. I, I am absolutely perplexed. Uh, the, the JCRA's involvement or non-involvement is well beyond the jurisdiction of the planning division, the planning board, excuse me. The, an application has been filed and it was filed not, uh, not last week. It was filed on May 11, 2021. It was updated June of 21 and it was refiled by me uh, to, to comply with the planning uh, board's uh, suggestion and recommendation direction uh, recently for the reasons I indicated that it was a substantial check on my part to make sure everything in there was correct. But it was filed. The, if, they, if someone did a comparison between the June 29, 20, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the May 11, 2021, and the present application that was filed a couple of weeks ago, there would be very little difference. But I made sure, I made sure because I don't want the planning division or the planning board to be looking at something that may be incorrect, I was I wanted to be sure that it was correct. Okay. So having said that, I have an agreement with the city to allow this matter to go forward. It was supposed to go forward November 15th. It was supposed to go forward November 29th. It was supposed to go forward today and it, tonight. And again, it's not going forward. And the reason that the, 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 the agreement I had with the city was for hearing. I mean, I, I phrased it in the shorthand of saying I want it on the agenda, but what does that mean if it doesn't mean a hearing? I wanted a hearing. So you may continue this uh, to the 24th. Uh, obviously you have a right to do that for whatever reason you, you choose, but I, I'm perplexed as to why. I don't understand what, you're certainly not asking the redevelopment agreement to be done by, no, by the January 24th. There's a statute on the subject and I'll recite the statute for you for the record. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, excuse me, it is section NJSA 55D 22B. I'll read it to you because it's enlightening. It says, in the event that a development proposed by an application for development requires an approval by a governmental agency, in this case, you want a redevelopment agreement, uh, other than the municipal agency, which is you, the municipal agency shall in appropriate instances condition its, condition its approval upon the subsequent approval of such governmental agency, provided that the municipality shall make a decision on any application for development within the time period provided in this act. So it's saying that whether you not need somebody else's approval on a site plan application, you have a responsibility, the board has a responsibility to go forward within the time required. So yes, you're correct. If you, if you, if you had it on for January 24th and we proceeded on that day, you would be within the time period, I assume, uh, uh, set forth because I think that time period would end February 3rd. There would be no other date for it to go forward except for January 24th. But I, I'm, again, I'm perplexed. I don't understand why. And, I, and the record, as far as I can tell, 
is uh, replete with delay upon delay. Uh, so uh, I, I leave it to you. I leave it to your discretion, um, but I, I cannot and my client will not consent to a further adjournment after two years. Will not consent to it. Thank the chairman, you. for purposes of the record, I disagree with Mr. Polino's uh, position regarding the section of the statute that he referenced. Uh, I'll advise the board that the controlling case in Hudson County is the allied lender case out of Hoboken. They have to be designated and they have to have a redevelopment agreement. As to the timing of all of that, Mr. Polino has filed an application with the JCRA on January 5th of 2023. For the record, it's January 10th of 2023. But council, I can I can the council, we'll go back and forth on this, but council, that's, not not the, that's not the facts. Do not interrupt you, do not interrupt I'm sorry, you. I apologize. Thank you. My recollection of the December meeting was that the application to the JCRA was going to be filed immediately with the anticipation and hope that when we got here tonight, we would have some clarity as to the JCRA's position on that. And my further recollection was this body was not going to delay the process if the JCRA and the applicant were working through and towards designation and an agreement. That was my recollection, Chairman. But either way, at this point, uh, it's up to the board. The board wants to carry it. You should entertain a motion and carry it to the date certain you've identified. All right, thank you, Council. That was my recommendation as well, or my recollection Chairman, as well. Chairman, can I ask a question to our Council? Go ahead. Council, uh, if what Mr. Paulino said uh, is uh, accurate, that the application that was submitted in May of 2021 were the same that was submitted on uh, January 5th, uh, would that be then a moot point? However, what I think Mr. Polino just said that the application that was submitted in May had little change in January 5th. Now, little is a relative term. So I would only ask the court reporter if that, if that was the actual wording, then the actual uh, resubmission does bear a re-looking at rather than just the stamping or a checking off of a box. So commissioner, I would tell you this, whether or not a application needed to be filed, needed to be revived, needed to be updated. The reality is Mr. Polino filed new documentation or additional documentation or the same documentation updated as of January 5th. Somebody has to review that. That's not this body per se, but it may or may not be significant. That's what we're looking for clarity on out of the JCRA, that the submission is sufficient to move forward. We are moving forward. We're in conversation with council and a designation and an agreement is forthcoming. If it's not forthcoming, quite frankly, giving an approval conditioned upon that very fact, which we all agree has to happen, including Mr. Polino. So what I think I understand is you're saying, even if Mr. Polino submitted the same document that was submitted on May 21st, it would be due diligent upon the JCRA to review it, to make sure it was the same one, in five days, see, they've not opined on anything since then. I have not seen anything from the JCRA. As far as if it's the same documents, in those documents are financial documents. 
those documents at the very least would be stale and would need to be updated to current financial condition. So, uh, 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 when I when I say it needed to, it, it, it was the same. What I was referring to is not a change in, for instance, the financial condition of the applicant, uh, better, or a, a change in the uh, uh, in the pro forma. I'm talking about a change in the in the project. The project that was submitted in June, uh, excuse me, in, in, in uh, May of 21 is the same project. The same project, the same phase, phase one, phase two, phase three. Whether or not a redevelopment agreement comes out of this is really the subject of the redevelopment agency to decide, not for the planning board. Not for the planning board. The this planning board does have to does, be designated a redeveloper, Mr. Polino. Well, that's you, you, if you're reciting the Hoboken case to support that, I would tell you that the Hoboken case was dealing with the question of whether or not a redeveloper requires a redevelopment agreement when there is a specific reference in the redevelopment plan to that necessity. I think that's what the case says, because if it doesn't say that, there are plenty of, re, of uh, redevelopment projects in Jersey City do, that do not have redevelopment agreements and will not require redevelopment agreements because the plan doesn't require it. In this instance, the, cul the Route 440 uh, Culver Avenue redevelopment plan has nothing in it that says that a redevelopment agreement was required. However, as I said before, we've agreed to get a redevelopment agreement. And the chairman at the end, I did have an opportunity to look at the video for the last hearing this afternoon. And what the chairman said, it, and if I might quote him, because I think it, it is, is enlightening, the chairman said, I want the application updated. That's what the chairman said. He said, I need I want the engineering report. Uh, but there's no need to have a redevelopment agreement. That would be too, uh, I don't remember exactly the words, but that would be beyond what he thought was fair. And he wants to see movement from the agency. I want to see some response from the agency. Well, I understand that, but I can't control what the agency does or doesn't do. I'll tell you what the response I got from the agency. The response I did get from the agency was to pay the fee, even though it was paid two years before. Well, Mr. Polino, so, you got that response in a four day window. You didn't pay the fee, so you wouldn't have gotten that letter had you paid the fee, but had you filed it back in December, after our hearing, maybe we would have got a response. Maybe we wouldn't. Maybe you would be here tonight saying, I filed the thing 45 days ago. I didn't get a response. And I guarantee you the chairman's comment would be very different than let's carry it for two weeks. But council, let me ask this to Mr. Polino's point. Using the ally, council Lampy, using uh, council Polino's point about the ally case, in terms of it, the redevelopment plan requiring a redevelopment agreement versus the developer agreeing to one, does that differentiate our obligation to move forward or not to move forward? Oh, Mr. Polino is putting forth his position on behalf of the applicant. We disagree. We disagree no, with that. the holding that's in that case is and what the case says. And that, that's my question, counsel, is if read it. Well, well, then you didn't hear my question. My question is, is if in the redevelop, if the allied case speaking to Paulino, Council Polino's point, is that if in a redevelopment uh, plan that it requires a redevelopment agreement versus the de uh, developer agreeing to one, does that substantially differentiate our obligation to move or not move forward on an application? Mr. Pellino's summary of the case is different okay. than my position of the case. So if his position- My position of the case is, you have to be designated a redeveloper. You have to enter into a redevelopment agreement. Mr. Polino doesn't agree with that. Fine. Mr. Polino has stated that he is pursuing that. So everybody agreed 
that a condition would be put in any approval from this body that they get designated a redeveloper and they enter into a redevelopment agreement. Mr. Polino agreed to that before we even started the application. But if Mr. Polino is gonna take the position, I have an approval, I never needed to be designated if he doesn't get designated, that's a different scenario. That's a different situation, right? So if the JCRA does not designate the applicant for whatever the reason, and Mr. Polino turns around and argues, I never needed it, my approval is still valid, that's what the fight will be at that point in time. Okay, that, Which is that, why I caution against the concept of the condition and want the agreement. That answers and thank you, Council. Okay, so Council, believe me, it's it's not my intention to stonewall the application. I want to hear it. I know we have a legal obligation to hear it, and we're acting within our time frame. And um, that being said, uh, I guess at this point I should all that case into the record, case P21-007. It's a preliminary and final major site plan, uh, preliminary and final major subdivision for 80 Water Street. Uh, and I would entertain a motion at this time. Count Chairman, can I just ask one other thing before we hit that motion? Uh, Councilor Lampy gave a very concise response to my question, and it's good for me. Um, I would just uh, ask if we could afford Council Polino an opportunity to respond to that. If you wanted it, I would rather I, entertain the motion at this point. Fair enough, Mr. Chair. I, I would like to make a motion uh, to uh, carry case P two one zero zero seven to a date certain of January twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for carry. Could we have a roll, please? Okay, yeah, I'll do it real quick. Uh, Vice Chair Dr. Gonzalez. Hi. Okay, uh, Commissioner Dr. Desai. Does Commissioner Dr. Desai have audio? Okay, we'll skip that. Commissioner aye, Lipsky. Aye. Oh, okay, so that's an aye for Dr. Desai. Commissioner Lipsky. Abstain. Commissioner Cruz. Aye. Commissioner Gangadin. Uh, Commissioner Gangadin. Santos, a uh, full detail explanation. My vote is aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. Okay, so we have six in favor to- Commissioner carry. Green. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Commissioner Green. Sorry, Commissioner Green. Aye. Okay, sorry about that. Seven commissioners. In favor to carry to January 24th with preservation of notice with one commissioner abstaining. Okay, thanks, Cam. And once again, let's put that right up front on the uh, 24th agenda. Okay, noted. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, we did make a promise to uh, Benjamin Wine to get him in and out of here. He has uh, other business tonight. So uh, we're going to call item 14 on the agenda is a site plan amendment for 316 Forest Street, that's case P22-149. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Can everybody hear me all right? We can, Council. And thank you for uh, for taking me quick. Um, just before we get into it, I just I just felt uh I felt it it, it needs to be mentioned uh for those of the for those members of the board that don't know. Um, unfortunately, Mukti Bajaj passed away on uh over the weekend. And I know she was an architect that not only did a lot of great things for the city of Jersey City. But personally, I, I considered her, she started as a colleague and became a friend. And, um, and I know that a lot of members of this board uh, appreciated hearing her testimony and, uh, and felt that she was a member of a fabric of the community, um, you know, as a person and a professional. So I just wanted to put that out there and, and offer my condolences and uh, publicly let everybody know. Um, let everybody know. I, I apologize, Council. I did mean to lead with that tonight. Um, my mind is all over the place at this point, but um, yeah, it's what a massive loss. Um, it, you know, she certainly uh, was part of our family here. Um, spent a lot of time listening to her testimony, and uh, 
you know, she certainly left her mark on the community and, and that will live on forever. So, uh, you know, she'll be missed, she'll be sorely missed. Thank you. Um, so with that, uh, I will switch gears into our application. Um, so this evening, what I have for you, just one application, the property is located at 316 Forest Street, that's block 19503, lot 42.02, and we're located in the Jacksonville Redevelopment Plan. So just by way of introduction, and then I'll jump in, I have one witness with me this evening, we're here seeking amended site plan approval. So again, by way of background, back in March of 2019, an application was approved by this board for subdivision of what was then 431 MLK Drive. Uh, and that was kind of two buildings that were connected. And, uh, and it was approved to subdivide, maintain the building at the corner of MLK and Forest Street, and then ultimately construct at the subject property, a six story building consisting of 23 dwelling units. Uh, just, just so that everyone's aware, we did go ahead. That subdivision has been perfected. So they are currently two completely separate properties. And, uh, and accordingly, the application for which we're seeking approval this evening is only for the one property for 316 Forest Street. Um, what occurred here, and I'll jump into my architect, is that during site investigation, the property has been sold and my current client uh, investigated, started the process of, uh, of uh, acting upon the approvals that were received and discovered that there was a high water table and ultimately could not build out the seller that was initially approved. And that really serves as the catalyst for why we're here this evening. Uh, when the architect went and rushed to try and figure out an alternative to bring up all the mechanicals to the first floor, they also took the opportunity to come up with what we believe is a better design um, for the new clients and for the property. So with that, uh, I'll have my, I have my architect here this evening, Jeff Lewis, and I'll have him walk you through what those changes are. Um, you know, nothing structural, obviously, which is why we're not seeking any variances. Or, or any new site plan, but uh, but he should walk through the changes nevertheless, unless you have any questions of me, Mr. Chair, members of the board. No, thank you, Council. Let's uh, let's move on with Mr. Lewis's testimony. Chair, let's just mark the uh, affidavit of publication proof of mailing for the application. I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to 316 Forest LLC. Had the opportunity to review it. All does appear to be in order. We'll mark it as A1 for the record. Thanks, Thank All right, so I do see Jeff here, so I think Mike is going to get you sworn in. Hi, Jeff. Uh, do you swear any testimony you get tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Yes, uh, Jeffrey Lewis, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y-L-E-W-I-S. Thank you. Mr. Lewis, good evening. Happy New Year. Um, we've qualified you in the past. Your license is current tonight? My license is current and in good standing, and Happy New Year to you as well. Okay, great. Thank you. You're qualified. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, up. Jeff, if you can go ahead and bring up your screen and uh, walk the board through perhaps what was previously approved, what, what we're proposing this evening, and just identify and highlight the changes for everybody. Sure. Okay. Thanks, John. Okay. So, as uh, Ben mentioned, we were previously approved for a six-story, 23-unit building on the site. Uh, we are keeping that 23 unit uh, unit count. However, we have uh, changed the, uh, the bedroom breakdown a little bit on the inside. Uh, so six of our two bedroom apartments, one per floor, have been changed to three bedroom apartments. Uh, and one of the one bedroom apartments on the first floor was changed to a studio. And I'll walk through the plans to show you uh, why all these changes were made. But I just want to note uh, very clearly that uh, the building does have the same footprint. So we didn't add square footage to the building. This is just readjusting the interior of the building. Uh, as was mentioned, we did have a high water table on the site, so we are removing the cellar, and there is some associated work with that that I'll walk through. Um, building also had cantilevers, cantilever bay windows at the front of the building going out over the sidewalk, and we have removed those and changed the front elevation. Uh, and with that, again, we changed the front elevation. The previous uh, building was a modern uh, building, and we've changed that to the building we're showing here on the right, which is um, a red brick building that we think is more appropriate for the neighborhood. So walking through the floor plans, this is our initial cellar plan. Uh, and what we have in the cellar was a trash room and some meter spaces, which will be relocated to the first floor. Looking at the first floor plan, uh, what was previously approved is shown at the bottom, and then what we're proposing is shown at the top. So if I go walk through what we're doing at the top, just to show the changes, 
Uh, we still have two stairs. We still have an elevator. We still have bike storage on this floor. Uh, we have relocated the meters and the trash room uh, below the lobby here. And because of that, to create the space for that, we took this, what was previously a one bedroom apartment down below and changed this into a studio apartment. Uh, then in the back, we previously had a one bedroom apartment and then a two bedroom apartment. And using that same space, we kept the one bedroom apartment and then turned the two bedroom apartment into a three bedroom apartment with access to the backyard. Looking at the upper floors, as I mentioned previously, we had these bay windows at the front of the building, which we have removed on this plan. Uh, besides that, we have four apartments per floor as previously. However, we have uh, readjusted all four of them, uh, changed layouts of all four of them. Uh, so the front two apartments are still one bedroom, one bath apartments as previously. Then in the back, uh, we have a studio, and then again, that two bedroom apartment that was previously in the rear has been changed to a two bedroom apartment. I mean, a three bedroom apartment, excuse me. And then lastly, we do have uh, an individual trash room on each floor for the tenants. The building does have a roof deck. Uh, it remains the same as it was before. Both stairs, the elevator go to the roof deck. The roof deck is centrally located and set back on all four sides of the building. Now here we're looking at the previously approved elevations. I'm going to get a little closer. But the previously approved front elevation is here on the left. As you can see, it was a very modern finished building. Uh, the entire front was finished with aluminum panels. Uh, what we're proposing now is on the right. As you can see, we've changed it to a more traditional building. Uh, the main building finish is going to be a red brick. The red brick continues all the way to the top where we have a built up brick cornice. I'm going to zoom in a little more on these to show it a little better. Bear with me. Okay, the windows themselves. Uh, we actually have a brick surround around the entire bay of windows from the second floor to the fifth floor. Um, the windows are a dark gray aluminum finish window. Uh, we do. We did switch to PTEX. However, it's a black PTEX grill, which extends extends across the entire uh, length of the windows. And then we have a dark gray fiber cement panel in between the floors at the window level. At the ground floor, uh, our entries to the building are black aluminum storefront material, but they are mostly glass. And lastly, on here, we do have a black aluminum canopy, which would be over our front entry. Looking at the, this is the rear elevation that we're looking at here, excuse me. Uh, the rear elevation stayed basically the same, except we added a few windows and the new building finish will, will be a light gray vinyl siding. And on the side of the, of the, um, the side elevation, you can see we did uh, add some windows to the west side elevation. Uh, and we are changing the finishes. So the finishes on both sides would be that same like gray vinyl that we're using on the uh, on the back elevation. And then I just wanted to end here on this is a blow up of that rendering we showed on the very first page. I think it shows the front elevation a little better than the, than the drawing that I previously showed was. Uh, but those are the um, changes that we're proposing here. I think there are improvements to the property. I hope you do too. If you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much for your time. Jeff, just one follow up, but thank you. I think you 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 went through those quite sure. exhaustively. Um, just to confirm, and I know you said we're not making changes to the footprint of the building, but we are not creating any variances or nonconformities as a result of this amendment. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. All right, Mr. Chair, I have nothing further for Mr. Lewis. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. I have no questions. Anybody else? Um, I have a question for uh, Mr. Lewis. The um. The new building now, the vendor on the new building has the lights that you have there. Um, I see the reflection of the lights during the daytime that you're showing. Um, how, uh, is that a soft lighting that you're going to have at night? Is it a... Yeah, this is, this, yeah, you're not going to see this during the day. That's just the rendering itself. No, I, I understand the rendering, right? but how bright are they at night? Is it soft lighting? Not no, they're, they're going to be, it's, they're very soft. They're there just for accent lighting only. Oh, I like the look, but yeah, okay. That's all I have. 
All right, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, anybody else for Mr. Lewis? Nope. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Council, anything else? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'll certainly reserve the right to respond if there's any public, but I have nothing further and no further witnesses. Sure, absolutely. Okay, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. Anybody from the public wishing to comment on this application, please raise your hand. If you were calling in, please press star nine to raise your hand. Mr. Chair, I'll seeing no public, can I move to close the public? Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Hopefully my voice holds out tonight. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay, Cam, do you have anything uh, you want to add? Um, only to re reiterate what uh, Mr. Wine stated. There are no new variances associated with this amendment, and it does comply with the objectives and goals of the RDP. Um, and I would only ask that the uh, attorney for the applicant agree to the conditions stated in the December 8th, 2022 staff report. Are those conditions agreeable, Mr. Wine? Yeah, and I, I know I usually say that in my opening, but yes, certainly they are. Okay. Um, so with that, planning staff recommends approval. Okay, thanks, Cam. I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22-149 as presented to the board tonight. Second. Second it. All right, motion made and seconded. Okay, Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner, Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Aye. Commissioner Cruz. Aye. Commissioner Gangadin. Aye. Commissioner Green. Uh, I think you're muted, Commissioner Green. Oh, you're not. Okay, that's an aye. Commissioner Torres? Uh, aye. And Chairman Langston? Yeah, I think the changes are, you know, for the most part, except for the facade, are de minimis. Um, I do like a brick face more than uh, a panel face, so uh, I'm going to vote aye. Okay, motion carries all in favor for the site plan amendment. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good evening. So have a good night. All right, let's move on to item yeah. 10. This case P22-185 is a two-year extension for 18 Perrine Ave. Okay. Promoting Mr. Joseph or nope, I'm promoting Mr. Higgins. Um, good evening, members of the board. Can everyone hear me okay? <coughs> we can, yes. Council. Okay, so uh, Michael Higgins of Castano, Quigley, and Chirami on behalf of the applicant, uh, Shantibani Patel for 18 Perrine Avenue. This is in uh, Zone 4 of Journal Square 2060 Zone, um, Block 10803, Lot 45. Um, so this is a two-year extension that we're requesting. Uh, it was originally approved on May 21st, 2019 for minor site plan approval with no variances, um, memorialized on July 9th, 2019, and those initial approvals <clears throat> expired on July 9th, 2021. So um, we're seeking a extension because of the need to retain a demolition contractor. Um, the applicant's currently working with the neighbor to, to hammer out a demolition um, protection plan so that everything's done safely and appropriately. Um, so if approved, this would carry us until uh, July 9th, 2023. Um, and that, that, that summarizes the application. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Council. Um, yeah, I have no questions. Anybody else? Yeah. Mr. Higgins, Mr. Higgins was hammer out a demolition plan, pun intended. <laughs> but pun not intended. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Higgins. We appreciate it. Uh, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. If anybody from the public wants to comment on this two-year extension, uh, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Mr. Chair, seeing no public, I move to close the public. Second. Second it. Okay, motion made and seconded. Public is closed. Uh, Tim, do you have anything you want to add? No, the, the uh, extension, I think Mr. Higgins made a, 
uh, valid points as to why the extension was needed. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion at this time to uh, approve case P22-178 as presented to the board here tonight. Second it. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. <laughs> Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Gongadin. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Aye. Commissioner Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Cruz. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. All in favor, motion passes. Okay, thank you, everybody. All right, let's call uh, item 11 is a two year extension, case P22 178 for 92 Ocean Avenue. That's uh, also me, Michael Higgins, on behalf of the applicant, Santa Stone LLC here. Um, so this is for 92 Ocean Avenue. Um, this is block 3101, lot nine. Um, so this one, uh, it was preliminary and final major site plan approval with C variances that was originally approved on October 15th, 2019, memorialized November 12th, 2019. And those approvals expired November 12th, 2021. Um, in this case, clients had difficulty obtaining construction financing, and there was uh, it took longer than um, expected in order to get plans uh, finalized during the coronavirus pandemic. So uh, we're here seeking a two-year extension, which would carry us until November 12th, 2023. Um, and again, that, that summarizes this application, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Council. I have no questions. Anybody else? No. no. All right. Uh, all right. At this time, let's open it up for public comment. If anybody from the public wants to comment on this two-year extension for 92 Ocean Ave, please raise your hand. If you are calling in, you can press star nine to raise that hand. Anybody Mr. Chair, else? seeing the public, I move to close the public. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Uh, Tim, anything planning, on this? One? Planning approves the extension as uh, uh, as put in. Okay, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22 178 as presented to the board here tonight. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. Vice Chair Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Gongadin. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Aye. Commissioner Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Cruz. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. And Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. All in favor, motion passes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Council. You too. All right, let's move on to item 12. It's case B22 150 is a two year extension for 14 to 16 Oakland Avenue. Uh, good evening, commissioners. For the record, Tom Lean of Connell Foley here on behalf of the applicant. Um, I noted that in the agenda, it does state that there were variances previously approved uh, for this project, which is seeking an extension tonight. Uh, this was actually an as of right development, and as such, we did not provide notice. Um, the application before you this evening is simply an extension of an approval that expired at the end of 2021. Uh, the standard reasons uh, that we that have been brought before this board before many of the uh, previous approvals related to COVID relate to this project. Um, I would also state that there has been a significant amount of construction around this site, including the new courthouse and the project at the corner of Oakland and Washburn. Um, my uh, client has been able to clear the site, um, but commencing the staging purposes would have been very difficult over the last few months. Um, as I said, the site is cleared and they are ready to commence with permitting. We are asking this board to extend the approvals for two years, which would bring uh, the approval to uh, October 29th of uh, 2023, the current year. Uh, so it's just a simple request to keep this uh, as of right approval uh, valid so that my client can move forward. Okay, thank you, Council. I have no questions. Anybody else? No, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. If anybody from the public wants to comment on this two-year application, two-year extension application, uh, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hands. Mr. Chair, I see no public. Again, I move to close the public. Second. Second it. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Uh, Tim, anything on this one? Planning approves of the extension. 
Okay, thank you. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22-150 as presented to the board here tonight. Second. Second it. All right, motion is made and seconded for approval. Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Gongadin. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Chairman, there seems to be an echo on that second there, but I vote aye. <laughs> Commissioner Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Cruz. Aye. What happened? Commissioner Torres. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. And Chairman Langston. That's an eye for me. And I swear if I opened the windows, I think I could hear David down the street. <laughs> <laughs> There's a boost. He had too much coffee. <laughs> That's the energy tonight. I know, right? Guy, <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Lean. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Let's move on to item 13 is a planning board application for certified artist. Help me out here, guys. Uh, Jiaming Zhang and Sajal Sarkar. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, formal action may be taken. Um, yep. Okay, so uh, we do have their applications uh, in the packet. We have the artist certification board uh, approvals that we require. Does anybody have any questions? Seems that they meet all the uh, criteria set forth. No. Okay, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment on the uh, certi certified artist applications. Uh, is anybody from the public here to comment? If so, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, press star nine to raise your hand. Mr. Chair, I see no public. I move to close the public. Second. Second. Okay. Made and second in public <laughs> is closed. Uh, Cam, anything you want to add? Only that they both meet criterias one through five uh, for paintings and um, it's impressive work and planning staff recommends approval. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's good. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to accept and approve uh, the certified artists, Jiaming Zhang and uh, Zajal Tarpa, and uh, sent to City Council for formal adoption. Second. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. Okay, Vice Chair Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Aye. Commissioner Cruz. Aye. Commissioner Gungadin. I just want to say congratulations. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Torres. I just want to say, looking at these pieces, I um, look forward one day seeing them in some gallery in Jersey City. Um, he's doing nice work. Uh, these pieces are very impressive. That the us to look at, and uh, with that, I vote a big eye. And Chairman Langston. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm going to vote aye. Okay, motion carries all in favor to approve certified artists and recommend to council. Okay, thank you, everybody. All right, let's move on to item 15. It's case P22-225. is a major subdivision with variances for 808 Pavonia Ave, 132 to 140 Van Rypen Ave, and 12 Bryan Place. Uh, if we can bring Mr. McCann up, maybe we want to call item 16 as well. James should be joining us momentarily. Good evening, everybody. Council, good evening. Do you want us to call uh, the next case also? Uh, sure. That's probably the most efficient way to do it. Agreed. Okay, so let's call uh, also case P22-226. It's a preliminary and final major site plan amendment with C variances. Once again, address is being 808 Pavonia Ave. Uh, one thirty two zero one four zero Van Ripen. That sounds odd. Uh, Twelve Bryan Place and eight thirteen Pavonia Ave. Is that address correct, Council? Um, I think we're missing a dash in there. Yeah, yeah. I think we're we're certainly miss. I think we might be missing a comma in there actually. Yeah, that that threw me for a loop. It's um, one thirty two dash one forty Van Ripen. You're right. 
chairman. Yeah, I'm, I'm like anchorman. I just read whatever's in front of me, council. Yeah, that's quite a long address. Uh, Cameron, would you um, would you please promote Len Savino, Charles Height, um, Stephen Shang, and a gentleman named Tom Florkowitz? They're my presenters for the C for both applications. Okay, I believe we have everyone except Tom and I. Tom Lawrence, you said? Lorkowitz, F L O R. He's promoted. Oh, okay. Okay. Then we have everyone. I don't That's see Lynn. my secretary. That's what I'm talking about. Or, or no, no, you, you jumped the gun. Who am I missing? <laughs> Len Savino. Len Savino. This is. Uh, Boy. There we go. Now I deserve praise. All right, go get him, Cam. You're the best. <laughs> okay. Um, proceeding with uh, case P22 225, the subdivision application. My name is James McCann from the law firm of Connell Foley in Jersey City. Appearing tonight on behalf of KRE Silverstein 808 Pavonia Avenue, Pavonia LLC, uh, in connection with um, this application. Um, this is a major subdivision application. Uh, the property is located in the Journal Square 2060 redevelopment plan area. Um, Council Alampi, this is a definitely a notice case, and um, I'm going to defer to you. I filed affidavits of service and publication on January 5th of this year. Um, can you confirm? Good evening, Council. Uh, I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to both applications P22-225 as well as P22-226. They are in order. Uh, council, we're gonna mark them as A1 and A, I guess A1A. How do you wanna mark them? But you're gonna to wanna to take the vote on the subdivision separately, no? Yes, I think we should. Um, yeah, A1A would be fine, I think. So A1A will be the notice package for case P22-226. I guess we'll have to do the same thing with any exhibits that you present and overlap if we have to mark exhibits. Sure. Uh, so this subdivision mm -hmm. is, uh, the uh, the applicant is complying with the Journal Square 2060 redevelopment plan, which requires the developer of this site to make provisions uh, for a loading dock for the Lowe's Theater. Um, that's in the redevelopment plan. Uh, the applicant has a redevelopment agreement with the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency dated August 17th, 2022. That agreement requires the applicant to subdivide a portion of its property for the to for conveyance to the JCRA for the city's use in conjunction with the Lowe's Theater. So that's the application you're going to see tonight. Uh, my first witness is uh, Mr. Len Savino uh, from Langan Engineering. Um, he's going to briefly run you through the subdivision. This is a very simple application. Uh, Len. Um, I see him. Let me just swear him in. Okay. Hi, right, Len. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Sure. It's Leonard Savino, L-E-O-N-A-R-D, last name S-A-V as in Victor, I-N-O. Thank you. Uh, Yep. Mr. Zavino, good evening. Uh, we've qualified you in the past as well. Your license is current tonight? Yes, it is, sir. Okay. Thank you. You're qualified. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Shang, could you put up our, our exhibit for this? Um, Len, the first thing is, could you just explain to the board that we have two exhibits, explain to them what it is they're looking at? Um, yes. Uh, this is actually the subdivision plan that was submitted in the application package. Uh, what we decided to do to make it simple is to colorize it. Uh, it does show on, on the right-hand side three different configurations. 
The top configuration um, was the existing condition prior to the approved subdivision, which we um, got uh, in our previous application. Yeah, uh, so just one second. So, so commissioners, if you remember on October 11th of last year, the board approved the subdivision um, and that's what Len's referring to. The, the, the very top is what we presented for our first subdivision, the un- subdivided property, so to speak. Uh, next below that um, is what you actually approved as a board. Um, you approved breaking up five lots into two lots. Um, that's the subdivision that is in the middle of the page. Now, Len, take it from there. Certainly, so thank you. Um, so now the proposed lot configuration is on the bottom in three different colors. Uh, so essentially uh, block, uh, 9404 lot 3401 all the way on the left does not change. Um, and we use two different colors to show how uh, the former lot 3402 block 10601 would now be subdivided into lots 3403 and 3404 to uh, accommodate the uh, loading dock for the lows, which is in the green. Um, right. So graphically, that's pretty much it. Okay, Let, um, commissioners, do you have any questions regarding that exhibit? I don't. Anybody else? No. Okay. Um, yeah, we have we have one thing we need to correct. So this um, this application noticed for three deviations or variances, so to speak. One uh, deviation that we thought we needed, which we're going to explain to you that we don't was a shape factor deviation under the redevelopment plan. Turns out that we had some mathematical errors in our calculation. I'm gonna leave it up to Mr. Savino to explain the rest of it to you. But basically uh, we no longer need a shape factor deviation for this subdivision. Thank you, Jim. Uh, so the maximum lot shape factor that's permitted is 28. Um, as um, council had mentioned, um, we did find some mathematical errors in here and have corrected them here on the screen. So essentially for proposed lot 3403, the larger of the two, uh, we had a shape factor of 4877 on our drawing in, in back checking our calculation. It's actually 1829, which is below the 28. Um, and therefore it does comply. So that would be a yes, that it does comply for the shape factor. Uh, the other 3404 um, in that calculation, we did have 2244 shown um, and presented and in our back check on calcs, it was actually 1697, um, which is also less than the 28. And that also, it was already less than 28, so it was complying. So in both cases, we just wanna make that correction mathematically, a little Excel issue there, but um, all good. And, and what we will be submitting will obviously be the correct amount. Thank you, Len. Um, any questions about that, commissioners? No. no, the only question would be, um, it's actually not a question, but let's just make sure that uh, those numbers are updated for the signature sets. Absolutely. Yes, yes Mr. Chairman, for sure we will. Okay, thank you. Anybody else, any questions? Okay, no. let's go to the, okay, the next, uh, next slide, uh, Stephen. That's actually the major subdivision plan that was submitted. Yes. So and the un uncolorized version. <laughs> Yep, and and Stephen, could you just um, ex, ex, uh, focus in on the on the lot that's being uh, conveyed to the JCRA? Yes, so that's lot thirty four of four commissioners, and two of the variances that we need in connection with this subdivision are um, one is from the municipal land use law because technically, as this lot stands right now, the subdivision we're asking you to approve. This lot does not front on a public right of way. It does not abut a public right of way and it does not front on a public right of way. Um, so, in addition to the MLUL, we require a deviation or variance from the Jersey City subdivision ordinance because the MLUL and the subdivision ordinance are substantially the same. They require a lot to be on a public right of way. We do not have that condition here at present. However, 
the sole purpose of this subdivision is to provide a loading dock for the Lowe's Theater, which is the lot that abuts. Once this lot is created, the Lowe's Theater is the lot to the south, um, which, thank you, Stephen, which Stephen is, is showing you right now. So when this lot is incorporated into the Lowe's Theater lot, it will actually abut a public right-of-way, which is Magnolia Avenue. Um, in addition, this is obviously a condition that the city council was aware of um, when they created the requirement that, a, that, that the applicant in this case make provisions for a loading dock um, for the Lowe's Theater. Um, so I'm going to bring Charles Hyde up, but um, I wanted to just explain to you uh, the variance, uh, variances that we need and um, explain to you what will happen when we convey this property to the JCRA, which is anticipated to be in the very near future. Um, so are, are there any questions about that situation? No, I have none yet. Anybody else? Okay, thanks, Council. Go ahead. Okay. Um, having said that, that concludes Mr. Savino's testimony. I I have no more questions for him, and I can bring up Charles Hyde, our planner. I'm here, Jim. Okay, Charles. Um, can you just swear him in? Hi, Charles. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, can you state and spell your name, please? Yes, Charles Height, last name spelled H-E-Y-D-T. Thank you. Mr. Height, good evening. Uh, we've qualified you in the past as well. Your license is current tonight? It is current. It's uh, current in the new year. Happy new year, everyone. Happy new year to you too. Thank you. You're qualified. Charles, just to confirm, um, we, we did anticipate a deviation for shape factor. Um, you've also looked at the shape factor and you agree that we are actually in reality in compliance with the shape factor requirement. Would that be correct? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. Now, um, can you um, provide us with some testimony in connection with the two variances that I explained to the board um, and why you think it's appropriate for the board to grant those variances in this case? Yeah, and and um, I just wanted to start with the redevelopment plan. Uh, both of these variances are one from the general land development ordinance and one from the municipal land use law. But in the redevelopment plan, this area that is proposed to be subdivided is in direct connection with facilitating the requirement of the loading docks that are going to be in conjunction with the Lowe's Alley. Um, it's part of a requirement of the redevelopment plan for the improvement of this overall area. Uh, and other aspects that are beneficial here is in an effort to transition the property, the, the real property, uh, this subdivision has to occur to allow it to be received by the city. Um, the variances that are being requested uh, are, are very similar. The wording is is uh, not exactly the same uh, from the Jersey City Land Development Ordinance and the MLUL, um, but it meets at the same intent. Um, so the provision of uh, public right of ways to all the properties. Um, the, the intent there is to allow for adequate access to every property so that when it is improved, uh, vehicular emergency uh, and, and all the other types of uh, utility access can be provided from the public right of way. Uh, in this instance, uh, we have actually a very unique uh, pu public private right of way occurring in the, at this location. Uh, the loading zone, if, if you do recall, um, will have access um, to the street network uh, through through a public easement. Um, you can see the, the reference to Magnolia to the south there. So uh, we are meeting the intent by the proposed plan that was recently improved. Um, this property is not going to be uh, without access. Um, the other more, more important part of this is this an interim um, proposal. As this property transitions to common ownership with the city, uh, the Lowe's Theater, uh, if we're all aware, has frontage 
on uh, Journal Square uh, Plaza. So as it's merged, which is uh, what we believe the intent to be, um, it will then uh, comply with these two requirements, having access on Journal Square Plaza, uh, and it will also have access in the rear at that point. So we'll have uh, two means of ac access uh, and, and, a fu and function appropriately for, for the Lowe's Theater. Those are the positive criteria. Um, with respect to the negative criteria, uh, we did fact check the shape factor on the proposed uh, lot, also the um, remaining lot that's uh, the larger lot that's being subdivided. Uh, they both comply um, with respect to uh, the redevelopment plan. Again, I'll reiterate that this is really an, at, at uh, a way to implement the, the loading zone and it being conveyed to the city. Uh, so there's no impairment um, in with, with, with respect to the redevelopment plan, as well as with respect to the intent of the land development ordinance and MLUL. So I Thank hope you. I ran through that succinctly enough. Thank you, Charles. Um, I have no further questions for, for Mr. Height. Uh, nor do I. Anybody else? No. So All right. Thank you, Mr. Just, just to sum up in one sentence, um, the lot that was approved by this board on October 11th um, is lot 34.02. And what we are now asking is that lot 3402 be subdivided to create what we are describing as lot 3403 which will now be the phase one development lot for this project and 3404, which will now be the loading dock lot as we call it uh, for conveyance to the JCRA. And with that summary, uh, that's my subdivision case, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, council. Um, do you want us to move on the subdivision before the other application? Um, it, it's. You, you might as well. Yes. Yes. Let's do that. Let's just keep it clean and do that. Sure. Okay. So is that okay time, with uh, Mr. Lampy? Is that okay with you? Hey, Chris, I have a question real quickly, though, on this before we move yes, on. Sure, is, there sure. a reason, is there a reason why we're not going to name it 3402, 3403? Do we and just eliminate 02 altogether? Is there a reason for that? Yes, I think because the tax assessor, once once the tax assessor establishes a lot and it is subdivided, he eliminates the former number okay. from the process, from the record. Thank you very Correct. much. I just want to get clear on it. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Ed. Um, anybody else before we open up public? No. Okay, no. so at this time, let's open it up for public comment on the subdivision. Uh, if anybody's here from the public that wants to comment on this subdivision, please raise your hand. If you are calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Mr. Chair, seeing no public, I move to close the public. Second. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Um, Tanya, are you handling this? I am, Chairman. Okay, do you have any comments on the subdivision? I don't, I, I did prepare a staff memo, but it was done um, for the both of them at the same time, since this is just an amendment. I really didn't feel it was necessary to do anything too long. Um, I have no comments except that this is definitely a part of the conditions of approval from the previous, uh, I believe site plan approval. I'm not sure it was part of the subdivision. Uh, I'd have to check real quick. If you really want me to, I can do that. Um, and we're just really glad that they're um, moving forward with it quick, quickly. Uh, okay. I think that, that I can help um, the director out. So the applicant will agree that the conditions in the prior subdivision approved on October 11th uh, by this board um, carry to this um, subdivision, and we will incorporate a reference to those conditions in this resolution. If, if okay. that satisfies Tanya. <coughs> yeah. Okay, thank you, council. All right, so uh, I'll entertain a motion on the subdivision then. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22-225 as presented to the board here tonight. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. 
Okay. On the um, Cam, do you want to do it? Yes. Um, Commissioner, uh, Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner, Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Aye. Commissioner Cruz. Aye. Commissioner Gangadin. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. Motion carries all in favor. Okay, thank you. All right, Council, let's go ahead with uh, P22 226, please. Um, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. So uh, this is an application for an amended site plan approval for phase one of this project. And again, um, the previous uh, approval was on October 11th of 2022. Um, this is a series of project refinements, um, th th this application, um, in order to comply with uh, some building code requirements and in order to make some, uh, what we believe are minor improvements to the project. Um, the changes are very minor. Um, however, um, you all have experience with the Journal Square 2060 redevelopment plan. It has a lot of very detailed requirements. And as a result of that, we have triggered um, by making these changes, a few changes to our deviations. And in order to make one code compliant change, we have triggered a new deviation. Um, I am going to bring up uh, Mr. Tom Florkowitz, who is one of the project architects at Handel Architects, uh, to start out our presentation. Hi, Tom. I'll swear you in, all right? If you could raise your right hand. Yep. Do you swear any testimony you get tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Yeah. Thomas Florkowitz, T-H-O-M-A-S-F-L-O-R-K-E-W-I-C-Z. Thank you. Mr. Flockowitz, good evening. Uh, your good license evening. is current tonight in the state of New yeah. Jersey. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. So, Mr. Flockowitz, um, you're a member of the uh, of the team at Handel that has um, worked on this project. Is that correct? Yes. And um, <clears throat> you've been involved with other members of the team uh, in the preparation of the plans for this. Yes. And are you and your colleague, Stephen Shang, has also assisted that team in preparation of the plans. Is that correct? Yep. Yes. And are you going to defer your presentation and ask Mr. Shang to make the presentation on your behalf tonight? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with your <clears throat> permission, we'd like to bring up Mr. Shang to actually do the presentation. Sure. Let's just get Mr. Shang sworn in. Hi, Stephen. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Stephen Shang, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S-H-E-N-G. Thank you. All right, Mr. Shang, good evening. Uh, go ahead, counsel. Um, Mr. Shang, you, can, you've te you testified before the board at the last hearing on October 11th, correct? I did. All right, and you're familiar with the plans and you've worked on the plans that we're gonna to present tonight? Yes, I am. Okay, um, let's let's proceed with the presentation, but first um, let's just give the board a quick idea of what it is we're presenting. Um, we have a series of exhibits. One sheet will be, you will see what has already been approved by this board on October 11th. And then we will show you a sheet that has been filed as part of this amended site plan application so that you can see the change that we're requesting um, or, or the deviation that we are seeking to change, um, whatever the case may be. Um, council, we probably should mark this um, as, I guess, exhibit A2A. Would that follow with our previous? Um, it would. Okay. So we'll mark it as A2A. Let's just 
identify it for the record. Okay. Um, Stephen, can you just explain to us what this these plans are? Yep, absolutely. So um, this is a section drawing through the, the site. On the left, you'll see phase two. On the right is phase one. This is, again, the originally approved site plan um, on, on October 11th of last year. This new plan here has been submitted um, uh, December 9th of last year. And the highlighted portion here is the area on phase one that has changed. On the next page, I'll show you, on the left was the approved height and stories of the phase one tower. And on, uh, sorry, on the left. And on the right is the amended height and stories. And um, quickly what happened was we, as we developed it, we found that we could remove the mechanical level, which is was on uh, level 49 and absorb that into level 48. So effectively eliminating that story. So our stories have been reduced from 49 levels to 48. That caused a series of different, to, different um, floor to floor heights on the level below and that level 48. And all of that resulted in a net reduction of the height of the building by about 11 and a half feet. So that's what this um, is showing. Oops, let me go back. Sorry. That's what that is showing. Um, All of which is in compliance with the redevelopment plan, correct? Correct. Okay. Then there were a series of minor adjustments at the ground level plan we wanted to call your attention to. So again, this is the approved um, plan, ground level plan from October 11th. Um, in this, you'll see uh, we're coming from the Lowe's loading dock, which was just explained. And then this is the art walk, which comes up into the drop off plaza. The tower is to the north and to the south is a one story building, um, the gallery and uh, ramp to the parking below. This is the new plan and highlighted in orange here are the different areas that have been adjusted. And I'm gonna go through those um, quickly here. So um, on the top of the page, you'll see the approved plan, which we can refer to and, and uh, back to. And on the bottom are these changes. And let me zoom in a little bit to make it easier to understand. So for example, in this case, um, previously, we had the stair coming from the basement merge with the stair coming from the tower and exiting out one door. Um, we were advised by our code consultant that they should each exit directly to the outside on their own without merging. That required us to shift the building footprint here so, uh, back so that we could allow for that direct access. So that changes a number of different things from frontage to transparency to building coverage. Um, these areas, these two elongated areas here, both flank the art walk, which comes up through from here from the Lowe's Theater. And um, on the north, on page north side here, we originally had a series of hardscape, uh, let's call them stoops. And we decided we needed more landscape along the art walk. So we changed those stoops to planters. So this is now landscape, which lines the art walk. And then on this side, which is the gallery side, we, we were, as we studied it further, we decided in, in widening the art walk. So originally there were some stoops here as well, some hardscape stoops. And what we decided here was by widening the art walk, we would make it a more flexible, more pleasant um, uh, walkway. So we've removed those stoops and then all of this glazing front directly onto the art walk. Um, there's another of uh, uh, small adjustments that took place here in order to create the Siamese fire hose connections. So there are some minor adjustments to the face and all of those taken together. Uh, let me just go through one more thing, which is this, this um, wall here. I'm going to zoom in on that. So again, the previous approved plan here and our current uh, amended plan. And in this case, the original um, wall here, which um, surrounds the parking ramp, which drops down to the below grade parking, originally that was a screen wall. So it was kind of an open air wall. But our, our consultant, our code consultant has advised us that must be a fire rated wall. So now instead of a screen wall, it's a solid wall, which is the same wall that is um, uh, makes up the um, balance of the building. And 
and um, so this wall now creates, we think, both fire safety for um, that's required, as well as some privacy for those neighbors, meaning the cars, the noise, the exhaust, the headlights won't necessarily um, leak into their into their properties. So we think this is actually a net improvement in both of those cases. However, it will, um, as we studied this, we decided to include this as part of our building coverage, frontage, transparency, all of those factors as well. So all of these changes, which are highlighted here again in orange, affect those, those things that I just mentioned, the building coverage, which before was in compliance at 37%, 38% is allowed allowable. And we now, when we include all of this area as part of our building coverage, we are now at 40%. So it's 2% um, deviation there. And then these other, other um, um, uh, amendments here relate to changes in the, um, in the, the permitted frontage as well as the transparency. So building one goes from 19% uh, uh, to 20%. Building two goes from a non-permitted frontage from 27% to 47% and from transparency from 55% down to 30%. So those are the sort of the resultant of those changes I just described. Um, the two last points I wanted to go over is uh, on this page. This page, which is submitted, has all clouded all of those different changes that um, I just reviewed. And then there are a couple other ones we wanted to call your attention to. The first one has to do with the energy efficiency of the building. Um, and we, we believe we are um, very, we are compliant and certainly we meet the intent of the original RDP for a highly energy efficient building. The RDP asked for 15% better than 2007 or the most recently adopted code. We were a little unsure of how to interpret that, um, but we decided to consider the most recently adopted code as the one to follow. And so we are compliant with the 2016 code. Um, this code, we are not going to be 15% better than that code. However, we feel that the 2016 code, which, which is nine years um, the better of 2007 code, has become, has become much more stringent and is considerably more burdensome from an uh, energy um, standpoint than the 2007 code, which is why we believe we are in compliance with the orig original intent of the RDP. And then the last one is um, the signing. Just sure. one second. So commissioners, just just to say one thing about this standard, my personal opinion is we don't really need a deviation from this standard because I believe the way the redevelopment plan is written is that our current requirement is to comply with the 2016 um, code, which is also part of the New Jersey building code. Um, but there is ambiguity in the language as to whether it's, do you have to comply with this 2016 or do you have to be 15% better? So for avoidance of doubt, we have decided to ask for the deviation so that hopefully if this ever comes up, because there was a difference of opinion on some of the people on our team as to exactly how to interpret this. But I decided to bring us for the deviation to kind of just put this issue to bed. So I hope you could appreciate that. And Stephen, having said that, you could go on to the last uh, item. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the last one is really just related to signage. Um, originally, we had a deviation for four signage sconces on the building. And the correct number is actually five signage sconces. So we wanted to increase that from four to five. And, and that's it. That's it. And as I said, Commissioner, some of these changes are, Commissioner, some of these changes are really minor, but the fact that they trigger deviations, I felt it was necessary to bring us back here to just put them on the record. So um, I don't have any more questions of Mr. Shang. Um, if, does uh, Mr. Chairman, does, does the board? I got you, Council. <laughs> yeah, I have no questions for Mr. Shang. Anybody else? I do not. Good job. Okay. Oh. All right. Thank you, sir.
Okay, just to finish up with Mr. Height, just to talk a little bit about the deviations that we're asking for. Actually, most of them are minor expansions of deviations that the board has already granted. But um, Charles, can we bring I'm here? Back? Yes, okay. So it might be helpful to switch to sheet nine. Um, these uh, changes, uh, improvements at the ground level are all uh, bulk deviations. Um, they all are related to um, either square footage at the ground level or the facade at the ground level. Um, we heard from Mr. Shang that um, in discussions about uh, code compliance, mainly with uh, fire safety in terms of separation of access and the firewall uh, are improvements over the prior design, uh, as, as well as with along the um, the art walk, uh, the improvements to uh, incorporate greenery. Uh, that was one thing we did uh, discuss um, uh, as a design improvement, uh, as well as with the uh, the frontage of the gallery to improve for access and, and the width of the art walk in front of the gallery. So uh, all of these changes uh, do trigger, uh, do exacerbate um, or trigger pr prior deviations. Um, but to uh, with respect to the intent of of the redevelopment plan, um, we are still uh, in um, coordination with the the mapping, the location of the building, and the provision of the art walk. Um, so there's no uh, departure from the redevelopment plan. Um, that's the uh, bulk requirements at the grade level. Um, there are benefits that, in my opinion, do outweigh the benefits, uh, the, the detriments with, with these four um, requested deviations. The um, next two are probably the two minor ones. Um, if we can move, I think I forget what sheet that's on, maybe sheet 10. Um, I'll brush off my LEED AP certification. Um, back in 2007, uh, the energy code was uh, a bit dated for a lot of uh, newer um, energy systems. Uh, the goal was to use that as a benchmark and increase 15%. This is a green building design standard, um, part of a lot of United States green building measures back then. Um, Codes catch up, uh, they usually lag um, um, technology. And in this this is an instance where that's occurring. Um, I do agree with uh, Ms. McCann. Um, the, the intent was to be better than 2007 in terms of efficiency. Uh, that was generally the language for green building. Um, the fact that there's or most recently adopted code in there can be read that you can comply with the most recently adopted code. Um, so I do believe that it, it, it's an abundance of caution that we're raising this issue. Uh, the other aspect here is that uh, the 2016 code, uh, and again, I'm not an energy consultant, uh, but it's my understanding that that code uh, incorporates this intent of establishing a baseline and then requiring an efficiency greater than that. Um, so it's, it's it's changed in the way it's uh, it requires compliance. Um, with that, we are complying with the 2016 code. Um, so I think that the intent is being met with this, and there are benefits uh, associated with the design. Nothing's being changed with the building in terms of mechanical systems, energy systems that was previously proposed. Um, with the signage sconces. I can calculate shape factor pretty well. Uh, I cannot count scon signage sconces on walls, apparently. So this was over oversight on our prior application. Um, there were five signage sconces identified where only one is permitted. Um, so we are requesting uh, five in total where previously was granted was four. Um, again, the, the, the signage package for this art walk uh, for these buildings is a co comprehensive signage package. It works with all the facades um, and there's nothing distractive, nothing uh, out of character for the, the intended art walk. That's all I have. I believe the benefits do outweigh the detriments for all the requested uh, 
deviations here. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hyatt. I have no questions. Anybody else? Nope. No. No. All right. Sir. Council, My pleasure. No questions. Uh, commissioners, just one last thing. I noticed the agenda talks about a change in unit mix. There, there is no change in the unit mix. There's no change in the unit count. There's no change in the parking count. Um, all the deviations and all the changes to the project are strictly architectural um, or site changes. Okay, thank you, Council. Uh, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. If anybody's here from the public that wants to comment, please raise your hand. And if you're calling in, press star nine. Mr. Chair, I see no public. I move to close the public. Second. Second it. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Uh, Tanya, anything you want to add? I, I do not. Uh, all of the amendment requests were, were very reasonable and probably the only reason they had to be an official amendment and not administrative is because they did trigger some additional DV. Uh, the only thing um, I think Mr. McCann had this, added this, uh, thank you very much to the last time that I brought this up, is that the conditions be carried over from the prior um, original application. Yes, the, the applicant agrees to that. Tanya, there is in, the, in your staff memo, there's one your number seven uh, conflicts with number one and number two. And the last time we did this, we eliminated part of seven so that it would be consistent with condition one and two. And it has to do with um, when the landscaping has to be installed. Our redevelopment agreement allow, allows it to be upon the last certificate of occupancy for each phase. Um, so I just want to make sure that that's that that these conditions are consistent with our redevelopment agreement. And having said that, I agree to the same conditions as the last time. Yeah, absolutely. I apologize for that. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Tanya. So I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22-226 as presented to the board here tonight. Second. Second it. Okay. Motion is made and seconded for approval. Vice Chair Dr. Gonzalez. Good job, guys. Uh, I'm uh, I'm an I. Commissioner Dr. Stein. Uh, it's I for me and very nice project. Commissioner Lipsky. Appreciate the level of detail and thorough explanation. I vote I. Commissioner Cruz. I. Commissioner Gangadin. Thank you for a great presentation. I vote aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Uh, just a moment, I wanna make a comment to the developer and to um, the architects and everybody that's on board here, especially to uh, the council, uh, James McMahon. Uh, thank you for the respect that you guys give to this board and that you showed here. A high level of respect to us that even the smallest deviations you thought would be a good idea to present it to us. Um, and um, to other developers out there, that's how things run smoothly. And um, I appreciate that. And I appreciate that the time you thought that these things were big to this board. With that, I vote a big eye. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And Chairman Langston. Yeah, I think uh, the changes are de minimis. Um, I certainly appreciate uh, amendment number four is going to require one more sprinkler head in that building. So uh, I'm going to vote aye. Okay, motion carries all in favor with conditions. All right, thanks, Cam. Um, Mike, Thank do you, you want to take a break? Appreciate it. Thank you, Thank Council. You. Thank you. Mike, do you want to take your break you. now or uh, do you want to get one more in? I'm going to bring Garfield Ave up. That should be great. I think David wants it, so I'm in. I think David wants it. All right. Uh, yeah, let's that, take David. that, everybody. It's 7.15. Let's come back at 7.25. And uh, Cam, if you could promote uh, the team for, um, what's the address here? 900 Garfield. 900 Garfield app next. Jennifer Phillips. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you, everybody. We'll be right back.
Um, hello, Jennifer Smith. Hello, thank you. Hi, uh, good evening. Um, who else is in your team? If you could please promote Greg Glor and Charles Height, please. Oh, uh, okay. Not a problem.
All right, could we come to order again, everybody? And if we could just let the record show that uh, Commissioner Cruz is no longer with us tonight. He uh, apparently had a better offer. Uh, so with that said, let's call item 31 is case P22-177 is a preliminary and final major subdivision with variances for 900 Garfield Avenue. Thank you, Chairman. Can everyone hear me? We can, Council. Yes. Thank you. And, and thank you again for allowing us to go at this time. We appreciate no worries, no worries. My name is Jennifer Phillips Smith. I am an attorney with Gibbons PC, and I am here this evening on behalf of Garfield JC Partners LLC. The applicant is the designated co redeveloper for the property located at Block 21501, lots 16, 17, 18.01, 19.01, and 20.01. We are here this evening seeking preliminary and final major subdivision approval in order to effectuate the first two phases of development under the approved redevelopment agreement and the redevelopment plan. Now, by way of just a little bit of background, this subdivision is not the full subdivision that will eventually be needed for the entire city block. Instead, it is a, an interim subdivision in a, in a way to facilitate the development of the first two blocks, development blocks, along with the associated right of way and a parcel that will eventually be open space. We recognize that there will be a need for future subdivisions for the balance of the block uh, in, the, in the future. This subdivision also includes some lots that we fully anticipate will be consolidated, but at the moment the lot is in two different ownerships. Lot 20.01 is owned by an affiliate of our co-redeveloper, it's 900 Garfield. The rest of the block is owned by the JCRA, but the parcels are in escrow and pursuant to the redevelopment agreement are intended to be conveyed to affiliates of the co-redevelopers for development. So you will see as we show this uh, subdivision that you have some small lots that are intended to then be transferred from the private owner and larger lots from the JCRA and then put together in common ownership to form a larger lot. We do require deviations from the canal crossing redevelopment plan specifically because we are not doing all of the right of way subdivisions and all of the development lot subdivisions for the future phases at this time. You'll also see there are some discrepancies that are caused by the actual layout and engineering of the lots as opposed to the concepts that were in the redevelopment plan. Some small mathematical changes as well as you'll see an issue with um, the widening of Carteret Avenue as it relates to the size of one of the blocks. Uh, so with that, we do have two witnesses. Uh, we have Greg Glor and Charles Height who will uh, Mr. Gore will be presenting the plat as proposed. Mr. Height will be addressing the redevelopment plan and the deviations required from it. Uh, we also did present, uh, we mailed and published notice and presented the affidavit to the planning board staff in anticipation of this hearing. Chairman, with that, I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the application before the board this evening. I've had the opportunity to review it. It does appear to be in order. So we'll mark it as A1 for the record. All Thank right. You. Thank you, Council. So with that, I'd like to call up Mr. Glor, our surveyor. Hi, Greg. I'll swear in before you go. All right. If you could raise your right hand. Sure. You swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir, I do. And for the record, could you state spell your name, please? Uh, Greg Glor. Last name is spelled G L O O R. Thank you. Mr. Glor, good evening. Um, I don't remember if we've qualified you in the past, have we? Uh, I have testified previously to uh, before this board uh, some years ago. Uh, um, I am have been licensed in the state of New Jersey for 30 years, held a surveying license. Uh, for, and as I speak to you this evening, that license is active and in good standing. Excellent. Okay, thank you. You're qualified then. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Glor, I believe you're going to share your screen. Uh, I do have that uh, prepared. Let's hope, first of all, I'm assuming all of you can hear me. This is the first time I'm getting my audio going here in this, uh, in this environment. We, I guess you all can hear me? We can, yes. yes. Okay, great. Let's see if I do this correctly. Can you see the screen, which has essentially, oh, I, so of course, no, that's a distraction that I don't need right now. Um, uh, I have, we, we can see the screen. This Actually, is 
This is our um, existing condition survey, which shows in the red outline here, if I can zoom in a little bit, the entire parcel in question that Ms. Smith uh, spoke about, uh, uh, where all of the development will occur. Our area is going to be focused on the top portion, but I wanted to show the survey, which includes at the time of publishing, it was considered lot 18, lot 20, lot 17 and lot 16. We know that these have been subsequently, since the publishing of this survey, uh, the lot designations have been changed a little bit, 1800 and 2000. There's also another lot in here, 19 uh, down in the middle. The survey also represents the uh, depiction of the former Mor Morris Canal across here. Do you folks see my pointer as I drag this across here? Okay. All right. Just want to make yes. sure. Yes. Um, uh, with that, just giving uh, an understanding and providing some context of where we're talking about, I'll move on to the subdivision application, which is uh, a colored subdivision map. I think uh, something similar was shown previously, uh, where we color the lots in order to be able to talk about uh, what we're doing here. And Mr. Glor, if you could pause for one minute, I think this is what we had previously submitted. We have provided the color to make it easier for the public and the board to okay. see the various lot. Yep. But if we could mark this as A2, I think Let's that would it. be A2 is the coloring subdivision rendering. Yes. And can you just provide the date and the last revision? Uh, the formal date was, oh, we got down on the bottom here, uh, August of August 18th, 2022, last revised December 12th, 2022. Okay, okay. Council, uh, if we could, let's make sure we get that over to city planning to be part of the packet. Absolutely. All right, so thank you. Going through the colors then, if Mr. Glor, if you could start, I suppose, with the yellow lot and describe that new lot and what it'll be used for. Sure. Uh, the we, we have new lots that uh, are going to be created as a result of this subdivision application, beginning with the, the yellow lot uh, fronting on both Garfield and Carteret. It's designated as block 21501.01 lot uh, 1.1, uh, and we'll have uh, an area of 1.475 acres. Um, moving down along Garfield, we the green parcel is going to be a future right-of-way parcel that um, is designated. Um, uh, where's the designation? I, I, we just called it right-of-way parcel number one. I believe there was a formal designation that we're going to be assigning this uh, on the final plan, uh, but the, to, the green parcel is going to be a reserved for a future right away, which um, will be dedicated as the subdivision is perfected. Uh, moving down along Garfield, uh, we have this purple parcel and this green parcel, which ultimately will be combined. The purple being owned by uh, the JCRA and the green being owned by uh, Garfield Avenue, as Ms. Smith said, they're under different ownerships. So they're being defined here on the subdivision plan to ultimately be combined onto, onto common ownership. Um, these two lots, we have uh, what will be temporarily lot 0102.1A having an area of 0.473 and then 0.21B, uh, having a lot uh, area of 1.271. I believe the combined will be 1.74 when all is said and done. You'll see that lot uh, depicted on the other plans in the application as combined. Um, as you said, they're here separate in order to support the process of them being conveyed together from singular into a singular ownership. The lot at the end here is the um, open space parcel uh, lot block 21501.02, block 2.2, uh, with an area of 0.761 acres. Uh, that leaves down here, we have another road right-of-way parcel that will be uh, created uh, containing a lot, uh, almost just a little less than an acre, 0.949 acres. And then there's a second strip in here uh, that is five feet wide, which is gonna be conveyed to JCRA parcel down below uh, 
uh, in order to form the proposed right of way parcel because this strip in here is it has to, it has to do with the ownership the common ownership uh, the little piece in here is still owned by um, 900 Garfield 900 900 900 Garfield it will be conveyed to the JCRA onto this larger parcel which will remain on the bottom um, which will be subdivided in a subsequent application uh, that uh, uh, is not part of the, I don't think the discussion tonight. And then there's another parcel down here as well, which will be done with a subsequent application. Um, lot, lot one in block 21501.05, 3.6 acres. Um, uh, all of these parcels represent the sum of the whole in the exhibit I showed previously. Um, and it's just the creation of the parcels to, to uh, promote the application and into the proper ownerships. Thank you, Mr. Gore. So we will be addressing the planning staff's memo uh, shortly with Mr. Height, but there was one question that came up in the memo that we received from Michael Manzella and Lindsay Schofield from the Division of Transportation Planning dated January 9th, 2023. Uh, and there were three comments there. Uh, the first, they indicated that the uh, right of way for Morris Canal Greenway is accommodated by the plans and there's an overall right of way of 125 for Canal Way. Uh, but then the second comment, it indicated that it appeared that there was a 60 foot right of way for Carteret Street that was not in alignment with the 80 feet shown uh, in the JCRA plans previously shared with the division. And they asked us to please confirm the proposed street cross section based on these changes. Uh, so upon receiving that review letter, we took a closer look at the subdivision. Is that correct? That is correct. And um, we're uh, intending to, we, we've annotated on um, this plan to show this, this red line here, which, which would show a seven foot wide widening uh, of Carteret that would come out of our proposed lot 1.01, which would, um, it's about, it's, uh, the area there is about four hundredths, four hundredths of an acre, and would result in a reduction of lot one point oh one from one point four seven uh, acres to one point four three acres, and I believe that is uh, what was shown on the redevelopment plan. Or, I will ask Mr. Height to discuss yeah, okay. Okay. or doesn't to the redevelopment plan, but to address that comment, the applicant is willing, as a condition of approval, to dedicate that additional. Uh, seven feet, which is in accordance with the JCRA plans, the TNM plans referenced in the transportation and planning report. And of course, this plan will be revised for compliance to have that have that in there and the appropriate meets and bounds and areas shown. Thank you. That is all I have for Mr. Clor. We are going to ask Mr. Height to testify uh, specifically concerning the redevelopment plan and its requirements. Okay, thank you, Mr. Glor. Uh, I have no questions. Anybody else? No. Nope. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. And Charles, you uh, remain under oath, correct? Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Height, thank you. Yeah. And I understand that Mr. Height was already accepted as an expert in planning in a prior application this evening. Yes, and he is still under oath. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Mr. Let Height, you have reviewed the redevelopment plan uh, for this property and this plan as well, correct? Correct, the Canal Crossing Redevelopment Plan, yes. And can you begin by just addressing where this proposed plan does and does not conform to the map that is part of the redevelopment plan that shows the anticipated block and right-of-way layout? Yes, so uh, generally uh, the deviation that we're seeking tonight is a deviation from the transportation network map. Um, that map establishes the intended street grid for the redevelopment area. Um, and it also calls out some specific uh, cartway widths and, and right of way widths. So we're, we're deviating from that map, um, but I, I do, we did want to take the time to walk through the nuances uh, of that. Um, it's uh i always felt uh a little bit of uh that we were we were watching a game of tetris uh play out on this plan uh, i think everyone on the project team was trying to track the changes um we are 
trying to tie up a lot of loose ends, whether it be diverse ownership uh, for the existing configurations. And then again, we're referencing um, the intended ownership, whether it be uh, the development parcels, the right of way parcels or the JCRA parcel. Um, so there's there's movement here, but we wanna make it uh, clear and transparent for the board um, moving forward uh, for this redevelopment plan to be uh, effectuated as, as Ms. Smith mentioned earlier. So um, I think the easiest place to start is on Carter, Carteret Avenue. Um, if we can move to, so this is um, proposed lot one up in the far left in the yellow. We can move to the uh, redevelopment plan map. Uh, so the numbers do change, but um, we're referencing on this map from the redevelopment plan lot 10 up in the uh, northern portion of the of the map. Yep. Um, so as Carteret Avenue uh, comes down from Garfield Avenue, it makes a bend through Canal Way. Um, we are proposing uh, lot 10 to exist in its current form. That was the yellow area that we referenced area uh, before. Uh, when we did receive the comment letters, um, just by way of background, uh, typically in a redevelopment plan, we do have these maps. Uh, in in the history and the development of this particular redevelopment plan, there was quite a bit of surveying done um, to establish what the appropriate street grid would be, because there were some, there are some existing streets, uh, Claremont, Halliday, um, in this area. So we were working off of an existing street grid, trying to implement new streets and new blocks. Uh, so we did go back to those early um, set of, of um, survey documents. That's where Mr. Gore was able to identify this seven foot um, uh, clarification on lot 10. Um, What's shown here on lot 10 is a, a lot size of 1.47 acres. Uh, to accurately reflect this map uh, and account for that seven foot discrepancy, uh, it does this decrease to 1.43 acres. Um, so we wanted to make that clear uh, for the board. Uh, and that was really at, at the request of, of city engineering as well as city planning. Um, I should mention um, along with this, Clarific this this deviation that we're or, or this clarification that we're seeking, um, the right of way uh, is intended to be eighty feet eighty feet for Carteret, and by accounting for our portion of it on the uh, northeast side, uh, the seven foot um, portion of of private property, that will ensure the eighty foot cartway be met, uh, or eighty foot right of way be met. Uh, one other item from the redevelopment plan uh, is because there has been time and, and obviously um, a property survey uh, that's very detailed that we are proposing by way of, of the survey and the subdivision as, at, with this application uh, does have a lot more detail to it than the prior preliminary survey work. Um, the, sub, the redevelopment plan did account for subdivisions and I just wanted to read this for the board's benefit. So this is a provision in the redevelopment plan um, in section, let me just get the reference. It's the general administration requirements on page six, uh, referencing subdivisions. Any subdivision of lots and parcels of land within the redevelopment area shall be in accordance with this plan's requirements and the Jersey City Land Subdivision Ordinance. Um, so we believe that we're meeting the intent of, of the requirement for this with, uh, with the uh, change in lot area uh, to allow for the appropriate right of way. If we could flip back to the prior sheet, um, I just wanted to move to another section of the redevelopment plan. Um, there was a comment with respect to Canal Way. Uh, that's actually the the location of Canal Way is a right of way. Um, it's the main boulevard. It has a a, a part a median through it, um, a, a green median through it, and it's it runs generally the course of where the former canal, Morris Canal, uh, you see on this plan. Um, we were asked to uh, confirm, uh, similar to Carter Avenue, the right of way with, uh, with, canal, um, with canal way. Uh, there are different dimensions here throughout the canal because, again, we're starting from 
a certain set of properties and we know where we need to end up. So we have to carve up each one of the existing properties in a way to ensure uh, the conveyance um, to accommodate the, the new block and lots and right of ways. Um, but just to be clear, uh, the intent here is to accommodate a, a right of way width that's 125 feet. There's dimensions on the left that reference 114 feet. That obviously has a segment um, that's angled. Um, so we wanted to clarify that it's not 114 feet. Um, we also have on the right a dimension of approximately 130 feet. Uh, that dimension actually extends into um, a, a, what will be a new right of way. Um, the light blue sliver, as we're referencing, um, that is a portion that will be a, a development parcel. Uh, it's the northeast portion of that block. It's, I believe, block 17. We, we'll, we'll flip back to the redevelopment plan in a moment. Um, but again, uh, those dimensions on the subdivision plan are not the intended right of way. The intended right of way is actually 125 feet. Um, so similarly, we went back to the prior preliminary surveying documents that do reference 125 feet. Uh, so we are in accordance with those technical documents that underline the redevelopment map. However, uh, when we go to the uh, transportation map, Oh, and, and I just want to correct it. It was lot 14, the northern portion. You can see it at the angle there between Dakota Street and Forest Street. Um, if we if we go, do we have the transportation map? I think that might be. So here's where we see a little bit more detail and focus on the right of ways. Canal Way, uh, if you look closely enough, is referenced as 126 feet in right of way width. Um, Part of our most recent review of the preliminary surveying documents in coordination with Mr. Glore and the project team, um, we did feel it would be in the best interest to be consistent with the primary preliminary um, surveying documents. Uh, it's a difference of one foot, uh, but in this instance, um, staying with the 125 feet and requesting the deviation from this map, um, we believe is is in the best interest of continuity between uh, future alignment of Canal Way. Uh, it's it's one foot. It, it can be accommodated with sidewalk widths. There's room to accommodate sufficient um, access for pedestrians. The drive aisles would not um, be reduced by any means, the vehicular drive aisles and that greenway uh, through the center of Canal Way would not be uh, reduced in any way uh, to allow for the accommodation of, of those streetscape amenities. And Mr. Um, I could pause for a second. In the memo that we received on January 9th from Mr. Manzella, he did indicate that the overall right of way of 125 feet reserved for Canal Way was in conformance with the JCRA plans prepared by TNM and previously shared with the city. And, and that's the direction we're going. I think we have enough input um, from city, the transportation planning, um, as well as city planning that that we can be consistent with the preliminary surveying documents. It just so happens that there's a six instead of a five, uh, and it's a formal deviation. So those are technical aspects. Uh, I think the other deviation, uh, if we can flip back to the color rendered subdivision plan. Um, we're moving further south, and this is where we start to see um, what would be blocks 14, 17, and further south. Um, these areas represented in blue and red um, are being proposed in these shapes um, really to uh, start to to the initial subdivisions. The uh, horizontal line accounts for uh, one of the new cross streets, uh, but at this point in time, we don't have uh, the more detailed survey information that we have for the northern portion north of of Canal Way. So, um, believe me when I say this is complex. If we were to propose a street grid or further subdivision, there might be discrepancies, uh, and we didn't think it would be the, the best interest to do this, that at this point in time. Um, again, this is an interim subdivision. The horizontal 
break between these two parcels lines up with the intended right of way and will facilitate future subdivision. Um, that's really what I wanted to cover in my direct um, with respect to the site plan. Uh, I did want to reiterate um, there's no detriment to the redevelopment plan. This is all an effort to effectuate the redevelopment plan, institute the new block grids in the north, um, specifically referencing the objective to provide a layout of streets and open spaces that encourage pedestrian interconnections to light rail stations, civic buildings, and commercial uses with the intent to provide safe pedestrian connections within a five-minute walk from residential buildings. We're reducing the scale of the existing structures, reorganizing them to allow for a more walkable and a, and a more efficient use on the, the proposed development blocks. Uh, that, is, that is the first stepping stone to uh, implement the street grid here. And I think we're uh, consistent with that objective of the redevelopment plan. So I don't believe there's any impairment of the redevelopment plan. And again, this is a subdivision with respect to the general welfare, future site plans will follow this application. Thank you, Mr. Height. Uh, the only thing I would add is that we did receive the planning memo dated, also dated January 9th from planning staff. And if I didn't indicate it before, we will agree to uh, all of the six conditions listed in that memo. Okay, great. Thank you, Council. And uh, I have no questions for Mr. Height. Anybody else? No. No. Okay, thank you, Mr. Height. We appreciate it. And if we My could, pleasure. Mr. Galore, please stop that screen share. It should be at the top of your screen, sir. Yeah, right up top. Might need to move the cursor all the way to the top and it'll show up. Okay, we got it. And council, that's your presentation? That is our presentation. Uh, we appreciate your time this evening and I'll just reserve further comment if there are any comments from the public. Sure. Okay. Thank you. So uh, at this time, let's open it up for public comment. Anybody from the public, if you want to comment on this subdivision application, uh, please raise your hand. I see one up already. And uh, you, hand, you can press star nine. Deborah French has been promoted. Hi, Ms. French. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? Thank you. I'm, I'm doing well. Thanks. I'm just going to swear you in before you speak. All right. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Yes. My name is Deborah French, uh, D E B O R A H, French F R E N C H. I live two Skyline Drive in Jersey City. Thank you. Ms. French, good evening. Uh, good to see you. We have three minutes for you. Okay, my um, question only is uh, just to get clarification. This information you've just given us is just a, um, a, a graphics of what the street's going to look like, the naming and the diagram of what the streets are going to look like. There's no building going yet. No, this is strictly the subdivision tonight. Okay. All right, I just wanted to get clarification, that's it. Sure, okay, thank you. We appreciate yeah. your time. You're welcome. All right, I still see one hand raised. Anybody else, if you'd like to comment on this subdivision application tonight, please raise your hand. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Felicia will be rejoining as panelists momentarily. Hi, Felicia, I just wanna swear you before you speak, okay? If you could raise your right hand. Oh. Do you swear any testimony you get tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Uh, Felicia Collis, F-E-L-I-C-I-A-C-O-L-L-I-S, 189 Clerk, C-L-E-R-K Street. Ms. Collis, good evening. We have three minutes for you. Good evening, um, uh, Chairman and Commissioners. 
I just have a question. I'm a member of the Graco community organization who is acknowledged in the canal uh, crossing redevelopment as far as um, community empowerment. Um, my question is, um, are the developers of these subdivisions going, going to acknowledge that we do have some say as far as how they develop? So I, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, I can address that. Uh, so sure, I do understand uh, on behalf of the redeveloper that the redevelopment plan does require when there's a site plan uh, to have certain notice provisions and certain, um, I forget if it's meetings, but there are certain requirements that I do remember for, for Braco when it's a site plan. Uh, we haven't reached that stage yet. This subdivision is simply to carve the land up and, and reconfigure it to uh, meet the redevelopment plans sort of spatial requirements for the development lots. Um, but we do understand that as part of the redevelopment plan, we have certain requirements um, for community groups that we must meet when we are proposing the actual uh, development of the lots. That application is forthcoming, but has not been filed and is um, is not before the board and hasn't been filed with the board yet. Uh, it's still uh, something that's a little bit down the road once we figure out how to convey these properties to make them developable. Okay, thank you, Ms. Smith. I just appreciate you acknowledging that. Thank you. That's all. All right, thank you, Ms. Collins. We appreciate it. Okay, uh, I see one more hand raised. Anybody else, if you'd like to comment on this application tonight, please raise your hand. Or if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Working on promoting Joyce. Okay, Joyce is joining. Okay, thank you, Mr. Secretary. You're welcome, Chair. Hello? Hi, Joyce. Are you able to turn Hi. your video on? There we go. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. yourself? I'm well, thank you. I just want to swear you in before you speak, okay? If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God, yes. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Joyce Willis, J-O-Y-C-E-W-I-L-L-I-S, 191 Randolph Avenue. Thank you, Ms. Willis. Good evening. We have three minutes for you. Oh, okay. Um, again, uh, Jennifer, thank you for the, for the presentation. But... Um, What's what's going to happen now? Or uh, Graco is going to be approached by people of the community because they don't know about this that's happening. So, is it possible we can get a copy of this, uh, the new um, the new map that you talked about today? Sure, I believe a copy is on the website, but we can certainly, if that's not the case, make sure that one is. I don't know if Mr. Ward or Zahn or the chairman but I believe a copy is on the website. The only thing we did here was provide the color, but I know that we provided a notice uh, to you and, and to the last speaker as well. And um, I could certainly provide a copy of okay. this. Uh, if, if I can, maybe I'll coordinate with Mr. Ward to get your email address, but we can email you a copy of the, the colorized version. Okay. And also in this, in this public notice, I'm surprised more people aren't on the call. In the public notice, it leads you to believe that um, your um, the right of ways and and all the other um, applications, approval permits, or whatever that that's needed to to change um, the 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 area, you'll be able to do it without further notice. So does that mean the um, additional changes that you spoke of that will be happening, you will just be sending these public notices out to everybody in this community? If we were to file it, well, when at some point in the future, if the block that is shown is the blue block or the red block, um, mm -hmm. if it was proposed for further subdivision, there would be another application and we would provide another public notice. Um, the reference to no public notice, further public notice was made if this hearing tonight on this application had, be, had to be carried to another evening, there would not have been notice, but we've now um, been heard this evening. Okay. 
All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Wills. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else, if you'd like to comment on this application, please raise your hand. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hands. Sure. I see no more public. I move to close the public. Second. Okay. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, public is closed. Matt, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, there was reference made to the memos by transportation staff and city planning staff. Um, they put on the record that they're going to be, they would comply with the recommended conditions in the city planning staff memo. Um, they've testified to um, bringing the, their subdivision to better conformance with the redevelopment plan and the, and the referenced uh, TNM associates plans, which were prepared for JCMUA. Um, or the, the larger or the entirety of the canal crossing redevelopment area. Uh, staff is in support of, of those changes that they presented here tonight. Um, staff recommends approval of the subdivision. Um, and to, I think, uh, just get back to Mrs. Willis's comment. I think she was speaking more about the catch-all notice language um, that, that uh, rather than um, a future subdivision application. I don't know if you wanted to say something about that, Jennifer. Um, but uh, I, I think we spoke offline, Ms. Willis, um, prior to the uh, this hearing here tonight, and, and that is standard language in, in uh, notices that we have before this board. Um, with that, staff has no other comment. If you have any questions, I'm here. All right, thanks, Matt. And uh, we also are gonna add that condition to dedicate the extra seven foot uh, for the Carteret app right away. Yes. Um, but I have no questions for you, Matt. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion then. Sure, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22-177 as presented to the board here tonight with conditions. Second. Okay. Motion is made and seconded for approval. Okay. And a motion approved with conditions as stated here tonight. Uh, Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Torres? Aye. Commissioner Green? Commissioner Green? Aye. Ah. Commissioner Lipsky? Yeah, since uh, Mr. Haight used a Tetris uh, reference, I'd like to congratulate Ms. Smith and her team on getting the tetraminos to fall into place and dissipating all concerns and racking up some big points for a high scoring project. I vote aye. Uh, Commissioner Gangadon? Aye. Commissioner Dr. Desai? Uh, aye. And Chairman Langston? Uh, I'm gonna vote aye. I think uh, there's no detriment to the uh, redevelopment plan in the area. And um, yeah, I welcome the change. Uh, motion carries all in favor. A motion to approve. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Council. Have a good night. Uh, all right. Let's move on. To Chairman, um, if I can, and I don't mean to interrupt the meeting, I, I did. Uh, I don't know if I'll be on later tonight, but I did want to also share um, the the thought on on Ms. Bajaj. Um, I, I've yeah. also had the pleasure of working with her, and um, it uh, it's very recent and raw, but. Um, I do uh, think we we owe her a bit of gratitude and and her family because she did work um, in the best interest of this community. Uh, I really do believe that. So, wanted to share Absolutely. that. Agreed, one hundred percent. Thank you for that comment. And you're one hundred percent correct. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, have a good night, everyone. Thank you, Charles. Have a good night. Uh, all right, let's move on to item twenty. Is case P two two dash one five seven is a minor site plan with C variants for 324 Winton Street. Promoted Thomas Lane. Uh, good evening again, commissioners. Uh, for the record again, uh, Thomas Lane of Connell Foley. Uh, this application before you tonight, I just want to point out, it says that there is a variance required. Uh, however, this is an as of right application. 
Uh, this was carried from the, uh, the December 13th meeting with preservation of notice. I just want to make sure that jurisdiction is still proper before the board. I have the notice somewhere here, Council. Just bear with me. Sure. And while Council is uh, reviewing, can you just make sure my architect, uh, Alexander Hughes, is promoted? So, Chairman, I haven't received the affidavit of publication okay, proof and mailing with respect to the application before the board this evening. Council is correct. This matter was carried from a prior meeting with preservation of that notice. It does appear to be in order. We'll mark it as A1 for the record. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Uh, while we're waiting for Mr. Hughes to jump up, I'll just give a brief intro. Uh, this is a property located within the uh, Morris Canal uh, redevelopment area. Uh, it is an existing uh, three-story, one-family home that has uh, experienced some sig uh, significant uh, degradation. It's in pretty bad shape. Uh, we did uh, apply to demo the building. Uh, however, uh, Historic did find that there was some historic fabric to uh, particularly the front of the building and the existing porch. Uh, so in working with Historic, we were able to uh, come up with a uh, design that incorporates uh, the existing portion of the building uh, while adding a, a new addition to the rear of the building. Uh, it is a uh, one and two family home within the residential district and doesn't require any deviations or variances. And essentially, we're just bringing this building back to life um, and uh, bringing it back into rotation as a usable residential use. Uh, we did present to the uh, Morris Canal CDC, and we, uh, for the most part, received uh, fairly positive feedback on the design and utilizing the uh, existing structure. And with that said, if we were able to promote uh, Mr. Hughes, I would just ask that he uh, share his screen and quickly run through his presentation, as this is a fairly standard application. How's it going, sir? Good. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. I want to swear you before you speak, okay? Yes, absolutely. Do you swear any testimony you get tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, can you state and spell your name, please? Sure. It's Alexander uh, Hughes, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R-H-U-G-H-E-S. Thank you. Mr. Hughes, good evening. Uh, your license as an architect is current in the state of New Jersey tonight? It is, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. You're qualified then. Thank you. Uh, I will attempt to share my screen and please let me know if you can see it. Um, yeah, yes. As council was uh, mentioning, this is a dilapidated, uninhabited uh, half of a building. It was constructed as, as uh, two family, but also uh, four family in, in the sense that it's uh, separated as a lot division, but constructed as, as two separate entities. Um, what, we, what we did was to uh, restore the facade. We worked with um, uh, the historic uh, preservation to repair the facade. And uh, there's, there's no change to use. We are, we are just um, extending it to, to uh, the, the R1 equivalent of, of what would be allowed um, in terms of, of lot coverage. And um, I'm going to skip around to show you, I think, what's, what's the most important diagram um, of, of the project, which is really this uh, elevation and cross section. I want to show what we're doing basically is leaving uh, um, the original porch, which was deemed to have historical value of about four, four feet of, of porch, repairing the porch, repairing the railing in the front yard. Um, also repairing uh, about seven and a half feet of the historic facade. And internally, we're, we're not um, altering the structure in terms of floor heights because um, it, would, it would be detrimental to the, the structure on, on the other side of this party wall as well. But we are extending the back and we're doing so in a, in, a, in a contemporary way, but that won't be seen from the street. With the idea to make a, an environmental friendly building with a lot of daylighting and a lot of natural light, uh, it would still be two units. Um, we're just internally splitting 
than with double height spaces so that people have high ceilings and and um, and a lot of quality of light. And so the the uh, two two units basically have double height spaces, both towards towards the front where they're open to below and in the back where they're open to below. So this would allow people to uh, basically um, uh, have double height spaces towards the light where sure. we're most natural light. Um, other than that, we're we're complying with all the the requirements in terms of permeable pavers, uh, landscaping. There's a, a patio in the back that's that's uh, uh, within the um, the requirements for for setbacks. We're landscaping scaping along the perimeter, and uh, we're just trying to um, make this building a little bit more contemporary and up to date because right now it's it's it, you know it's in it's boarded up and it's in bad condition. Um, I think that's that's really the the, the gist of it. Um, I think we are trying to um, trying to repair what's there and re rehabilitate it as, as best we can. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hughes. Um, that is all we have this evening. I would just put on the record that I am in receipt of a memo. Uh, for Maggie O'Neill, the Historic Preservation Specialist, uh, dated today, January 10th, 2023, uh, which is her review of the proposed development and the condition it asks is that should anything change uh, after this approval that we would consult with Historic before constructing anything. Uh, obviously, we will accept that condition of approval. And that is our presentation. All right. Thank you, Council. Um, yeah, I have no questions. Anybody else for Mr. Hughes? No. No. Thank you, everybody. And if we could please stop that uh, screen share. All right, thank you. So at this time, let's open it up for public comment. If anybody's here from the public that wants to comment on this application, please raise your hand. I see one up already. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine. Promoted Belinda. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Belinda. I just Good want to swear you in before you speak, okay? If you could sure. raise your right hand. Yes. You swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank and you. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Okay. My name is Belinda Williams. That's B E L I N D A. Last name is Williams, W I L L I A M S. I live at 322 Whiten Street. Jersey City, New Jersey, 07304. Ms. Williams, good evening. Um, good evening. First off, have I been pronouncing that street wrong all these years? I would say yes, it's Whiten Street. Uh, duly noted, and uh, <laughs> I will correct myself. Thank you. Uh, we have no three minutes. No problem. <laughs> so the reason I'm um, here today, my house is right next door, as the gentleman showed on the um, diagram. And I'm just curious as far as what protection is my house going to have from the demolition or the um, restructuring of the 324 building? If there's, I think we share maybe a wall as well. So I just want to know, like, wh what kind of protection am I going to have with this renovation? May, may I answer as best as I can? Beth? Yes. You know what, please please Alex, please. Alex, before okay. you do, let me give a legal answer and then you can give your, your, more practical answer. But Great. from a legal perspective, there is a requirement that whenever you share a party wall and any demolition um, is, is going to be undertaken or is proposed, uh, we are required to commission a report by a structural engineer. And that structural engineer needs to provide in his report how we would shore up the wall next door. That's okay. a regulatory requirement. The report itself is required to be presented to the neighbor and the neighbor actually has to physically sign off on the proposal uh, for that demolition plan before the building department will issue demolition permits. So okay. just from a legal perspective, we are required not only to meet with you, present to you our plan for shoring up that wall, and then you would need to sign off on that actual procedure before we proceed. Okay, thank you very much. 
now, Alex, that that's the legal one. Just give give a, the more practical, which is actually what you would do <laughs> to protect the wall. Well, well furthermore, I've, I've been in the space several times. And, and the first thing I suggested was to carefully remove everything so we could see the structure first and, and furthermore. For, uh, for uh, but what we wanted to do is, is to make sure oh, that yeah. there were no changes to any of the structure that was going to go through the party wall onto the opposite side of the building. So the idea, the first thing we did was, was scan the interior so that we would have all the structural members and then mm -hmm. bring a structural engineer to design a reinforcement of, of the wall and to actually build a new wall in front on the other side of that wall to, to carry any new structure that would be added so as to not disturb what's, what's on your side. Now, okay. the, the contractor has to follow a lot of rules and laws to make sure that this is obviously done. And, and, and any case that it's not being done, you, you, you know, you, you, you have every right to call the building department and make sure that the job is stop, stopped so that they follow safety. But from a design perspective, both the structural engineer and I have, have made sure that the de design allows for the structure on the other side to be independent from yours, where it can be. And if not, it's not to be touched. And, and if anything, the idea is to make it so that the other side is more stable and, and so that there are going to be two families living there uh, sharing the other side of the party wall. We're also adding insulation and we're adding uh, soundproofing to make sure that, you know, that that sound transmits a lot less through through your wall in the future because that that adds value to the structure and it should be yes. done. OK, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for those remarks. Thank you. And that right. information. Thank you, Ms. Williams. We appreciate Thank it. You. Appreciate your time. OK, anybody else from public, if you'd like to comment, please raise your hand. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Mr. Chair, I see no more public. I move to close. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Cam, do you have anything you want to add? Yes. Um, so in addition to Mr. Lean's agreement to the historic preservationists memo, I would ask that uh, the uh, applicant agree to the conditions in the planning department staff memo dated November 29th in 2022. Those include four conditions, which will then be supplemented with the fish, fifth condition that the applicant agreed to the historic preservationist memo dated January 10th. Are those conditions acceptable, Mr. Lean? Yes, they are. And I believe I've already uh, provided you with a draft resolution outlining those, uh, those changes. So those are acceptable to, uh, uh, to the applicant. Super. Um, beyond that, Planning staff would only uh, reiterate that this does meet all of the plans, guidelines, and stipulations for the permitted uh, bulk and density for this specific site. And there are no variances, and it will be um, achieving objectives and goals of the Morris Canal Redevelopment Plan. Um, with that said, planning staff recommends uh, approval. All right. Thank you, Cam. Hey, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22-157 as presented to our board here tonight. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner, Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Aye. Commissioner Gungadin. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Uh, Commissioner Torres. Aye, not bad. Aye. No worries. And Chairman Langston. Uh, I'm gonna vote aye and I humbly uh We'll correct myself in the future on uh, White and Street. Thank you, Ms. Williams. We appreciate your time. Motion carries seven in favor. Um, that's it. Yeah. Okay. I learned something new. <laughs> but just right. remember one person's vase is another person's vase, and one person's potato is another person's patata. <laughs> <laughs> Leave tomato out of this. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's move on to item 21. It's case P22. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
P22-190 uh, is an administrative amendment for 11 to 29 Cottage Street. I think I'm right on that one now. <laughs> Cottage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Promoted, Mr. Pazillo. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Gerard Pazillo. I'm an attorney with Genova Burns. I'm here this evening on behalf of the applicant, uh, Cottage 29 owner, LLC. Uh, the application before you is for an administrative amendment to the preliminary and final major site plan that this board approved. Uh, this, this is an administrative amendment. Notice is not required. Um, I have one witness, uh, Frank Fasaro from Handel Architects. The uh, application, like I said, is for uh, administrative amendment for three minor changes. Um, the initial approval was for a 29, our 28 story, 293 foot mixed use structure containing 669 residential dwelling units, approximately 2,965 square feet of retail space and 44,551 square feet of office space. Property is uh, located in zone four of the Journal Square 2060 redevelopment area. Uh, the applicant, as part of the approval, took advantage of the office space bonus. So there's two floors of office that were part of the initial approval, as well as it's uh, located along the Homestead Place extension or the proposed Homestead Place extension. So they took advantage and, of that bonus and are dedicating a portion of that land towards the creation of the uh, of the pedestrian walkway. So the three changes that we're seeking approval for this evening is for reduction in the number of residential dwelling units from 669 to 622, a creation of a mechanical room in the third floor office space. So there's a slight reduction in the uh, approved office square footage just to accommodate the uh, new mechanical room. And also the installation of fresh air louvers uh, along that side of the facade where the uh, where the mechanical room is going to be located. Finally, the third uh, item that we're requesting uh, approval for is for the installation of what's a monorail maintenance system that will be located along the roof line, and that's just to better access uh, the building for for maintenance. Uh, as I said, Frank will run you through those changes. None of these uh, requested changes trigger any additional deviations. They don't worsen any of the approved deviations. Uh, and I'll turn it over to Frank, who can run you through the plans. Yes, and, and uh, uh, Council, if you don't mind admitting Shima Miyabadi. Oh, yes, I apologize. On the, thank you. Yes, Shima <laughs> Miyabadi uh, from Handel. Uh, Cameron, if you could please promote her, she will be running the slideshow. Can you repeat that name one more time? Sure. Uh, or, or, never mind. Never mind. Hand they raised, raised yeah. Okay. Thank you. And while Thank she's you, coming Frank. in, Frank, I'll swear you in. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony that you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, can you state and spell your name, please? Frank Fusaro, F R A N K F U S A R O. Thank you. Mr. Fusaro, uh, good evening. Your license is current tonight in New Jersey? It is current. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. Thank you. Thanks. As council mentioned, uh, we have a few small changes here to discuss with you. I'll use this page to summarize them. Uh, due to market conditions, our client has decided to reduce the number of studio apartments and add one bedroom apartments. This has result resulted in a Reduction in the total number of units from 669 to 622. Uh, as a result of that, the bike parking uh, racks have been reduced from 338 racks to 316 racks. Uh, there was a cooling tower uh, as part of the VE process. There was a cooling tower located on the roof. Uh, council mentioned that we've redesigned the mechanical system for the commercial portion, and we've allocated a mechanical space on the third floor office uh, using a VRF system. So we'll be eliminating the cooling towers on the main roof and using the uh, VRFs local uh, to the commercial use as the replacement, uh, which results in a reduction of the office square footage. And uh, I think the next four pages actually will be more helpful than this one. Uh, Shima, if you want to just flip through, this is the um, 
This is the third floor. Uh, you can see on the lower left there, the creation of the new mechanical space for the VRF units. That is approximately 960 square feet of a reduction of the office floor plate uh, with access from the service access from the, from the office floor. Go next. Our other change is highlighted, actually it was bubbled on my copy. It's unfortunately not bubbled on yours, but in the top left corner there, uh, smaller studios and one bedrooms have been combined into two bedroom units. Uh, so three units to two units on this floor. And then on the next floor up, uh, which is the fifth through 16th floors. Uh, similarly, that change has been made. Uh, along with the change on the uh, south side of the plan uh, where studios have been combined into one bedroom units and a larger alcove studio. That all happens internally uh, to the envelope that was approved prior. And then the next slide uh, will show you the elevation uh, along Homestead of that uh, mechanical space with the, uh, the new screening uh, to allow for uh, fresh air intake to those uh, to those units, and that's the the three bays or two and a half bays shown uh, on the upper right of this image, where the gray hatch is, and uh, directly above the cursor there. Great. The next image uh, is an image of the monorail system. This is a system to allow for. Uh, building maintenance, it will carry uh, the building maintenance unit. Uh, it's, it's a uh, steel structure, uh, post and rail structure that will allow the rig uh, to move around the facade uh, for window cleaning and facade maintenance. And ultimately, the rig will live in the southwest portion of the roof uh, and won't be, uh, won't be visible. The trellis, I mean, the, the, the rigging system, the rail and the columns, Will, will be visible and we're thinking of these kind of almost as a, a, a cornice or a trellis on the top of the building. Um, we don't think it impacts the, uh, the architecture negatively. And the next slide, uh, we're just gonna show this to you. It's really on this volume with the serrated edges. So, um, right, the, just make sure I'm in the right orientation. Uh, the east, the east side here, uh, and then again uh, on the south side of the building. And those are the those are the changes we have uh, to our to our prior application or to our prior approval. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, the only question I have the. Uh... The VRF units, um, so they're enclosed in the building with uh, ventilation? Correct, the from ventilation from the outside, yes. Air intake from the outside through a, through a screen. Okay, and that's, that's sufficient ventilation? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, that's my only question. Anybody else, anything? No. Okay, thank you, sir. We appreciate your time. My pleasure, thank you. Uh, Shima, if you could just stop sharing, unless, uh, thank you. Uh, Chairman, commissioners, that concludes our presentation. Happy to answer any questions if the public has any. Okay, thanks, Council. Uh, so at this point, let's open it up for public comment. Anybody from the public, if you want to comment on this application, please raise your hand. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Anybody? Sure, I don't see any public. I move to close the public. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Um, this is Tim. Tim, you have anything you want to add? Um, <clears throat> planning uh, approves of the... Uh, application as presented this evening. Um, just that, uh, Mr. Pazillo, the, Mr. Fasaro said that the, um, the bubble notes are not on the, the set that we have. 
So is I, it possible to just put that into mark that as evidence? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think the plans that Shima presented were the plans that I submitted. He was looking at another set, but oh, okay. if that is but that correct. My apologies, my, my set has some bubbles on them. <laughs> I'll, Tim, I'll, I'll get you the bubbled sets. I yeah, thought I had fine. bubbled sets and non-bubbled sets. I'll get you all the sets. Okay. Okay, could we mark those then? Sure. We'll mark it A1. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, all you know right. what, uh, Chairman, I will add uh, just to confirm all the conditions as part of the prior approval remain in effect. My client understands that and agrees. Okay. Thanks, Council. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22 190 as presented to the board tonight. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. Vice Chair Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Gonganen. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. Commissioner Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. All in favor, motion passes with previously approved conditions. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice night. Thank, thank you, you, Council. You too. All thank right, you. let's move on to case uh, P22-123. It's a preliminary and final major site plan with C variances for 335 Washington Street. Promoted Chuck Harrington. Hey, good evening, Chairman. <clears throat> Commissioners uh, Charles Harrington of Connell Foley on behalf of the applicant. Good evening, Council. It's good to see you at home. <laughs> yeah, I decided that I thought it was going to be a late night tonight. <laughs> <laughs> So um, if I could, I don't know if um, uh, Becker, uh, Rob, uh, Andrew Grover, and Mava Donnan, if you could promote those uh, people. The only one I don't see is, um, you said Grover? Yep, I'm here. Andrew Grover. Oh, there he is. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay. Yep, we're good. Okay. So um, just before I start, this is a notice case. So I ask that they be reviewed and marked into evidence. <laughs> I don't think Santo can hear us. You can, yeah, he can't, we can't hear you. Um, I hope this isn't another webcam incident, Santo. I think it is. Oh boy. He's out. Oh, you're on, Santo. We got you. <laughs> Mike, you got that, right? You know, I must have missed it. Oh, all right. Good man. Good man. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy.
There you go. We got gotcha. you. This is a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> I got a real situation over here. Uh, you got an Apple store out in the country, <clears throat> don't you? Uh, this <laughs> is, what is this? <laughs> How do I make all the tiles on this Apple product? I only look at the active speaker. Go, go down to the bottom where it says. Can you go down to the bottom? The upper right hand corner view. <gasps> are you, a, what kind of phone are you in or on? I'm on this stupid iPhone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Webinar settings. <laughs> Closed caption. Yeah, that's what I want. Not funny, Mr. Torres. <laughs> it's hilarious. You kidding I'm, me? I'm feeling good hilarious. right now. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got to get back into those ang anger management classes. Deep breath, deep breath. What's up? Maybe it should be bring your kids to work day on the 24th there, Santa. You guys could help me out, you guys and gals. Nobody <laughs> has an Apple product. How do you make them into tiles so you can see everybody? Nobody can answer that question. I still I, listen to, I still buy CDs. You don't know how for me. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm using, I'm using a computer. I don't know. Swipe left. Well, Sam. <laughs> It's gone now. That brings you to safe driving mode, Mike. <laughs> you know. Was it the other left? My other. <laughs> oh, it is. I only use Android products, by the way. Me too. Apple, Apple is not stupid. No. <laughs> I do Android only too. No. <laughs> Thank God for Apple. I'm sending them a nasty email tomorrow. I, I agree. I, I just, everything just works for me. I don't know. <laughs> ah, now my computer wants to work again. Let's see if my camera works. Recording in progress. You have two components on, that's why it's echoing. Any advice, Mr. Harrington? <laughs> You're talking to the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> the echo usually means you got like a phone and like an iPad or a phone and your computer next to each other. That's why it's echoing. And you've got to, three. You got to make a decision. All right. You got three accounts <laughs> open. <laughs> yeah. There you go. And they're right next to each other. So try speaking that one here. You can hear us, Santa? I can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. We can yeah. see you. I, I was kind of into the echo. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a dub flavor to it. I liked it. Stephen uh -huh. <laughs> Olman's chairman? I don't know. Santa, it sounded a little you, uh, David. It sounded a little David Cruz ish. <laughs> Can you give us a little uh, welcome to Jamrock? <laughs> Kill to hear that Jam right Rock. now. <laughs> Kill to hear that right now. What you know Jam, about that, Chris? I know, Jam, you know about, I that. about it. <laughs> Jam, I think we're ready to resume. Okay, right? Chris. <laughs> you ready to go, Chairman? I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask Council. You're good. Can you hear me? We can. I hear you. <laughs> And we can see you now. Let's rock. All right, let's do it. We're up to notice. I stated that I was in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing, and that all appeared to be in order. So we can mark it as A1. All right, thanks, Anto. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the application before you tonight involves a the property at the corner of Washington Street and Bay Street. Um, it's an existing building that's been there for some time. Uh, it's located within the Powerhouse Arts District Redevelopment Plan area in the rehabilitation zone. If you're familiar with the, which I'm sure you are, the, the Butler building that was uh, rehabbed and renovated into a uh, mixed use building over the years, over the last probably 10 years. Um, that is directly um, next door to the west. And then there's a building uh, directly to the south that has been existing. Um, it's a, probably a four-story office building. It was before this board, uh, probably within the last uh, month or two, uh, with regard to an outside um, uh, area uh, that they, they proposed. So this is kind of a little bit of an outlier. And, and it's unique in that um, it provides uh, for a bonus for another property within the powerhouse district. Um, that... That's re referenced in, in uh, Ms. Opper's uh, report to the board, um, and it's commonly known uh, as 107 Morgan. Uh, that's that large parking lot that is uh, one block away uh, to the uh, southwest. And, and what happens if, is uh, pr what provides what is provided for in a powerhouse redevelopment plan is that uh, in the event this property is donated at no cost to the city or to the Port Authority, uh, then the 107 uh, Morgan property receives a, a height bonus of 100 feet. Um, so that is what's being proposed here, but a little bit more than that. Um, uh, my client 
uh, owns both parcels. They're proposing to renovate um, the existing building uh, on this site uh, and deliver back to the city uh, a vanilla box. Um, and and uh, what you know, the ultimate use of that vanilla box will be up to the city. Um, but that then would trigger the bonus for the 107 Morgan Street. So this this is kind of the first part of of the uh, the process in order to get approval from this board to to make these improvements, and then ultimately uh, upon its completion, it would be transferred back to the the city, uh, and and there is my my client has been designated as as the redeveloper uh, of the property by the JCRA because uh, they have been working with the JCRA and the city, and the purpose of the redevelopment agreement, which is not yet finalized, but that's is to basically memorialize the agreement so both parties know, you know, the direction going forward. Um, I note for the record that uh, we presented this to the Historic Preservation Commission in early December, uh, and it was approved for a certificate of appropriateness uh, from the HPC, and I believe that's part of the record and part of the conditions of approval in the event uh, this is approved. So, uh, there are two variances we're requesting or deviations we're requesting in connection with this. Uh, one is the sidewalk width, uh, which um, you'll see during the presentation. We're, we're going to rehabilitate uh, and restore uh, the historic kind of loading docks there. They encroach within into the right of way. That is consistent with the intent in the, in the redevelopment area, so a redevelopment plan. Um, so, you know, whether... I'm not sure, you know, whether we need the the variance or not, but it uh, because you can count that as part of your sidewalk width. But you'll see during the presentation how that is incorporated into the whole restoration of the building. Um, it is an existing condition as as well that that we have to work with. And then the other one is the the uh, relief from the the, the um, green area ratio. Uh, again, that's a result of the existing condition and that we're already at 100% lock coverage. Uh, so you're you're, you know, the building's not going to move and we're actually um, restoring the loading areas. Uh, and you'll hear during the testimony, we can't put any green roof structure on the roof because of the existing loads uh, capacity. Uh, so those are two, you know, again, existing conditions that we're asking uh, for relief uh, from, from the board. So that being said, I have uh, two witnesses tonight. I have Andrew uh, Grover as our, our engineer. He's going to briefly take you through the site and, uh, explain the existing conditions. And then uh, architect is uh, Becca Robb, but um, the uh, architect of record is, is uh, Mava Donnan. So she'll just be brought up to, to uh, be sworn in as the New Jersey registered architect. And uh, with that, uh, I'd ask that uh, Andrew be uh, come up and uh, be permitted to uh, share his screen. Hi, Andrew, I'll swear you in before you go. Okay. You swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, can you state and spell your name, please? Uh, it's Andrew. Last name is Grover, G-R-O-V-E-R. -E Thank you. Okay. A Andrew, have you appeared before the planning board in the past? I was, uh, I was sworn in several years ago before COVID. I didn't have to testify, uh, but I was sworn in uh, for projects uh, several years ago. Okay. And uh, Mr. Grover, your license is still current? My license is current, yes, in the state of New Jersey. Okay. Thank you. You're qualified. And I, I don't remember a world before COVID at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going. It's always been a part. <laughs> okay. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, basically, uh, this is the, the civil site plan set that, that uh, was provided to the board. Uh, it's on the website. So uh, Chuck did a good job of presenting uh, a, a brief background, but uh, I'll just reiterate the project uh, again is located at 335 Washington Street on the southwest corner of Washington and Bay Street. Um, it's in the rehabilitation zone of the powerhouse art district redevelopment plan. I'm going to go to the uh, existing condition plan, which again is located in the set that was provided to you. Uh, the site contains existing structure, which has the former uh, boiler building. Uh, 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 for the Butler uh, Brothers Warehouse and the existing structure is in need of rehabilitation. Uh, and that's what this project is intends to do. The renovation of the existing building um, 
will be a part, again, as what Chuck mentioned, of a part of a bonus uh, provision, uh, which he described. The building will be used for a permitted non residential use and uh, it will be proposed uh, to be transferred to the city of uh, Jersey City. Uh, with the connection to this project, the applicant will request two C variances. Again, uh, Chuck may have mentioned. Uh, first is relief from the minimum sidewalk uh, width. Uh, you, you can see, um, well, the required minimum uh, sidewalk width is 16.5 feet. Uh, the existing building uh, currently contains former loading docks that currently reduce the existing sidewalk width for both uh, along, along both frontages. As you can see in, on Bay Street, uh, currently the existing uh, sidewalk width is 4.2 and uh, along Washington is uh, 8.3. Now with the, uh, the renovation to the existing uh, building, I'm going to show you that on the um, site plan layout sheet, which is on sheet five of our uh, civil site plan sheet. We're not only proposing the renovation of the building, but we're also uh, including the renovation to the former loading docks, ramps adjacent to the uh, structure um, that are in the right of way. And this is really ultimately to help provide ADA accessibility to the building, building's first floor. Uh, so under proposed conditions, uh, the, the minimum sidewalk width along Bay Street is 6.9 feet. Uh, if we do not include this uh, uh, elevated platform area and along Washington, it's uh, basically 12.2 feet. Um, while we're not technically uh, preserving the existing uh, loading dock areas, again, this reconstruction for the elevated areas are necessary in order to provide uh, ADA accessibility to the building. Um, therefore, we feel the benefits of the reconstruction outweigh the, the detriments to this uh, variance. The next variance that we're talking about is the green area ratio requirements. Uh, again, uh, we're requesting this because the existing building has 100% lock coverage and the future uh, access uh, locations for the stairs and ramps will extend into the uh, right away. Therefore, this will not allow us to create any pervious areas. And it's also noted that the, uh, the roof and the structure itself will have limits to load capacity. Uh, so the applicant is really restricted to proposed uh, uh, building roof items such as green roofs that, that require uh, larger load capacities. Um, while the project proposes what, what can be achieved to the greatest extent possible, it's our uh, belief that the overall uh, redevelopment of the building outweighs any detriment. Uh, that concludes my portion of the, uh, of the project. Any, any questions for Mr. Grover? Thank you, Mr. Grover. Um, yeah, I have no questions at this point. Anybody else? No. Uh Okay, thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Okay, then if we could bring up Mr. Rob and, and Ms. Donnan uh, to uh, uh, swear in both and then qualify them. All right, yes, I will swear in uh, both of you right now. I'm just looking. All right, there's Becker and there's Mava. Uh, if you guys could both raise your right hands. Do you swear that any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And then uh, Ms. Donnan and Mr. Rob, if you could state and spell your names for us, please. Um, Mayva Donnan, M-A-Y-V-A Donnan, D-O-N-N-O-N. -N -N. Becker yeah. Rob, B-E-C-K-E-R-R-A-A-B. -E -R -R Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll just start with Mrs. Don Ms. Donnan. So Ms. Donnan, if uh, you could just give the board uh, the benefit of your professional educational uh, experience as you are the registered New Jersey architect? Sure. Uh, Maeva Donnan, I am a partner with KSS Architects. Um, I have been with KSS Architects for 16 years and um, been practicing as a licensed architect um, in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, as well as some other states. Um, and I have been working with Becker closely for 
I think it's been 10 years now. So um, uh, he is the project architect on the project and will, can provide a, uh, more details about the, the specifics of this project. All right, thank you, Ms. Don. And, and your license mm -hmm. is covered tonight in New Jersey? Yes. Okay, thank you, we're qualified. Okay, thank you. And then, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you'd like to hear the, uh, the qualifications of Mr. Rob, or if you'd like him to just proceed as the project architect. That's fine, we can just proceed as the project architect. Okay, thank you. And then uh, Becker, I believe uh, we have uh, uh, slides that we wanna mark as A2 as part of your presentation. Yes, and I will share my screen now and uh, describe a little bit more about the project. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Please uh, let me know if you see my screen. We can, yes. Great. And, and this this slide deck would be uh, A2, uh, Pecker, if you could identify it for the record. Yeah, we can mark this as Exhibit A2. Um, this slide deck consists of images and drawings that are taken directly from the drawing set that was submitted uh, to the board. And they're just reformatted for the purposes of this presentation. Uh, okay, Council, obviously, uh, let's get that, um, the whole presentation uh, sent over to city planning as part of the record. We will. Thank you. Okay, so as noted, the application is for a rehabilitation of the existing boiler building for the Butler Brothers Warehouse. It was built in 1905 and designed by architect Jarvis Hunt. This one and a half story addition to the Butler Brothers Warehouse housed the boilers, fire pumps, and other mechanical and maintenance equipment for the warehouse. It has stood derelict for many years, fallen into a state of disrepair. The scope of this project is to rehabilitate and restore the building envelope, including roof and window replacement, brick facade restoration, stabilization of the chimney and smokestack, creating new entrance and egress doors with exterior ADA access ramps and access stairs, and gutting the interior and constructing a new floor to provide a, a shell space to be turned over to the city. Uh, so you guys know where the, the building is, as has been noted by Mr. Harrington and uh, Mr. Grover. So just at, at the corner of Washington and Bay, adjacent to the Butler Brothers Warehouse and across the street from the powerhouse. Just to show uh, a few existing condition photos of the building, uh, you can see this is in, in a state of disrepair. Um, on the left side along Washington, this is one of the kind of older loading dock platforms um, that we're that we're kind of reconstructing. And then on the right hand side, you can see remnants of a previous uh, loading dock platform that has been since been removed and replaced with a, a metal access stair. Uh, so just some some more existing photos of, of the east facade along Washington, uh, you know, a series of uh, clear story windows, uh, which, as I noted, we're, we're replacing uh, each facade, has two um, roll-up uh, dock doors, which we're opening up to be uh, the new access doors and windows at the floor level. You can also see here, and I'll, I'll show in a building section in a moment, um, that the floor level is about four to five feet above the sidewalk level. And so that's really what's driving uh, you know, the, the reconstruction of those, those historic loading dock platforms to provide um, access to the building. This is a proposed building section uh, and I'm showing this to illustrate um, that approximately one, one third of the building is constructed as a slab on grade at that elevated floor level uh, which I noted as being four to five feet above the sidewalk. And then the Southern portion, which is the Southern two thirds of the building, I'll, I'll show this in floor plan as well, uh, is, a, is a kind of a recessed basement that's about uh, eight feet below the, the floor level. So as part of this project to make this a functional space for the city to fit out, we are constructing a new floor slab at that existing uh, upper ele level one elevation to bring the entire building to a consistent uh, floor height. So on the left, uh, we have an existing floor plan of the cellar, that basement level, and on the right, a proposed floor plan 
really the scope for the interior is to remove all non-load bearing walls, uh, remove all of the uh, equipment and piping, uh, et, et cetera, to really leave a, a clean space. So the plan on the right is really showing just an empty cellar. Um, we have a small access stair to this, but it's it's not intended for use. Uh, the access stairs is kind of a ship's ladder just purely for, for access to that space. The, the first floor plan, again, on the left, uh, we're removing a lot of the, you know, all of the non-load bearing uh, partitions and there's some platforms and equipment. Um, and you can see here, uh, the, what, what we end up with is just a, a large open space. We are leaving uh, the existing masonry wall, which is shown at grid line C here. That's the demarcation between the Northern portion of the building, uh, which is that, which is, has the existing higher floor level from the Southern portion of the building, which is that uh, existing basement level. So we're bringing all of that to the same floor elevation. We are constructing a few smaller rooms uh, in the corner here to be used as um, mechanical electrical space. And then here you can also see a little bit of the access ramp and platform configuration. So the, we, what we imagine as the main entrance is along Washington closer to the corner. And there's a, an access ramp coming from the south up to up to the platform and then a stair coming back to to the corner and then on on bay street we have um, a, a slightly smaller platform with an access stair which we envision to be mostly uh, an, an egress an egress door and egress stair just uh showing an existing elevation drawing um for comparison to the proposed elevation so this is the the bay street elevation um, uh, you can kind of see, see the existing roll-up doors, the clear story windows, um, and then the proposed elevation. You can see we we have this plat new access platform and the entry door, um, and a larger opening that is the other roll-up door uh, taking that spot. We are reconstructing uh, an ex what was an existing um, canopy along this elevation, which is no longer there. Um, so we, we, we don't see remnants of that canopy on the Washington Street elevation, uh, only, only this Bay Street. So we are reconstructing on, on the Bay Street elevation. You can also see here we uh, have a proposed kind of reinforcement to the, the smokestack. Um, and we are, there's a skylight structure on the roof, which we are reglazing. Uh, and again, just the existing elevation for Washington Street. Uh, again, showing two, uh, the, the two ac loading doors, um, a series of kind of irregularly shaped clear story windows, and then the proposed elevation um, showing the access platform, the main, the main entry door here on the right hand side, uh, replacing the, the clear story windows. And then you can see the profile of that canopy along Bay Street here on the right-hand side. And I'll just breeze through some of these pages. These are a little bit more detail about some of the rehabilitation that we reviewed with the Historic Preservation Department. Um, so we're replacing all of the windows, which are in a, in a state of severe disrepair. Uh, the existing steel windows are, are being replaced with a, a thermally broken um, historic replica window, which matches the sight lines. Um, we're replacing the sill, the sill elements in kind um, with, uh, with terracotta uh, sills to match the existing profiles. Um, along, along Bay Street, the existing windows have a metal sill, which again, we're replacing in kind. Uh, we've, we've come up with some brick selections to match two different tones of existing brick. So here we had the benefit of the adjacent uh, rehabilitation of the Butler Brothers warehouse where they did clean that brick. So we were able to, to get um, an example of the cleaned brick once we once we clean the brick on this building and we we're able to, to get some brick samples to match. Uh, we are replacing copings. Uh, the existing terracotta coping stones are being replaced as part of the roof replacement. So there's several areas where these are either damaged or missing. And so again, they'll be replaced in kind. And then uh, 
we have the, uh, re as I mentioned, the reinforcement of the metal chimney, the smokestack here. Um, so the existing smokestack is, is reinforced with uh, guy wires, two that go to the existing roof and two that go down to the sidewalk. They're, they're sagging. Um, the guy wires are attached to some existing metal poles in the, in the sidewalk here. And so we're we're proposing to remove the guy wires and reinforce the smokestack uh, with um, some steel steel uh, reinforcing rods here. Uh, and then we have the the canopy. Um, so as I mentioned, we're kind of matching um, the existing canopy location uh, that's that's no longer there. Um, as far as the detailing for the canopy, we're we're trying to match. Uh, what what was what was recreated along Morgan Street for the Madeira Lofts, which is that Butler B Butler Brothers warehouse rehabilitation, and then just some details of uh, the the loading um, access platforms here along along both facades. Um, we have a concrete the concrete sidewalk surface extends up to the platform and. We have a, a brick facing on the on the wall there with a with a steel railing. So again, just showing the the rendering here to conclude. Um, that is uh, the end of what I have to share with you. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. All right, thank you. Sorry, appreciate it. Um, I have no questions. Anybody else? No. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, that would uh, complete our presentation. I just note again for the record, we've been working with Maggie O'Neill and Liz Opper uh, throughout this process, and we do have a certificate of appropriateness from the HPC that demonstrates Great. that uh, it's compliant with their standards. Okay, thank you, Council. Uh, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. I see one hand raised already. Uh, anybody else, if you'd like to comment, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Promoting Matt Wagner. Hi, Matt. I'll just swear you in if you can raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, can you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Sure, it's Matthew Wagner, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-W-A-G-N-E-R, 311 Washington. Thank you. Mr. Wagner, good evening. We have three minutes for you. Great, thanks. Uh, my question is more around the, um, obviously, the, I, I'm interested in the bonus aspect of this, the provision of 11612, lot one, um, as the neighbor in lot two of that. I'm trying to understand why we would, why we would approve something related to this project that has a direct tie to, to something that I don't think we have any awareness of yet. So that's that's maybe a procedural question more than a comment, but is there a way to address that? Well, that, that's part of the redevelopment plan that's that's been in place for, for years that uh, I think that- the, no, when they I understand that, that aspect. Okay. I'm just asking why the two pieces don't go together versus we're doing a piecemeal now when we don't have the plan of lot one at this time? Well, this this needs to happen first. This, uh, in order to even, you know, to, to have that be considered as part of the other the other um, application. Uh, that's that's what the city wants to see. The city wants to see, you know, basically do it, show it, show it, you know, get a get a site plan, get it completed, and then and then you can get your bonus. Yeah, I guess I get. I guess I would have some concerns as the neighbor because we have not heard anything from the, the development plan for that site. I, I recognize that that may not be something that has to be done, but um, I do have some concerns of of kind of granting one before the other. Um, additionally, like this, this seems like a pretty small give to get a hundred foot increase in in height um, compared to some of the other uh, what I think are developments downtown and what they've. Um, provided as as kind of a, a bonus. So that's the end of my comments. I do have several concerns. I think the other piece is too the, the notice we just got last week. And so I did not have a chance to get with our attorney as the condominium association. But I came 
just as as a as the I'm on the board, but we um, I did not have a chance to notify the other 68 residents that are inside of that inside of that that uh, building, given that we received it so late. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wagner. Promoting Tanjan. Hi, Bergis. I'll just swear you in. Thank you. Uh, do you swear any testimony you give tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And can you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Yeah, Bergis Tanjan, uh, spelled in my, as my name, B-E-R-G-H-E-S-E, -E, last name T-H-A-N-J-A-N. Live at 70 Morris Street, Unit 1, Jersey City, New Jersey, 07302. Uh, yeah. This building is very familiar with me since I drive by it quite a bit, and I have walked the sidewalks. Uh, do have a procedural concern of the prior gentleman is in terms of notification that uh, he's got a one week notification uh, considering there's holidays happening. Is that a proper uh, situation? If someone can answer that to me, uh, would like that the uh, commission take that in account that he has 68 residents that needs to be informed and if they can postpone any voting decision until more people can make a decision. Uh, specifically, my question, which I want answered, is uh, the sidewalk on Washington and the sidewalk on Bay Street, the current sidewalk, how much space is being taken away from the current sidewalk? I just need a little bit need to know some more details to that. Uh, seems like there's some sidewalk spaces being taken away. I want to know if that's true and how much on either street and what's the reason for it because the idea of trying to retain the character of this being in a loading dock building, uh, you really can't tell that it's a loading dock building from the current architectural rendering of what the future ask is. And since that's the case, I think uh, some architecture work was done stating that it's gonna look like a warehouse. It really doesn't too much affect. I understand there's some, a lot of historic implications, but wanna know the sidewalk give how much sidewalk is being taken. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other questions while we got you? Uh, no, that's uh, about it. Uh, this is very strange because it's a, not an interactive dialogue because based on the answer, I don't know if I have ability to uh, ask further questions uh, unless I could use the rest of my three minutes. Um, I have a minute six left for you. So. Let's get okay. those questions answered. And if, if anything else comes up, uh, I'll reserve that time. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I, you know, Mr. Chairman, I can uh, have Mr. Uh, Grover uh, address the sidewalk with, but in very quick, briefly, you know, with regard to the notice, the notices were, were provided, com you know, consistent with uh, the requirements of the MLUL. And that, that was confirmed before the application started. Okay. Uh, looking at the uh, the uh, site layout uh, sheet that was provided to uh, everyone, uh, if I zoom in on Bay Street, uh, what you can see is we provided dimensions, uh, the proposed uh, elevated area, which is access to the, uh, the building, uh, extends six feet. Uh, so you're still provided almost nine feet of, of uh, sidewalk along there, along majority. The only portion is is right here. There's kind of a pinch point, which is uh, kind of the location where the, uh, where the uh, intersection occurs. Um, along uh, Washington, uh, you can almost see uh, in the existing conditions, this is along Washington, there's, a, there's an existing, um, almost like a, a small retaining wall uh, so we're actually giving back uh, a larger width uh, of a uh, sidewalk because uh, from the building, the furthest point for the elevated area is about about 10 feet, 9.9 .9 feet, whereas the, uh, the actual sidewalk area will be 12.3 or 12.2. Uh, I think I mentioned if I go back to existing conditions, in this case, uh, like I mentioned, there's an existing uh, 
retaining wall and right now in existing conditions is only 8.3. So you're gaining about four feet. Good. Okay, anything, anything else? Sir? Uh, if I could respond, thank you for giving us more sidewalk. I appreciated that little detail I wasn't seeing, be able to see, but thank you very much for that. We appreciate that. Okay, thank you, sir. We appreciate your comments. Okay, once again, uh, we're in public comment. If anybody else wants to comment, please raise your hand. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hands. Mr. Chair, I see no more public. I move uh, to close. We have uh, one coming up. We have Catherine Moore yeah, coming yeah. up. Catherine. Sorry. Hi. Hi, Catherine. I'll swear you in. Sure. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And for the record, can you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Catherine Moore, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N-M-O-O-R-E. Uh, I live at 140 Bay Street. Thank you. In the powerhouse. Moore, good evening. Uh, happy New Year. And you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, as far as like getting notice, uh, being part of the Neighborhood Association, uh, we didn't really have any communication um, directly um, sent to us, letting us know that it was going to the historic district in December. I mean, I'd, uh, uh, to historic on in December. And then this presentation now, I just sort of kind of come, came upon it um, when I just kind of casually looked at what was coming up on planning. Um, it would have just been nice if somebody had, you know, kind of give us a little bit of a heads up. Um, I, I've, I've been aware of the project, but I had to seek out information. It wasn't something that was given to us or, or, or um, known that this was ha this was occurring. Um, but uh, I guess my one little question is, as far as lighting, I, I see that there is some lighting that's gonna be added um, all, along the street, but you know, do we have like more information about the lighting that's gonna be on the exterior? Because that is kind of a dark, it's always been kind of a dark corner and there's no lighting across the street um, because there's no building there. So I was just sort of curious about um, exterior lighting. And then I know that uh, I see in, in the, the gentleman's presentation that there is um, a uh, skylight of some sort. Is there gonna be any more skylights because the windows are somewhat limited and was curious, you know, it, it wouldn't necessarily be something that, you know, is load bearing, but you know, how, what's the plan to try to get some more light into the building because all the windows are so small and um, high. Um, and then uh, just as far as it being something that's gonna be given back to the city, um, some interior renderings um, before and after would have been kind of nice to be part of the presentation so you can kind of see what, what, what it is before and then kind of what, you know, saying, okay, well, it's all going to be one floor, but it would be kind of nice, you know, to, to see what some of that, um, some of those architectural details are um, and, uh, um, and be able to share that with the neighborhood because we are really quite interested in keeping, you know, this in a historic um, state. Um, and I, I think the plan looks great. Um, I would definitely like to make sure that, you know, the neighborhood is made aware when 107 Morgan is coming back and where the towers are going to be and what's going to be, what's the tall part and is it going to completely, you know, overshadow uh, the Modera lofts and or 311 uh, Washington. Um, so the neighborhood is quite, not going to say concerned, but th there's different ways of building a building and we're just sort of curious, you know, with that extra height, how they're going to um, utilize that. Um, and, and um, I think that's, I think that's it. Um, I think everything's going to look good. Um, um, I'm really happy to hear about it. I just wish we kind of, you know, maybe been able to present this to the neighborhood association so you could have more people on board and not have these last minute calls, um, from the people from 311 Washington. Um, but that's it. All right, thank you, Mr. So any, any answers about the, the lighting, sure. um, exterior lighting and skylights, that would be great. Sure. Uh, Council, do you Happy want to New address Thank you. you too. Yeah, thank I mean, you. I'll, I'll bring up uh, uh, Mr. Rob to address the, the lighting. Um, just a few comments. I mean, as far as notice, you know, Ms. Moore, I do work with her over the years. And really on, on this one, you know, we were, you know, in retrospect, yeah, you know, we could, could or should have, you know, reached out, but it was, we were working with the city. We, it was a straight restoration. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 
um, that's that's why you know we were just working with what they needed. But we've only been here for about 18 years, so it would have been nice. I've been reporting about a leak on that building for years, and I'm really glad to think that that's going to actually finally be prepared, um, repaired. Good. So good. Yep. So um, then I'm going to bring up Becker, and he can he can speak to the lighting. Uh, and as far as the interior, we are just delivering a a vanilla box. So that's that's up to the city as to how they fit that out. So Becker, do you want to? Talk to the lighting. Yeah, and and Catherine, thanks for your comments. Uh, I, I can start also with the skylight. So the skylight is an existing condition. Um, the the current skylight that's there is completely roofed over. So you know, right now that's not admitting any light into the interior. So as part of the re-roofing of the building, we're we're restoring the glazing to the northern part of that skylight which is going to let you know really good light into the space that's kind of that's where the existing um glazing was on that skylight uh which we observed in some of our surveys of of the space um so we're we're restoring that condition and you know we think that'll be that'll add a lot to the interior whenever the interior does get fit out um, regarding the, the lighting, um, we do have building mounted lighting along both facades. Um, those are primarily to um, help with egress lighting for people traveling along those platforms, the ramps and the stairs. Um, and then I believe we are also introducing some street lighting, uh, which Andrew uh, from Insight could share the, the site plan. Which shows the which will show the locations of those street lights. Yeah, so as, I don't know, Becker, if you want to handle it, but I can I could just go through real quick. We have we're providing one several several lights, one, two, three, four, five, six. Very uh you can see the foot candles is gonna be very well lit uh, at the intersection, um along with uh necessary uh uh, lighting at the entrances. I don't know if that hopefully that addresses your questions or yeah it, it was more just you know uh the uh the lighting coming from the ceiling um you know in the part that's like eight feet deep that section you know I don't know if that had any natural light that kind of came into it other than what is uh on the exterior walls um but uh you know, not knowing really, you know, what the space looks like in the interior and the existing wall that you're going to keep. Um, it's just kind of hard to imagine, you know, what kind of, what the lighting will look like. But again, it's, it, it's just superficial stuff. Um, but thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Uh, anybody else, if you're here from the public and you want to comment on this application, please raise your hand. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hands. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to close the public. Second. Okay, motion <clears throat> made and seconded. Public is closed. Uh, Liz, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, yes. Um, Mr. Harrington, can you just confirm a receipt of my staff report and um, agreement with the conditions therein? Yes, that's, that's confirmed and the, the recommended con conditions would be acceptable. Okay, and then um, I'll just share my screen and pull that up quick. Um, you and I also had some correspondence via email regarding um, further condition um, that's not in my memo, but I wanted to just make sure that everybody uh, or that we got it on the record. Um, so, um, conditions, some typical conditions, but there's this site is unique in that it need, would need a franchise ordinance for those um, for the vertical circulation. That's a public right of way. Um, you mentioned um, going to the um, HPC meeting and getting a certificate of appropriateness. So we ask that you comply with that. And then finally, the additional um, condition that is not in this report is um, just to solidify the the. Um, dedication of this the transfer of this uh, property to the city. So that condition would be, the property shall be transferred to the city of Jersey City upon the completion of the project consistent with the terms and conditions of a redevelopment agreement to be entered uh, into between the applicant and the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency. Yeah, that, that would be acceptable as well. 
Okay, great. Uh, yeah, um, with those conditions, staff recommends approval. Okay, thanks, Liz. We appreciate it. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22 123 as presented to the board here tonight. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for approval. Um, Vice Chair Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Gangadin. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, in hearing from the public, it would be more comforting to vote in the affirmative if uh, we had them come in and say that they were apprised of the project before hearing or in communication, because obviously uh, when they heard about it, they were liking what they heard. So uh, word to the wise should be sufficient. I vote aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. Okay, motion carries all in favor with conditions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Mike, do you want to grab five minutes real quick? Yes, thank you. Okay, so it's uh, 927. We'll be back at 932, everybody. Thank you.
All right, could we come to order again, please, everybody? And let's call item 24 is case P22-141. It's a preliminary and final major site plan with C variances for 10 to 14 South Street, right here in the beautiful JC Heights. Okay, uh, for the record, Charles Harrington of Conopoli on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is a notice case that I ask that those be reviewed and marked into evidence. Reluctant to click on this council. I think that's what threw me off last time. Okay. Uh, Chairman, I have received an affidavit of publication, proof of mailing with respect to the application 243 Brunswick LLC, 10 14 South Street here in the city. This was noticed for a previous hearing and carried with the preservation of notice to tonight's meeting, all does appear to be in order. The market is A1 for the record. All right, thank you, Council. Thank you. So um, the application before you tonight um, is, is for um, property at 1014 South Street. Uh, as the, um, the board may recall, or some of the commissioners may recall there, there was a different application before this board uh, back in last March and April uh, of, of this past year in 2022. That was for a five-story building with uh, 10 residential units and commercial on the ground floor. That was denied uh, by this board. Um, the application for you to, before you tonight is different. Uh, I'd say substantially different in that it is uh, now reduced to a four-story building uh, it has reduced the unit count to nine residential units. It still is proposing uh, ground floor commercial space, and it is proposing nine parking spaces, so it would have a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. Uh, we believe that um, the, the project uh, being presented to you tonight is consistent with some of the comments uh, and concerns that we heard uh, during the last application that was denied and that's the reason you're seeing a, a lower building and with with lower units um i know for the record that uh the, the application before you um is be, being presented under the former zoning uh the zoning uh code was changed i believe in october september october recently but uh, the bottom line is this this application was submitted and complete before um before the zoning change. So we are working off of those, uh, off of that criteria uh, as part of this application. Um, and I, I say that uh, because you will see during the presentation too, under, you know, we submit under the current zoning, um, you, you'd end up with a, with a project uh, as of right that's, that's, that's not preferable at all. Um, but um, that being said, we, we, have, we are requesting um, two variances, uh, one with regard to the rear yard, uh, and one with regard to the maximum building coverage, which only applies at the ground floor level, 98% uh, versus 95%. Actually, and a, and a third one, the interior of the garage, there's, there's a, there is a, a pinch point um, uh, at the drive aisle um, width. Uh, that would be another, another variance that's part of the, uh, the application. Um, but you will see uh, during the presentation that that uh, you know uh, a lot of changes have been made to provide for for more uh, light and air. At least we believe so. Um, that were concerns at the last uh, uh, application presented to this board, and you know the obvious that it, that has been reduced from five five stories to to uh, four stories. Um, so I have uh, three witnesses uh, tonight. Uh, the same the same professionals that were here back in April. Um, and my first one will be uh, Jake Modesto uh, is a civil engineer to uh, uh, get the, the board familiar with the site. Then uh, Anthony Vandermark is our architect and then Ed Colling will uh, address the requested variances. So with that said, if I could promote or if uh, Jake can be promoted if he's not already. Thank you, Council. And um... 
We do have uh, Ms. Nahajiana on. I think she's uh, going to be opposition counsel tonight. Am I correct? I believe so. Yeah. I. I uh, good evening, Chairman Langston and Commissioners. I, I. I wouldn't say opposition, but I am here um, observing and may have a few questions for my client, um, which is a condominium association at 560 Palisade F. Okay, Council. Do you want to put your uh, appearance on record then? Sure. Um, Cynthia Hagianis, H A D J I Y A N N I S, appearing on behalf of 560 Palisade Ave Condo Association. Okay, thank you. And uh, obviously, we'll allow you cross examination of any witnesses that come up and, uh, you know, an opening statement, a closing statement, and uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out as we go. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council. All right, Mr. Chuck, is go ahead. Uh, Jake's part of your team? Yeah, it's Jake. It's yeah, he's Jake. Up. Okay. All right, I'll swear you in, Jake. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? No. Yeah, we don't hear you. Jake, are you muted? No, he's working on it. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there, there we go. go. All right, well, gotcha. I, I was about to send Santo over to help I you do. out. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, if you could just state and spell your name, please. I'm starting yeah, to think it's our Zoom account with the board, Chairman. <laughs> it's uh, Jake Modesto, last name M-O-D-E-S-T-O-W. I'm with Stonefield Engineering and Design. Address is 92 Park Ave, Rutherford, New Jersey. Thank you. Thank All right, Mr. Modesto, good evening. Uh, we've qualified you in the past. Your license is current tonight? It is, yes. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to just begin by sharing my screen. Everyone should be looking at the plan submitted by my office, dated 718. It was part of the submitted package. Yes, we um, have it. Beautiful. So this you see C1. And we're just looking at the property located on block 2402. This is lot one. Uh, the property itself is, we'll call it an L-shaped configuration. Uh, we have parcels, uh, portions of the parcel uh, along Palisades Ave, which is a two-way uh, roadway with parking on both sides, Palisades Ave. Um, and the total lot size is just over 5,000 square feet, so it's 5,990 square feet, um, just under 30 feet along Palisades and exactly 100 feet along South Street. South Street is a one-way um, street heading, we'll call it, um, he would be plan, e, uh, plan East, uh, heading across the page. Going into the existing site, the existing site is essentially 100% impervious coverage. It's comprised uh, of several different, uh, several buildings and then a concrete driveway. I would note that the concrete driveway on the property is 30 feet or 30 plus feet of an opening along South Street. Um, it's part of the application, the four story, nine unit uh, building. We're going to be covering 98%. So I'm just gonna go to now what is sheet C2, prepared by my office. Uh, showing the configuration with a slight um, location of the plans um, with Palisades Ave, again, being on the left side of the plan. We had the retail space located, we'll call it at the hard corner, uh, both the streets. Uh, we're covering 98% um, of the site as part of a stormwater um, standards. We are proposing, we'll call it two different methods. It's going to be uh, 1,900 square feet of green roof. Uh, on top of the building, and then that's going to be coupled by a 3,500-gallon uh, concrete tank below uh, surface to uh, reduce the amount of flow coming from the site from a stormwater standpoint for two, 10, and 100-year storm, uh, storm events. Um, as I mentioned before, we had that 30, uh, 30 to 32-foot drive uh, going across uh, the frontage along South Street that has been consolidated to one single drive that'll be uh, at the, the curve lengths, 14 feet, uh, where it houses the nine parking spaces associated uh, with the building. Um, 
So from a stormwater standpoint, you know, there is no uh, improvements on the site today. So we're gonna have a drastic improvement um, to what is going to the public system uh, today um, from an overall standpoint. So that, that's really the, the application. All of our utilities um, will be connecting into South Street. I don't know if you want me to get into anything else associated with the site plan. All right. Thank you, Mr. Modesto. Um, Council, it's your witness. I don't know if you want to go into further detail. No, we're, I'm, I'm good with that unless the board, any board members have any questions. Um, the only comment I have and it's unrelated to the application is uh, it, Palisade is single. It's not Palisades. And it's, if you live in the Heights, it's like nails on a chalkboard here in Palisades. I, I am so sorry. I, drive, <laughs> I think I had access to everything. No worries. <laughs> I, I see your prints correct, so we're we're good. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, anybody else? Any questions? Um, I I did have one question. Um, that's Miss Hagianis. That's for the board yeah. right now. I'm sorry. Oh. Anybody else from the board? And I'll, I'll get to you. Don't worry. No. Okay. Seeing none, Miss Hagianis. I apologize for cutting you off, but um. Oh, no, no, I, I apologize for jumping in. No worries. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Mr. Modesto, you had talked about the stormwater management, and yep. um, I'm just wondering, and I, I had been reading the stormwater control ordinance, which was newly adopted in 2021, and um, it, it talks about a a review agent from the city of Jersey City issue, issuing written findings based upon a technical review. Um, did did you receive any? Was it was there any technical review? There was. My office in receipt from a uh, the JCMUA provided a memo dated 12-9-2022. Uh, my office in receipt and all the technical findings within that we will comply with. Okay, was that made part of the application file, that memo? Well, that, that is submitted to uh, the planning department. That is part of the review uh, process, the review agent process. They submit it to, the, uh, to all, all the people in the city. Right, but I don't. I don't know that it was made part of the application file that's publicly available. So I was just um, w yeah, wondering I, if it if it. Yeah, could I'll be. answer that question, uh, Mr. Harrington. Um, I don't believe it is a JCMUA memo is published to the portal. I don't recall receiving it, um, which is not atypical with it, JCMUA reviews. Um, uh, we do have, we do, as a safeguard, just the same re require that the applicant comply with any review agent comments, uh, and that is in the staff memo from city planning. Yeah, we're 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 just trying to look ahead to con construction, and it would be nice to be able to see those comments. Um, but we don't, you know, we can Oprah them. Uh, my, we, I actually, we can, we can get, yeah. we can give you a copy of the letter. Okay, good, good. Thank you. Um, not, next question, my so, um, Mr. Modesto, have you been? You've been to the site, I'm assuming, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, and did, my client's building is almost enveloped by 10 to 14 South, and there's a there's a roof overhang that's sort of you know like a pagoda shaped roof. Um, I'm just wondering how, when the new building's built, the runoff from my client's roof will be handled. So the, your client's roof shouldn't be spilling onto our property. You know, we are, we're, wherever we can, we're collecting everything on our site and running it through. So if there's spillage onto our property, you know, I think that, you know, is more of a localized concern. Um, you know, on our end, I don't know if there's any free flow uh, from what we saw going on to the property. Okay, so, but you're saying if there is, 
what would happen to it? I'm, I'm not sure the drainage patterns of the roof um, for your client's properties. So I, I really can't speak upon that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, and I'm also wondering, uh, you know, since the, the properties are going to be, you know, uh, kind of, you know, immediately adjacent to one another, how... Do do you know what kind of foundation uh, will be constructed? I think Mr. Vandermark will be providing some some okay. you know, answers to that as far as the foundations. My my primary focus here was the stormwater and utilities associated with this project. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Tajianis. Uh, Mr. Harrington, do you want to continue? Uh, yeah. Then I'll continue with Mr. Vandermark. Okay, great. Anthony, do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name for us, please? Sure. That is Anthony C. Vandermark Jr., Vandermark, V-A-N-D-E-R-M-A-R-K, principal of the architectural firm of Minervini, Vandermark, Milia, and Kelly. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Vandermark, good evening. Happy New Year. Um, good, good evening, Chair. Thank you very much. Same to you. Thank you. We've obviously uh, qualified you in the past. Your license is current tonight. Uh, it is chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're qualified. Great. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Vandermark, before you begin, are you going to use a slide deck uh, that we need to uh, mark as an exhibit? Uh, I am Mr. Harrington and uh, I would like to share that with the board right now. So we can mark that as A2. And if you could identify for the record. Uh, yes, we have a, a, a slide deck of uh, some additional exhibits, uh, which includes uh, the planning board submission set, and there are 30 slides in total, and I anticipate probably using 15 of them this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, board, and I, I will try to be brief and not redundant uh, to go back over uh, Mr. Modesto's testimony. Um, we have before you this evening, uh, again, a four-story proposal for the northeast corner of uh, South Street and Palisade uh, Avenue. Um, in front of you, you have a, a three-dimensional rendering uh, of what the corner condition will look like. Um, I will just briefly walk you back through the site. The site is really, uh, uh, it, it is really the key here uh, as, as this part of this application because the building is pretty straightforward once we get over kind of the site conditions. Now, again, as Mr. Modesto had, had mentioned, we are at 5,986 square feet uh, with just over uh, 29 linear feet on Palisade Avenue, 100 feet in depth on South Street, 90 feet uh, that backs up to the Ogden Avenue properties. Um, as everyone knows, this property as Moe's Bait and Tackle. So at the corner intersection, you have a tall one story uh, uh, partially uh, masonry and wood frame structure. As you work your way down South Street uh, to the east, uh, centrally located, you have uh, 14 uh, South, which is uh, deemed historically significant uh, in facade only, uh, but not in the building behind the facade. Uh, the existing facade is a, uh, it's covered in a cementitious uh, brick face, painted brick face. Uh, that will be removed as part of this application, and the uh, what we believe is a red brick masonry will be fully restored uh, behind uh, this brick face. As you can see, there are some bluestone uh, heads and sills and a very uh, nice looking cornice uh, as part of this facade. Um, the front porch, uh, which is uh, not considered original to this structure, is being removed, and we are going to use this as the centrally located uh, lobby entry point uh, for this application. All the way to the eastern portion of this property, you have a taller two-story uh, masonry structure that backs up against the uh, rear yards to Ogden and also the northern property line. You'll see that in plan in a couple of minutes. As Mr. Modesto had previously mentioned, we have a, approximately 30 feet uh, of curb cut. Uh, we are going to use the eastern portion or 14 feet of the eastern portion and return uh, the additional 16 feet uh, back to uh, parking, uh, vehicular parking, and we believe this will generate one additional space on the street. 
uh, in plan, as previously mentioned, you had 100% uh, impervious lock coverage. Uh, we are proposing uh, stormwater detention uh, as part, uh, uh, part and parcel with NJDEP uh, latest regulations, which is very stringent. And we are uh, proposing uh, over 30% of extensive green roofing area that contributes uh, to rainwater management and ultimately uh, green techniques as part of this property. Also, as previously mentioned, uh, uh, plan left uh, facing Palisade Avenue, uh, one lot in is 560 Palisade. Um, we do, as you can see, there is a, uh, a sort of a kind of hip roof uh, with uh, projections that actually cross our property line. Uh, they do have a one story uh, courtyard uh, that abuts our property uh, to their Western edge. Um, I think we took uh, a better care uh, by reducing one floor and then also providing a, an increased setback to the northern portion of our property that I'll show you in a minute uh, to accommodate more light and air to that centrally located uh, courtyard for 560 Palisades. Um, again, uh, we were definitely improving the situation uh, with increased uh, green uh, rainwater techniques. 560 Palisade uh, courtyard would be over the parapet line. In this photograph, I am standing on the roof of the back portion of 14 South. Uh, it does have uh, second and third story windows that are fa currently facing east. And they do have a uh, lot line facing windows that need to be accommodated as part of this proposal. As you can see, the roof line uh, projects over the property line onto our property. And to answer Ms. Hagianis's question about that, uh, that rainwater uh, and the runoff uh, management, uh, we anticipate uh, uh, actually not even impacting uh, this roof line as part of this application because we did bring the building line back. Uh, Any time where our two uh, buildings would abut, the, uh, the gap in between the two buildings certainly would be covered. The rainwater will be distributed through our property uh, or there will be some sort of cricket uh, that would divert the water from our building line back into the leader system uh, that is currently part of 560 Palisade. So any of the, uh, any of the conditions uh, that will be kind of uh, created as part of our structure, uh, we will be taking care of from a rainwater management standpoint. Uh, going back to the application itself, very straightforward. We're at uh, we're a four-story building at 45 feet in total height. We're proposing nine units. As part of the nine units, we have three one-bedroom plus ten. We have two two-bedrooms and four three-bedrooms, uh, generating nine units. We have one corner retail space at 936 square feet at the intersection of South and Palisade. Um, and again, we are roughly around 2,000 square feet of extensive green roof as part of this. The two differences uh, between application one, uh, uh, which was presented uh, in March of 2022 to this board, uh, as you can see here, we had uh, 10 residential units as part of the original application. Uh, this application for you this evening has nine residential units. The number of parking spaces remains the same. Uh, we have uh, reduced this application by one story. Uh, and as you can see here by 11 feet, the number of bicycle parking spaces is fully compliant. We went from 27 to 20. The lot coverage at the base of the building at 98% remains the same. Floors two and three uh, with a rear yard setback uh, remains at 84. And the four floors setback all the way to 62.4% because we are providing a 15 foot setback to the northern side. Um, we are, uh, as, as part of this application in the original application, a restoration of the two-story facade at uh, 14 South. Uh, that will be in accordance to the Secretary of the Interior Standards. Uh, the original application was filed under the R2D zoning, uh, and so is this application. Uh, since previously filed, the RC2 has been adopted. Uh, actually, it was a, a, which would generate the footprint of this building uh, at four floors. And we have a graphic to show you that. Apologize about the delay, the slide is large. Okay, so the top left-hand corner is the current proposal uh, for the R2T, R2D zoning. So we have a 
one story base uh, and then to the eastern edge, uh, which is facing Ogden, we have a 10 foot setback at the first floor. And then at floors two and three, as you can see, we have an additional 10 foot setback, creating a 20 foot setback to the fourth floor. So the building is tiered. Um, then also at the third story to the northern edge of the property, we have a 15 foot setback that accommodates both uh, the existing lot line window. Um, just a reminder to the board that we are only required to provide a three foot one setback at that window, or we provide a, an open air uh, 15 foot setback at that location. And that additional setback provides additional light and air to the center courtyard 560 Palisades. So the building form uh, at the corner intersection here, as you can see, is a full street wall at Palisade uh, with a, uh, a setback tier uh, to Ogden Avenue here in this graphic. Reversing now looking west, as you can see, the building is tiered uh, facing the rear yards of Ogden Avenue and the building does step back to the northern edge at the fourth floor uh, as part of this proposal. The RC2 zoning, bottom left-hand corner now, uh, uh, permits a four-story building, um, taking into consideration a front yard condition uh, at Palisade Avenue, a front yard condition at South Street, uh, and what is called a rear lot point uh, with offsets of that rear lot point. So as you can see, I am permitted to be at zero lot line uh, here to the north, zero lot line at four stories here to the east at Ogden Avenue, and again, I'm permitted to be four stories uh, uh, adjacent to the courtyard uh, at 560 Palisade. So there's, there's a substantial difference uh, in form in between uh, what is being proposed under the old zoning and what is now uh, permitted under the October adoption of the RC2 zoning. So we, we think we have a better application. And uh, you know, I applaud uh, ownership for sticking with the application in its current format as opposed to going back to the drawing board and presenting a much larger uh, mass building. Three-dimensional plan view. Uh, again, as you can see, we have extensive green roof uh, on the Eastern portion of a 10 foot setback and an additional 10 foot setback. And to the left hand plan left here, which is the Northern edge of the building at the fourth floor. Again, extensive green roof uh, for 15 feet. We have the centralized courtyard for 560 Palisades Avenue. And we're proposing as part of this application, uh, three individual private roof decks with landscape screening. So no one is actually gonna be looking down uh, into this courtyard because I believe there's two very large skylights uh, that are part of that structure. That being said, taking you now to the actual building and, and, and to the project itself, um, as part of this application, we are proposing all new curbing, uh, all new sidewalk, uh, two new ADA ramps at the intersection of both South and Palisade. Um, the three new street trees will be in accordance to the Jersey City forestry standard. To the eastern edge of the property, as you can see, we're proposing a, an 11 foot uh, curb cut uh, with the two flares, uh, it flares out to 14 feet. Um, the void uh, created by closing in that curb cut, again, we think is gonna produce an additional uh, parking space on the street. From that uh, curb cut access point, uh, we have, and this is something to correct both uh, uh, Mr. Harrington and, and also Mr. Modesto, we arranged the interior of the building to reduce one of the egress points that, that formerly was egressing through the garage. Um, that one variance request for the reduced dry valve has been eliminated. So the, the reduced or the lowest portion of this dry valve or the pinch point, so to speak, is at 23 feet one inch, which is compliant with the Jersey City Land Use Development Ordinance. So the garage itself and the backup uh, aisle and clearances uh, are now uh, compatible with the ordinance. The garage, uh, as you can see, uh, has nine parking spaces. Uh, we have a trash room uh, at the corner of the L uh, along with bicycle storage. Uh, going back to the previous testimony of providing uh, bicycle storage for 20 bikes. Uh, corner retail space at 936 square feet with a centrally located a lobby off of South Street. I mean, again, that centrally located lobby, uh, we're taking into consideration that we're reusing the existing facade of 14 South. This application, uh, we are proposing a cellar. Um, cellar, we are uh, using it for utilities and some additional trash storage. 
that's at, that's accessed for via elevator uh, and also uh, a single stair. Working your way up to the building at the second and third floors, the floors are identical. Uh, at the Eastern uh, Ogden property line is a 10 foot setback. Um, we are proposing a one bedroom plus den and 940 square feet here at the intersection of South and Palisade. And then we have uh, two three bedroom units, uh, one at 1,735 here to the Northern edge and one at 1,350 square feet, which is at the southeastern edge. Um, so two floors of this unit count, six units in total. Uh, when you get up to the fourth floor now, the footprint is vastly reduced um, to that 62% lock coverage as previously mentioned. We have two two bedrooms here at 1,000 square feet and 1,032 square feet. So the threes are tiered to two, and the one bedroom plus den at you know, 940 square feet remains the same at the, at the corner. Um, plan view of the, of the roof with the three private roof decks, they're sized at 335 square feet, 285 square feet, and 375 square feet. We have uh, split systems, uh, so there will be obviously no PTAC movers on these facades. We have centrally located condensers, uh, all the sound and everything will be basically minimized to a central location on this roof. Will not be heard from the adjacent neighbors. And again, uh, any of these roof decks will be screened uh, from that courtyard and uh, any of the occupants of 560 Palisade. Not to beat a dead horse, uh, but building form again, a 10 foot setback at the first floor, up two floors, 10 foot setback, and then a 15 foot setback wraps the 14th floor. I think one, one of the really big concerns and direct concerns by this board in the previous application was the impact to the north as well as the overall height of five stories. Uh, I, I think by reducing this by a floor and 11 feet, uh, in addition to creating this kind of really nice 15 foot setback top floor, I think really minimizes the impact of the building um, and also takes care of a lot of the concerns that the board may have had about the previous application. As you can see, it's a 45 foot tall building, 13 feet on the first floor to accommodate the retail, and ADA parking vans, and 10 foot eight uh, floor to floor height at floors two, three, and four. Taking you back to the exterior of the building, uh, as part of Jersey City Engineering, they requested that we do put one street light uh, uh, on the sidewalk uh, for some additional lighting. Uh, as part of this application, we will accommodate that street light, not traffic light, but street light for lighting. Um, we will take their uh, recommendations as to the location of the street light, we'll certainly provide it. Uh, the centrally located uh, restored facade of 14 South, again, is we think is going to be a, a red brick, uh, a Hudson River, a hundred year old red brick. We are choosing to uh, provide a uh, a similar uh, brick in color uh, and style to provide a, a uniform facade. Uh, however, providing some additional glazing around the 14 South Street facade uh, to kind of put more emphasis on that restored uh, over 100 year old facade there. Uh, as previously mentioned, the stairs are being eliminated because they weren't part of the original building structure. And the sill line for the entry door is being dropped and we have an ADA compliant entry point for our main residential lobby. Building facade at South Street, uh, retail at the first floor in the corner, three residential units above. These two vertical windows happen to accommodate both uh, a portion of that residential unit uh, on the corner and then also uh, the stairwell uh, behind the retail unit. Um, again, a lot of glazing at the center of the building facade to kind of picture frame and complement the existing historic facade, as opposed to trying to add a building to it. Uh, and again, the curb cut all the way to the eastern edge at the first floor, as you can see here, uh, with vehicular entry and tiered facade uh, to the east, uh, two stories and an additional one story. 
45 feet in total height, 13 feet, 10, 8, 10, 8, and 10, 8. Um, again, the bulkheads will be uh, at a minimum dimension of nine feet to the roof. Uh, we will try to keep these as low as possible, uh, again, to lessen the impact on any of the adjacent neighbors. 10 foot setback to Ogden and 20 foot setback to the fourth floor. We anticipate wrapping uh, the modular brick masonry uh, for the first uh, 40 feet uh, facing Ogden. Um, and then we will transition uh, that rear facade to a hardy plank uh, siding uh, that really complements more of the, uh, the adjacent buildings on Ogden as you go you know, down to 405 and 407 Ogden. So more of a residential type of material uh, you know, facing the northern uh, and the eastern edge uh, on Ogden. Uh, at both the north elevation, and again, just talked about the eastern elevation, we are providing the module brick masonry uh, uh, veneer at the base, because we'll be at zero property line, uh, as you can see here in the north elevation, party plank siding uh, at the floors two and three, and again at the fourth floor. And as part of this application, we do have some corner uh, small outdoor spaces. Uh, I will testify that we have no cantilevers of habitable space. Uh, anything, if any, uh, uh, canopies will be uh, in material only uh, without habitable space uh, 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 requiring a franchise. So again, three new street trees, uh, uh, all new sidewalks uh, in curving, one curb cut to the eastern edge, uh, and we have a predominantly red brick building uh, that's done in a contemporary style to complement uh, the over 100 year old facade at 14 South. Uh, lighting uh, shadow study uh, as part of the checklist, as part of the application. Yes, every building does cast shadows. We think uh, this application and the stepping of the building both to the east and to the north, uh, we do minimize uh, the impact of the shadows being cast at the northern property, which is really to somebody's rear yard. And to also the eastern properties on Ogden, uh, you know, we think the building uh, is a lot more effective than what the, the now current uh, RC2 zoning or the as of right uh, project would be. So um, this concludes my presentation and, and, I, and I think we have a, a very good application before you this evening. All right, thank you, Mr. Vandermark. Um, thank you. I appreciate the detailed presentation. I, I have no questions. Um, anybody else from the board? No. Okay, Ms. Hagianis, do you want to yeah. close? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Vandermark, I just had a few questions for you. And um, thank you for doing those massing studies because I think it really helps to understand sure. um, how, you know, how this is going to relate to the other buildings. Um, so you, you had mentioned um, that there is an increased step back um, and that that would improve the light and the air to, to my client's courtyard. And I was just wondering if you could elaborate on that. Yes, uh, the original application had uh, had a, a really a, a created a light well here at a 10 foot line um, and then returned back to five stories. So, not only was the principal footprint of the building at five stories, but this portion here that you now see in green had a, had a setback. However, it did then increase back to five stories in this area here. So what we did was we actually cut out two floors of structure um, to bring light and air in from you know, the Eastern rising sun back into this courtyard. So we think that portion and then also the reduction of one floor to this application uh, will have significant uh, positive impact, uh, you know, on this courtyard that unfortunately, you know, is at the crook of the L of our structure. Yeah. When, when, when you're saying it reduced it by two stories, um, it went from five to four. I, mean, I guess I'm not following. Where's the second story yeah, but, reduction? But, yeah, you have to remember is that the original application building line was out here. So okay. 
um, if I could just give you like this portion of the property had two additional stories. Um, okay. You know, the, re the remainder of the portion of the property had one story, but the portion that you see here highlighted in red had an additional two stories, um, you know, that blocked light and air uh, to this courtyard. And certainly uh, it, in it, it increases the benefits to, you know, that, that, that three property line facing windows uh, at that location that were, that were certainly accommodating. You know, okay. So we only had a light well at that location. Now you have no building line. Got it. Got it. Okay. And if you were, if you're looking, you know, if the resident of that unit is looking out that window, what will that, that, I guess it's the fourth story lot line window. What will he just, what will he be seeing? Well, he's going to see, you know, if they look directly out, they're going to see extensive green roof um, because this is a non habitable, uh, uh, really kind of sedum, a moss roof um, that just controls uh, uh, rainwater and then slowly releases it to the leaders and the stormwater system. We do have some windows uh, on this facade, um, but again, they're windows, they're kind of perpendicular to your building, fully compliant with the fire code and the building code and the LDO. Um, but if you look out those windows, you're mostly going to be seeing green roof. And, and that um, building line on the fifth story, where where does that fall in relation to that my my client's window well we don't even have a five-story building so we have a, a fourth story building yeah. uh, in, in, in front of you here so that window line um, again ends approximately here okay okay got it okay thank so you. We're, we're, there... we're required to be at least one foot off of the edge of that window line okay um and and then for the second and third story windows that face east is that what do those look out on a similar view or i guess i'm well those windows that face east uh will face the rear yard uh, uh, portion uh. of the ogden structure so Okay, gotcha. No, but I, um, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, thinking of something else. Okay. And um, the, are, are you familiar with the residential design standards in the zoning ordinance? As they pertain to what? Um, I guess just uh, your, your building design or just the process you normally go through when you're trying to um, design and infill construction? Well, we, what we certainly did is went above and beyond as far as stormwater management. And, and as far as context, there it is a considerable amount of building types uh, and, and, and visual uh, design types within the immediate neighborhood and you know just coming from a uh, a designer who has designed now several uh, significant structures on Palisade Avenue uh, I think this building is going to be a welcome addition from a design standpoint mm -hmm. um, and uh, I had asked the engineer ab about the foundation and this that might Maybe they that hasn't uh, you don't have construction drawings yet. I don't know, but do you have any idea what type of foundation will be constructed? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, here on Palisade Avenue, uh, you have uh, very very good soil, um, and you know a, a certain dimension down from the sidewalk, uh, we have a significant amount of rock. So you're you're going to have what is called uh, along the property line a an eccentrically loaded spread footing mm -hmm. where the foundation wall comes straight down um you know uh, one or two inches below or excuse me one to two inches off of the property line and then projects into our property so we will be completely independent of any of the building structure and foundations of 560 palisade and any of the adjacent properties we only have one concern and you know that building is the only concern we, we are not touching any other uh 
adjacent structures on the north and or on the east. So we, we, we anticipate a spread footing, centrally loaded spread footing that has no relevance to your building foundation. Okay, thank you. And then the, the facade that you're preserving, how, how does that remain intact while you're doing demolition and construction? Uh, we've actually done quite a few of these before. So what happens is, is that that building facade, while we're doing demolition and construction, gets braced from both the front and the back um, with kind of, uh, uh, kind of outliers or kickers. Um, so we stand this thing completely up straight. And one of the first things that we do from a structural standpoint is we start to build the structure behind this facade to kind of lock it back into place. Mm -hmm. um, so, so basically great care uh, and protection is taken that it, it's completely screened. And there's also kickers back to the sidewalk and into the site that protect this facade from moving and or crumbling, so. Okay. Um, so one more question, this might be a silly question. On the, on the green roof, is that, are, are residents allowed to go out on that roof or is that? No, that's that's uninhabitable. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And, and, yeah, and it's it's also part of your land use. Uh, uh, one of the guidelines for the land use ordinance is that you're, you're not allowed to use it. Um, so any area uh, uninhabitable uh, uh, is not for use by the occupant. So it's really just going to be there for stormwater management. And aesthetically, it looks nice. I mean, some of these actually flower. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. That's it for my questions. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hagianis. Um, all right, Mr. Harrington, the floor is yours. Okay, then I'm just gonna move uh, right on to Mr. Colling to address the requested variances. I had these morning testimony you give tonight's gonna be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, yes, I do. And for the record, can you state and spell your name, please? Uh, it's uh, first name is Edward, E-D-W-A-R-D. -D. Last name is Colling, K-O-L-L-I-N-G. Uh, licensed professional planner, uh, AI, also American Institute of Certified Planners, and my license in New Jersey is current and it's active. Okay, thank you, Mr. Collin. You're qualified. Okay, Mr. Collin, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Um, I just, I'll just reiterate a few things that were said because I think it, that it's in, important given concerning the zoning. Uh, the property was zoned uh, R2D uh, previously, and when we made our last application, um, it has been the land development ordinances ordinance has been amended. Uh, however, New Jersey now has a time of time of application in terms of determining what zoning you can use. That's not to say that uh, an applicant could not have used the new R2C, but we have chosen the R two D, and that's how we're we're proceeding. The R two D and the R C two are very very similar. Um, R two D was really, I think, in my opinion, was used as sort of the the format for creating the R C R C two. But another more important aspect, I think, of the amendments to the land development ordinance is that there was a way that the uh, corner lots are treated. Uh, under the art, under the old ordinance, um, a corner lot, the um, more narrow frontage, the lesser frontage becomes the front, which in this case is Palisade Avenue. Uh, South Street is a side, and uh, it's 100 foot of depth on that side. The rear lot line then is the easternmost lot line that we share <laughs> uh, the Ogden Avenue properties, and that's 90 feet long. Uh, that's how that that how you determine your your uh, lot, uh, lot uh, uh, names or how you want to describe it. Every other <laughs> lot line is determined to be a side lot line. Under the new ordinance, what happens is that there's a rear lot point on corner lots. So if that were utilized here, what is currently or what we're using as our rear lot line would become a side lot line. And as Anthony pointed out, then you have a zero setback and there's a whole, you know, different types of uh, relationship of the building to the rear of Ogden Avenue, 
a different relationship to uh, to the other lot lines as well. So it certainly doesn't make for a, a, a better plan if we use the, uh, the new zoning. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. Uh, the property is uh, oversized. It's 5,986 square feet, as was mentioned. Uh, it's been improved with uh, one and two story buildings. It's almost completely impervious as was, as was uh, mentioned by the, the engineer and the architect. So this, this project really significantly improves the stormwater detention and the permeability of the, of the site, so to, so to speak. Um, we are conforming in terms of the height, we're conforming in terms of the use, we're conforming in terms of the density. Um, what we really only need are, uh, are two, vent two, two variances. Uh, one is for the coverage, but again, based on the improvements that are being made in terms of the green roof and the stormwater detention, um, the additional 3% of coverage is more than compensated for by all the uh, improvements to the stormwater systems that are, that are being um, uh, impl uh, proposed under this application. And the other one is for the minimum uh, rear yard setback. Um, in this case, the R2D requires a five yard set, the five yard foot rear yard setback um, at the ground floor and 30 feet above. Uh, what's being proposed instead is, as the architects pointed out, 10 feet at the top of the first floor, 20 feet at the top of the third floor, and an additional step back that's really for the side but also uh, adds to the reduction in terms of building coverage as you go higher in the building and creates more, more green roof. The, the shape of this lot is pretty irregular. You know, you know, as, as was described, you have a 90 foot rear, uh, rear lot line in length, you have a, a 30 foot, just under 30 feet on the front uh, lot line. It's hundred foot deep. There's a 50 by 50 plus or minus area the 60 by 50 really, that extends to the north. So you really needed to use some creativity to create a building that could fit in here um, and would also accommodate the, uh, uh, the historic facade that's being retained, which is really another hardship uh, on, in terms of developing the site. And also recognize the surrounding buildings, the uh, existing building on Palisade Avenue that we sort of wrap around that has a zero lot line window, again, which creates a bit of a hardship in terms of how you create your setbacks, and also how you accommodate the rear yards of the buildings on Ogden Avenue. So all these things play into what really is a, is a hardship. Um, to kind of demonstrate that hardship, if you had a typical uh, rectangular lot and you had a 30 foot rear yard, you would give up about 30% of your lot area for um, that, open, that open area above the ground floor. In a lot like this, wh what happens is with the 90 foot uh, rear, rear, rear lot line length, you end up with 45% um, of the lot. So that's half again as much of the lot, which is taken up with the open space. So that, that in itself sort of demonstrates why this lot has the hardship due to its size, its configuration, um, Etc. Not not to mention the rear windows that's on the property line, as well as the preservation of the uh, of the facade. So I think that the rear yard variances can be variance can be granted for no other reason than than due to this this hardship. But in addition, I believe that as the architect has described, it's a better approach to design. You what we've done is we've rearranged the upper level uh, open spaces so that they're tiered from the back that gives you an adequate air and light and open space to the, um, the buildings facing Ogden Avenue. And the fourth floor being stepped back 15 provides a, uh, a clear open space which extends across the entire Northern property line from the rear, rear of, of the building fronting on Palisade where the uh, lot line window is all the way through to the easternmost property line. So. I think that this design provides better uh, air, light, open space uh, based on this sort of tiered configuration 
while still being able to accommodate the hardship of the of the shape of the lot, uh, the uh, existence of that uh, illegal street, uh, illegal property line window, and the preservation of the historic uh, facade. So, I think you can grant the variance for the uh, the rear yards rear yard setback, both from the perspective of the hardship and from the perspective of the C2 criteria where the benefits would outweigh any detriment. Um, and um, there's no substantial detriment to the zone plan. As, as I mentioned, we're, we're permitted use, permitted density, permitted height. It, it really is a, a, a right building in the right location. So I think we really, we um, promote the intent and purpose of the R2D zone. And in terms of, an, of a substantial detriment to the public good, I, I, there's really none that I see because of the way that the building has been tiered and designed and stepped back to continue to provide adequate air and light, notwithstanding the fact that we're asking for the rear yard variance. The other variance that we're asking for again is the coverage variance. Um, I think many of the same benefits that I've, I've mentioned were, were accrued based on the design of the project, the preservation of the uh, historic structure, uh, the fact that notwithstanding that we have 3% more coverage, there is significant improvements to the stormwater system to with the, uh, with the provision of the green roof, with the provision of the uh, stormwater drainage, and, the, and et cetera. So I think that from that perspective, the the coverage variance could have absolutely also be granted from the perspective that the benefits of this pro uh, pro uh, project subsans substantially outweigh um, any any detriment. Um, the project also, I think, promotes uh, the purposes of the municipal land use law. Uh, it's a permitted mixed use development consistent with the uses permitted in the R2D zone and the other 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 properties along uh, Fallisade Avenue. Um, yeah, as such, the approval of this project would be a municipal action that guides the appropriate use and development of this property, and that's consistent with subparagraph 2A of the MLUL. Uh, the proposed setbacks, as we've described multiple times, provide adequate air and light and open space, notwithstanding the fact that we need the uh, rear yard setback, so that, that promotes uh, subparagraph 2C. Uh, the project conforms with the density requirements. Therefore, it promotes, it's consistent with subparagraph 2E. It provides sufficient space and appropriate location. Um, this property is, is oversized and can accommodate this, uh, this building very well. And that's uh, subparagraph uh, 2G. So I think uh, based on that, that also goes toward the, uh, the benefits of the project in terms of outweighing the detriments. And since there are no uh, substantial uh, detriments that I can see to either the zone plan or to the public good and general welfare. I think that we've met the positive and negative criteria to uh, uh, to approve both the requested variances. All right, thank you, Mr. Colling. I appreciate the detailed testimony and uh, I have no questions. Anybody else from the board? No. Okay, thank you, sir. Ms. Hagianos, do you wanna cross examine? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Harrington, anything else? No, that, that then uh, completes our uh, presentation. Okay, great. Um, so I see one hand raised already. Uh, let's open it up for public comment at this point. Anybody that wants to comment, please raise your hand. And uh, if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand on this application. Promoted for guest is Tanjin. Hello again, Mr. Dungeon. If you could just confirm that you remain under oath and give us your address one more time, please. 70 Moore Street, uh, Jersey City, Unit 1. Question okay. for the uh, architect for the Palisades uh, front face where the existing Moe's uh, bait and tackle shop is, whatever. Is it flush to the uh, adjoining building or not? Because one of the renderings, it looks like it's uh, pushing out a little bit. I would like to understand that a little bit better. Yeah, uh, that, yeah, we are. Yeah, that's it. We are at uh, we're at zero lot line, um, and as you can see, the adjacent property at five sixty, 
is also at zero lot line. So the two buildings will align uh, with minimal gap in between. Uh, you know, what you can see in the rendering is, you know, probably a little bit of uh, kind of trying to Photoshop it and drop it into the, uh, you know, the existing location. But uh, again, it'll be aligned with 560 Palisade at zero lot line. Because uh, your picture, it looks like it's maybe more massive than it should be. Because if you think it's if it's flush, it will appear a little bit smaller than that. Is that a correct statement or? It, 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 again, you know, very difficult to kind of stitch these photographs sometimes together. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it looks very prominent and it looks like it could be slightly forward of 560. But again, you know, as part of the site plans and testimony given, uh, it will be at zero lot line and align itself at the face of 560. Okay. Uh, one thing I do have uh, for Mr. Harrington, uh, for your client, uh, his name and when did he purchase this plot? And knowing it's a corner lot, he did he realize that there's going to be uh, it's a you know a little bit of a challenge and stuff to develop. Uh, the second thing is this one plot or is this several plots put together? Considering that there's a historic facade building, uh, looks like it's a separate plot potentially. Well, it's one lot, and, and okay. my my client purchased it. You know with within the last year. Um, yeah, he was uh, under contract uh, the last time this was before the board. But, okay. Uh, uh, the, the reason why I was stating that is uh, knowing it's a corner lot, there are challenges with it. And uh, it's almost being stated as uh, because of the challenges, he needs some variances, but he should know that before going in uh, that, you know, it's a corner. I, I, I just find it a little bit hard to believe that it's a, a big challenge, but you know, Philly purchased it recently, he should know that. So I find that this is a pattern throughout the city where, well, this is this situation or that situation, but you know, these people are purchasing it and they're trying to develop and make some money. And I find it a little bit hard to use that as an excuse to tell us that uh, they're very challenged. So the challenge is, you can see with eyes, it's a corner lot, there's gonna be some challenges with it, and um, a little bit hard to understand, but I do uh, like that most of the, uh, it's a limited amount of variances. It's not the several variances that some of these development properties are asking for. So I would like the commission to just consider, uh, you know, isn't like uh, they're going coming into this blind. They know what they're getting themselves into, um, so. Okay, thank you, sir. That was your three minutes. Thank yeah, you. Not just not to get into a debate, but that's that's why you, you request the variances because zoning isn't necessarily written for irregular lots and you're looking at it at a very irregular lot. Okay, so let's move on with public comment. Once again, anybody that wants to comment on this application, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Aaron has been promoted. Hi, Colonel. Uh, swear hey. you in? Yep. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your address, please? Sure. It's Kern, K E R N, last name Weissman, W E I S S M A N, uh, 576 Palisade Ave, uh, within 200 feet. Thank you. Kern, good evening. Happy New Year. And uh, we have three minutes for you, sir. Good evening, Chairman, and good evening, uh, Commissioners. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I just want to uh, make two two quick statements. One is, um, <clears throat> as a uh, as the current chair of the RNA Development Committee, uh, we are hereby removing our objections uh, to this pr uh, proposal based on the fact that the fifth floor has been removed. Uh, as you remember, our <clears throat> previous uh, major concern with the project was that the fifth floor uh, was not in uh, alignment in our view with the uh, intent of the, you know, the R2D zone. And uh, now that that's been removed, uh, we feel like it, uh, it it's a much better project and uh, we're removing our objection there. Uh, and then uh, separately, I'm gonna state as a uh, so you've got notice, you know, I'm technically within 200 feet at 576 Palisade that have. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to defer, uh, you know, to the neighbors that are, I would say, more directly affected. When I uh, did some analysis in terms of my backyard and the rear, I don't believe I'll really be affected 
very much at all in this property, uh, this project. Um, aesthetically, it looks it looks pretty good, you know, to me at this point. So I, I would say I'm going to defer to the neighbors that are directly adjacent, or in some cases, enveloped, uh, you know, by the property, and uh, and really uh, encourage you know uh, you know to, to listen to their feedback because they're obviously the ones that are going to be more impacted. Uh, but I want I want to say I appreciate the. Uh, um, the, the willingness to uh, adjust and also to keep the setbacks and uh, and and work to make the building less uh, in, you know, intrusive and um, impactful to the to the neighbor. So that is appreciated, and I, I I want to recognize that not every developer does that, and and it, 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 it should be recognized when it happens. So I do appreciate. It. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Kern, and I, I do want to. Thank you for removing your objection. Not not every uh, neighborhood group does that, and and it means a lot that someone comes out in favor of something. It's always appreciated. Yeah, we want to be uh, with integrity, right? When we have an objection and it's it's uh, addressed by the project, we want to make sure that we recognize that as well. It's only fair. Um, it doesn't take heights. away any, and it doesn't take away any uh, in, uh, measure or impact of current neighbors that are impacted. But we, we have to, you know, be, uh, you know, we have to respond with integrity uh, to projects. So I do. Th thanks for recognizing that. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. All right. Uh, let's move on with public comment. Uh, once again, anybody that wants to comment, I see one hand up still. Uh, anybody that wants to comment, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Promoted Mary. Um... Hi, Mary. If you're there, you're going to unmute, turn your video on. Mary, are you there? Hello. Hi, Mary. Are you able to turn your uh, video on? No, I can't do that. No. All right. Uh, sorry. Um, I'll be okay. brief. Sure. Oh, okay. I just want to swear I... you in. Uh, do you yeah, swear yeah. that any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, of course. And could you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Okay. M A R Y Mills, M I L L S. My address now is 9 Sherman Place, number 3, 07307. <laughs> Okay, Ms. Mills, good evening. We have three minutes for you. Hi. Yeah, uh, I want to ask Mr. Van and Mark a couple of questions. Sure. I, I like the changes very much. I lived right over there, so I'm and I knew the family very well. But I have I have some questions. Um, you've got. Uh, I appreciate your uh, back back you along Ogden where you put a kind of clabbered just uh, textured back. Um, what I want to ask is, why is there such a thing using this graphite gray, uh, gunmetal gray trim on buildings? That is, it is, there's nothing like that that has been in the, in the neighborhood. In my opinion, it's not domestic or residential looking. It is a kind of industrial look. Uh, of course, it was an in industrial ta uh, town. Uh, I appreciate you using that brick. That's wonderful. But this gray thing is all over the neighborhood. And invariably, people despise it, the people who live here. And I don't understand it. It's, it's gloomy. Uh, oh, you know, it it's overwhelms you on the sidewalk. It's it's, it stands out, so I understand why it makes good pictures. But in practice, it's so grim looking. What is the reason for that? Ma'am, let's um, get all of your questions and we'll have Mr. Vandermark address them. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. 
uh, trees, are the trees there? You're going to put trees all yes, around the sides there? Three trees, yes. Okay, okay, glass. A lot of your designs feature a great deal of glass. And this is, um, at least these are straight edges. And uh, I want to know, is that acoustic glass you're using? Because you need it there. It's very, very noisy. Okay. Uh, yeah, th th these will be insulated windows, um, you know, of a very high standard. So, uh, you know, Acoustic. as far as sound transmission, yeah. It, it, Ms. Mills, let's get all the questions out and then Mr. Van that's Der my, can respond. Yes, yes, yes. That's my question. I think, oh, nine slots for cars. Um, it's 10 units, nine units, I'm sorry, but why? I understand the law, okay, the rules. But these people can all walk to mass transit. And we're never going to get anywhere with mass transit in this neighborhood because we're not putting any pressure on it. And instead, we have a living hell of traffic. And I understand why you, you, they will sell better with parking. The, the people who come within three months, they get... Well, the first two years, I'm, in, I'm a realtor, so I know about this. You've got $2,000 worth of, of parking tickets. I had them regularly, 2000 a year. And it is it's sort of insane to tell people, we can't put in more, we need more living units, but we're willing to house cars. It just seems insane to me when we're in a crisis of, of housing people. Ms. Mills, and I don't know why you need it. Ms. That's Mills, it. thank That's you. It. That was your three yeah, minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank so you. let's, uh, Mr. Vandermark, do you want to address the uh, industrial um, grade? Gym? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you know, there's there's several ways you can actually look at this material. And, and you know, I, I certainly think from a pallet standpoint, um, and, and we're only talking about uh, the corner condition um, and then some of the locations as you work down South Street. Uh, charcoal gray uh, historically works very well uh, uh, with kind of a Hudson River red, a common red brick. Um, you know, anything uh, kind of brighter uh, has a tendency to take away uh, from the actual masonry material. Um, and, and, and we've used this, uh, you know, at nausea uh, uh, through a lot of different projects of ours and, and it works very well uh, from an aesthetic standpoint. So uh, we, we don't think it's a gloomy material at all when we're using the right applications. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, it's all about contrast. Yep, it, it, it agreed. You, you know, and the windows will be uh, uh, insulated windows. Um, you know, obviously we haven't selected the windows yet. The owner can choose to have a, a, a triple paned uh, 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 low sound transmission glazing if he feels it's deemed necessary at this corner. Uh, I, I certainly don't think so. Uh, I, I think that while yes, uh, uh, you know, they might be uh, uh, heavily traveled, uh, you know, I, I think the windows that will be chosen uh, will certainly be able to withstand any sound impact. Okay, thank you, sir. And and okay. while I agree with Miss Mills that, you know, I. I hate to see nine parking spaces for nine units. Um, but that being said, I've lived in the Heights for 22 years now and I, I haven't amassed more than a hundred dollars worth of parking tickets at this point over that time. <laughs> so, okay, uh, let's move on with public comment. Do we have anybody else that wants to comment on this application? Sure, I see no more public. I'm moved to close the public. Cam, didn't we have didn't we have one more hand up, Camp? I don't say it. Or am I wrong? Well, and, and, it. and Wallace. There we go. But she's not here. She Ooh. he's she's promoted already. <laughs> yeah, she's oh, promoted. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why she's not. Hi, Ann. Hi How there. I just want to swear you in, okay? If you could raise your right hand. Yep, of course. Do you swear any testimony you get tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And for the record, can you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Yeah, I'm uh, it's Anne E. Wallace, W-A-L-L-A-C-E. I'm at 409 Ogden Avenue. Thank you. Ms. Mm -hmm. Wallace, good evening. We have three minutes for you. 
Sure. So I've lived at 409 Ogden since 2002. Uh, 409 Ogden is um, cat a corner, like in the backyard to my back corner of my yard abuts the back corner of this property. Um, this project, even at four story stories with nearly full lot coverage and without the required setbacks due to the hardship of its special shape, um, that's a self-created hardship. As other people have said, this was purchased, this lot was purchased with full understanding of the shape that's now being claimed as a hardship. I take issue with that. The building, even with the modified plan, which I agree is much better, so I thank the developers for, for that, um, will still cut nearly all of the sunlight from the south and will cast my property and many of my neighbors into shade for most of the day. My yard will still lose most of its afternoon light and aside from midday, it's mostly going to sit in shade. The entire neighborhood benefits from the, the, the green yard that will be overshadowed by this building. In my yard alone, I said this to y'all in the, in the spring, I have dozens of plant species, many of which are native plants, which are vital for our environment. My neighbors also have gardens. Gardens release oxygen, absorb carbon, carbon monoxide, dioxide, sorry, and improve our air quality. Indeed, a recent study of vegetation in New York City indicates the vital role of greenery in absorbing carbon emissions. It's, this matters. Further, I mean, we already know this, but you know, there can, studies continue to be done. Further, our yards are habitats for wildlife that's vital and scarce within our urban community. We have more than a dozen species, far more than a dozen species of birds that frequent the yards in the heights. And we have vital pollinators, bees, along with butterflies. And it, all of this is in danger when we keep building buildings that are full lot coverage. Um, and don't have setbacks. This project, even with the re redesign, will still will impact all of that and will still diminish the sunlight for adjacent and nearby neighbors, such as myself. My garden, including a mature plum tree in the corner of my property, right by this property, will struggle. And many with this property built as planned, as presented. And many of my plants, which have been cultivated over 20 years, will die. Green space is vital for our mental health, um, as well as for our environment. Year after year, Jersey City loses more of its green space. Outsized projects out of scale with their neighborhoods are built every year and at full lot coverage. Our plant and wildlife, our air quality, our mental health suffer. <laughs> Jersey City's tree canopy is shamefully out of step, step with other cities. That's already the case. We know this. There have been studies on this. This project, rather than providing more green space on a lot that currently has none, exacerbates that environmental pr problem by Im and also impacting the life that my neighbors and I have cultivated. I ask that you enforce the green space. I see three trees on the sidewalk. Surely there's room for four. This is a a, a lot with um, a lot of street frontage. I'd ask that there be four trees planted. There, instead, there's priority given for a driveway into the garage. Um, I also Swallows, don't that was know. Your three minutes. I apologize. That was your three minutes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay. Is anybody else here from public that wants to comment on this application? Please raise your hands. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Mr. Chair, I see no no more public. I move to close. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. All right, where are we here? Um, Matt, this is yours. You're handling Mallory's. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I inherited this application, uh, Chairman, um, and I reviewed it fully. Um, I prepared a staff memo um, dated uh, Jan January 9th, 2022. Uh, one moment. Getting some background noise here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so this application, uh, many of the elements from the prior application, which was denied by this board, um, are still intact. Uh, in fact, we... Uh, the the elements regarding regarding the uh, the preservation of the facade of the building on South Street are still intact and, and re remain 
um, part of this application. Um, a very similar uh, proposal or exactly the same for, regarding that element. Uh, so many of the architectural features of the facade are also very similar. Um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Vandermark speaking to the uh, removal of a variance regarding the uh, drive aisle. Um, I believe that is still called out on the zoning table. Um, so we should just fix that before, uh, but we should revise that that piece of the zoning table. Uh, should this application be approved? Um, and the, the other variances that they have uh, our uh, maximum building coverage and rear yard setback. Uh, their team provided testimony as to the uh, the regularity of the lot um, and uh, the fact that they are using a time of application to use the R2D uh, zoning um, and spoke, uh, spoke to the uh, the rear lot line uh, condition along that that est that eastern property line, um, Project East, <clears throat> and most eastern. Uh, we included in our in our memo uh, just some of the definitions uh, that might still apply to this application uh, that are uh, easy for you to to reference. Um, if you have any questions regarding those, we also provided a comment regarding building coverage, rear yard setback, um, and we also included some comments about the dry aisle that, that has been remedied. Uh, staff does recommend five conditions in our in our memo. Uh, should the the board make a, a motion to approve this project? <clears throat> um, although they are not using the new zoning. Um, and we believe and stand by the new zoning uh, in this particular instance with the regular lot. Uh, it seems that this applicant has done their uh, their homework, um, has responded to uh, respond, uh, responded to surrounding neighbors um, and comments they've received. Um, staff uh, recommends approving this project. And Mr. Harrison, question? have you reviewed those comments? I have, and the applicant would agree to those conditions uh, if, if uh, approved. Okay, thank you. And uh, I would offer uh, Ms. Haji honesty the um, opportunity to question uh, Mr. Ward if you need to. No, I, th I think I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Okay, do you have any closing statement you want to make? Um. Well, I, I do think that this is an improvement over the the prior application, but you know that application was res judicata. They they, they it's it wasn't they didn't come in with a new application voluntarily. Uh, it was denied, and they were sort of forced to lop a story off the building. So I don't know if I'd give them as much uh, credit for that as some of the other commenters um, and it's still in in relation to my client's building it's still a very big building it's it's 45 feet tall um, so and, and I, they're entitled to do four stories I think they're entitled to do 45 feet but just in terms of the proportion and the, the proportions and the residential design standards and how to apply those I, I still think, it, it's 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 a bit incongruous with the neighborhood, and um, and I I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Harrington, I'll give you the last shot at at uh, closing statement. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I just as we I think we've presented here tonight uh, a project that we think is a much better project than the last time. It's it's a project that that has been in response to to uh, comments that we got at the last denial uh, from the board and, and from the community. And, and it's a project that, that um, we think addressed uh, those concerns. And, and I, I think it's important to note, you know, while we're, this has been submitted under the old zoning, as we demonstrated and showed tonight, under the new zoning, it would result in, in a project as of right that, that really isn't preferable for a community. 
Um, my, my client, to his credit, it has, has worked on something that he thinks works on this property that addresses these concerns. He's not, he's not looking to go back and maximize uh, this, this uh, development. He's not maximizing the density. He's not, not maximizing height uh, because it is five stories is permitted. So we're, we're doing, you know, he's, he's presenting he, a project that he wants to be proud of and he thinks that the community you know, and this board can be proud of. All right, thank you, Mr. Harrington. So with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Chair, can I ask, Chair? Sure, can go ahead, Steve. Matt, so when Ms. Wallace spoke about adding a fourth tree, if I'm a reader of body language or head movement, uh, Mr. Vandermark was sort of nodding, like in the affirmative. Is that possible? Uh, I, I think it would be a question that might uh, be best. Uh, I'm sorry. That's for the, their engineer to maybe look at. Uh, maybe there was a reason why they weren't providing another tree along South Street. It, it, uh, you know, if, if I could just respond directly to that, um, you, you, you have the Jersey City Forestry Standard is a 30 foot on center uh, to the tree. Um, and we have 100 feet of frontage on South Street. Um, you, you always have to pull the tree back from the corner and then offset 30 feet off of that. So you have, you know, approximately, uh, you know, between the corner and the two trees, about 45 feet, and then you have the curb cut. Um, so it, it, I think it's quite difficult to, to put in uh, that additional third tree. We can evaluate it. And if need be, I think this owner has no problem agreeing to adding the third tree, uh, you know, if it physically fits within the standards of the forestry. Um, not okay. a problem. Appreciate your kind consideration. Sure. Uh, agreed. Um... I also want to respect that that measurement to the corner. Um, yeah, the, 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 the forestry standards can range from 25 to 35 feet on center. Um, so we can certainly look at that with the applicant. Okay. Yeah, anybody that walks in the heights knows uh, any visibility at a corner is a plus. Um, it's dangerous out here, man. It's, it's <laughs> rough on pedestrians here right now. And uh, believe me, uh, I'm in constant contact with uh, Director Patel about this. And, it, you know, something's got to be done. Um, so anyway, if, if we can make a four tree happen, yeah, let's do it. Always. So uh, I, what I'm hearing is the board would like to consider that as part of uh, one of the conditions for tonight. Number six. I, I wouldn't, I, I would condition exploring it. I don't want to condition, you know, that yeah. it's definite. Yeah. But if it can be done, sure, why not? Yeah, absolutely. We we would uh, accept that to to look into whether or not it, it it can be done. Okay, we appreciate that. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion then to approve case P two two dash one four one, as presented to the board here tonight with the conditions. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for approval. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Dr. Gonzalez. Yeah, I think there's an improvement here. Uh, even though um, you um, had to come back uh, after we denied it initially, not a lot of applicants do that. Um, and so that determination and willfulness to, or willingness, I should say, to, uh, to make some changes really, um, really echoes nicely with me. And uh, the fact that we listen to the community, which is always important. We thank them for coming all the time. Um, I actually like the look I did before. I continue to like it. I love the charcoal gray, uh, Mr. Vandermark. So I'm good with that. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think the variances that are being sought uh, are, are legitimate uh, variances. So um, I, I vote aye. Commissioner Torres. I vote aye. Commissioner Green. I vote aye. Commissioner Lipsky. So I grew up in the Heights and used to go to Moe's uh, Tackle to get my bait when I was a <laughs> scout and when I went camping. And it's sad to see uh, that parcel be changed. Uh, but I also lived in a two family home. <laughs> Doc, we're on uh, live down. So, uh, and coming to visit my grandmother, the St. John's apartments, I thought that was like uh, royalty, you know, 17 stories, woof. Um, 
And to see Jersey City change the way it is, it's, it's astounding. And I'm adapting. I love Jersey City. So having said that, uh, I think that Chuck and his team have listened to the people, gone back and done a yo person's job of changing things. I appreciate Mr. Vandermark's uh, uh, excellence and expertise in knowing please, not only that. I think that if it's going to be a replacement, that his design is outstanding. I think it's going to complement the neighborhood, but as they say in Latin, the gusti bus est non desputatum, you can't argue taste. And that uh, I would say to the comments earlier, Robert Kennedy in 68 said that some men see things as they are and ask why. I dream of things that are not and ask why not. And so I think uh, to dream big, to vision big, to put uh, square pegs and round holes is a great thing. And uh, Jersey City's model is let Jersey prosper. I vote aye. Commissioner Gangadin. I want to thank the developer for listening to the community and um, revising the project. Uh, that really truly reflected good faith. Um, with that, I voted aye. Commissioner Dr. Desai. Yeah, it was a change from the last uh, application and uh, community, we were, uh, they had an input in it. And of course, uh, this project is uh, much better from the last one. And of course, we pass on Palisades Avenue 40 years now. And it the project looks good. The color is good. And I vote I. And Chairman Lexton. Uh, so there's a couple of points I want to hit. Um, I do appreciate the applicant listening to the board after the last denial. Uh, I appreciate them hearing the community and, and you know, really changing the project uh, to the benefit of the community. Um, I think the deviations are well within reason. Um, I don't think there's any detriment to the master plan. I think it advances the goals of the green aspects with uh, stormwater detention. Uh, I appreciate the green roofs. I think that's a game changer. Um, I, I think the design is thoughtful. It considers the neighboring properties to the north. Um, I appreciate that there's no PTAC units, obviously. Um, the 20 bike storage spaces is great. I hope one day that the Heights can uh, catch up on bike infrastructure, that uh, those 20 bikes can be used safely on the street. Um, I, I'm happy about the setbacks, adding light and air to those courtyards. And um, one thing I really do appreciate that, you know, just kind of sailed past us, um, the, the breaking up of the materials on the, the east facing facade out the back, um, you know, it, it kind of cuts the the heaviness of the back of the building. Um, I, I like the contrast on the the materials, and it, it gives the look of two two different properties. So I, I really appreciate that. I think that's a nice touch, and and Mr. Vandermark, it's a great job. It's as always uh, thoughtful designs. And uh, I appreciate that. Um, Mr. Collings' testimony, as always, totally agree. Um, and once again, there's no detriment to the master plan or the uh, zone plan. Um, I happily vote I. I thank the public for coming out and uh, especially the uh, RNA development team uh, for rescinding that opposition. We, we don't hear that often, <laughs> like I said before. That's why I live in the Heights. We, we call like it is, we say it, and, um, you know, I, I appreciate them taking that opposition back. So uh, it's it's a, an easy eye for me. Motion yeah, carries all in favor on a motion to approve with conditions. Okay, thank also, you, everybody. You thank, you. thank you. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Um, you, Chairman, I just want to add to the record, uh, can uh, commend uh, Council Hadrianis. I mean, she was a tenacious and uh, uh, dedicated to advocate for the project and never became disagreeable, but she was passionate. As always. It was great to see uh, a civil conversation take place in our great town. Thank, Thank you. you. Heights. 
heights <laughs> and curve. I mean, it's amazing. Great place to be. Critical Thank conversations you. in uh, making Jersey City great. That's yeah. it. That's what it's all about. All right, Cam, uh, I don't know how long ago it was. I guess an hour ago, I asked you to reach out to the rest of the uh, applicants tonight. Uh, yes. That obviously was our last application tonight. Yes, sir. We received correspondence for uh, the following items requesting to carry to January 24th. Um, that is items 26, 72 to 76 room, attorney Stephen Joseph. Uh, email stating he would like to carry with preservation of notice to January 24th. And then um, the applicant for uh, 04 Innovations Dish Wireless, uh, they've requested to carry all three of their cases, which uh, are items 27, 28, 29, uh, address 35 General Square, 251 Beacon Avenue, and 110 Columbia Avenue, uh, all three to be carried to um january 24th 2023 okay thanks cam and also the uh obviously it's a planning um planning issue but uh we're going to carry case p22-224 the review and discussion of the 244 bay street redevelopment plan allowing for the redevelopment and rehabilitation of a deteriorated vacant city-owned building that's historically significant and a contributing building within the locally, state, and nationally designated Harsmus Cove Historic District. Um, Kim, do we want to carry that to the same date? That might be a heavy lift that oh, night. Oh, that one I did not hear anything about. And honestly, oh. I'm not quite sure I have any. Oh, oh Maggie. Yeah. yeah Let's I'm, just I'm, carry it to I'm, that date. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Maggie. You're, no, it's, it's OK. I mean, it's very much up to you guys. Um, I feel pretty confident I can get through that in about three minutes flat. Um, if the next meeting space is a concern, I know it's a priority for the administration to get that heard. Okay, I'm gonna write down three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got you. So we'll carry that to uh, the 24th as well. Okay, that being said, Cam, I think that's it. Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll move on to memorialization of resolutions, please. Hey, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make the motion to memorialize the following resolutions. Uh, I believe I have 16 on the docket, uh, including the two from today. First resolution is of the Division of the Planning Board of the City of Jersey City, applicant 481 47 Communipa LLC for a minor subdivision plan approval. Uh, address 481-487 Communipa Avenue, Jersey City, New Jersey, 07306, Block 17206, uh, Lot 5, Case Numbers two uh, P21-047. Um, Second resolution is the City of, of Jersey City, uh, Applicant Hudson Nissan for Preliminary and Final Major Site Plan and Bulk Variance Relief 585 Route 440, Jersey City, New Jersey, 07302, Block 21901-16001, Lot 1 and 2, 628, Case Number P22-114. Third one is City of Jersey City Planning Board in the matter of BV and New Jersey, LLC, Application Number P22-126. Decided November 29, 2022, memorialized January 10, 2023. Uh, application for a minor site plan approval with bulk variance, deviation, and design waiver exception relief. Resolution number four is of the City of Jersey City, applicant 143 Columbus Drive Group, LLC, for preliminary and final major site plan approval with a C deviation, 143 Columbus Drive, Jersey City, New Jersey, block 12901. Lot 1, as subdivided, new lots 1.01, 1.02, 1.03, 1.04, 1.05, 1.06, 1.07, 1.08, 1.09, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 
six resolution of the city of Jersey City and Planning Board in the matter of Euphoria LLC for conditional use. Class five cannabis retail establishment, 138 Griffith Street, block 2901.21, case number P22-064, decided on November 29th, 2022, memorialized on January 10th, 2023. Application is for conditional use. Seventh resolution of the City of Jersey City Planning Board, case number P22-071, address 447 Central Avenue, Jersey City, New Jersey, Block 1507, Lot 23, decided on Tuesday, November 29th, 2022, memorialized on Tuesday, January 10th, 2023, application for proposed Class 5 cannabis retailer at an existing ground floor commercial space. Eighth resolution of the City of Jersey City Planning Board, case number P22-084, applicant 292 Whiten Street, LLC, address 292 Whiten Street, Jersey City, New Jersey, block 20301, lot seven, decided on Tuesday, November 29th, 2022, memorialized on January 10th, 2023, application for minor site plan approval with C variances. Ninth resolution of the uh, City of Jersey City Planning Board, uh, case number P22-092, applicant at 279 Communipa Realty, LLC, address 279 Communipa Avenue, Jersey City, New Jersey, block 20303.21, decided on Tuesday, November 29th, 2022, memorialized on January 10th, 2023, application for a minor site plan approval. Tenth resolution of the, the Planning Board of the City of Jersey City approving an extension of time for filing a minor subdivision deed, uh, case P22-193, submitted by Newport Associates Development, Company 26th Street Block 7302, that's 43 and 55. Eleventh is uh, from the City of Jersey City is a 2023 fiscal year planning board agreement for stenographic services. Number 12 is resolution of the planning board, the city of Jersey City applicant summit Gre uh, Greenwich Urban Renewal LLC for preliminary and final major site plan approval with variances at 100 Summit Place, Jersey City, New Jersey, block 30306, lots eight and 14, case number P22-093. Number 13, resolution of the planning board of the city of Jersey City, applicant Jersey City, Irby Tower 2, LLC for administrative amendment approval at 191, 201 Hudson Street, Jersey City, New Jersey, block 11603, lots 28, 30, 31.01. As subdivided, the new lot 31.04 and lot 31.02. As subdivided, new lot 31.05. Case number P22. Dash one nine one. Fourteenth resolution of the planning board of the city of Jersey City approving an extension of final major site plan approval. Applicant John and Rose Down for extension of final major site plan approval C variance at 32 Cole Street, block 1113, lot two. Case number on that was P22 013. Number 15 is the resolution of the planning board of the city of Jersey City applicant. KRE Silverstein 808 Pavonia LLC for amended preliminary and final major site plan approval with deviations block 10601 approved lot 34.02 also known as block 9404 a portion of existing lot 34 and block 10601 existing lots 38 and 39 and to be known as lot 34.03 80, um, sorry, 808 Pavonia Avenue, 813 Pavonia Avenue, 270 Magnolia Avenue. Case number on that is P22-226. Final resolution, number 16, resolution of the Planning Board of the City of Jersey City, applicant KRE Silverstein 808 Pavonia LLC for preliminary and final major subdivision approval with deviations block 10601, approved lot 34.02, also known as block 9404, a portion of existing lot 34 and block 10601, existing lots 38 and 39, block 10601, proposed lots 3403 and 34.04, 808 Pavonia Avenue, 813 Pavonia Avenue, 270 Magnolia Avenue, 
case number on that is P22-225. Second. Second. All right, Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner, Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Aye. Commissioner Gungadin. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. Motion carries seven in favor to approve the memorialization of the resolutions. Okay, thank you. Do we need executive session? Anybody? No. Oh, oh sir. <laughs> All right. Um, I saw a couple of hands raised on there. Uh, this is actually the end of our meeting. Uh, if you need to discuss something with city planning, you can reach out to them tomorrow. And um, one, one thing I've neglected um, for anybody watching this on YouTube in the future, don't forget to smash that like button and uh, subscribe. And uh, let's get those uh, counts up, man. Let's get those counts up. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Uh, hashtag trending. There you go. Uh, all right. Could I get a motion for adjournment? Motion, motion to adjourn. <laughs> I, I heard a motion three times. So I'll take that as a second as well. And uh, thank you guys. We're adjourned. Good night. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year.